place where legends have been made. And where dreams have been crushed. This is a place where people from all around the world come to compete. For glory. Pipe up speech telling him not to let it get into yeah. his head. And for pride. This is a realm that only the most determined gladiators can conquer. In this kingdom, there is a crown. It has been worn by the fiercest of warriors. But now, it's time to crown a new champion. Welcome to the Arena World Championship. Matt is out in the open here. Lothar's gonna try and drink, chasing down Tessia while he drinks. The Watts Harpoon's in for another sap on the drink. The last one was a block. I think this one's gonna be a block as well. Two blocks out of the way. Mass Dispel again. Full blind, no trinket. That's, That's it in. here. We're going to match point. Now Swapsy might just die. Lothar trinkets out. Can he save him? I don't think so. It managed to win from this point. No way, Ramp up. On one HP! That's the lowest HP I've ever seen a player oh have in a negative ray! Nope. I fall! Full HP ray. There's no defense for Airy Tross. Dragon's about the Luxia. If they get this crowd control, it could be game over. They use the freezing trap on Tessia. They stop the polymorph. Luxia gets counterspelled. Oh. That's gonna be it, I think, for Airy Tross. Combustion's rolling. Tessia goes for the kill. Tyrant's already out. Big swap here on Punter. He could just get deleted. They're in He's dead. Deleted. Now going for Chaos Bolt, trying to force Morrow back, but an Ice Wall line of sight swaps you away from his healer. He could go down here to the Ice Wall. Is he going to survive? He's so low. Holy Fire incoming. Massive damage. Huge value. That Ice Wall. Five more seconds. Four more seconds. Three more seconds. Can they stall Fist of Fury? Shadow Sips behind it. Smoke Bomb is down. Oh! Match point for Cloud9. That's it. Happy an assassination rogue. A Kidney Shot. A Vendetta. His health is going nowhere but down. Hello everybody and welcome to the AWC Shadowlands Grand Finals. My name is Aya. I'm going to be your host this weekend. We are once again joined with Zico, Venruki, and Subatiz. We've also got some special guest casters coming up later, Gelubaba and Absurge. But let's get to talking about these teams. They have been on a long journey to get to this point. We're starting off the day in Europe. Zico, talk to me about this region. How do they do in that circuit? I mean, uh, in Europe, it was a nail biter. It kind of came down to the last uh, day for the qualifications, but we did get our four top teams. And uh, I mean, if you put it like this, the lowest seeded team is like half their team is a bunch of BlizzCon winners. So I think in general, Europe is looking absolutely stacked. Yeah. Most definitely stacked. You can see it right here. Uh, we are back to actually eliminating teams here since we're back into, you know, a bracket. No one's going home today, uh, but by the end of this weekend, of course, we're going to have our European and our North American champions, but only four teams right now competing in this European region. And the kind of the question that's been all going on all year, Super Tease, is Kungana and who can finally beat this team. Yeah, right now, it's a really tough call. I'm curious to see what compositions the opposition has brought to the table here because I don't think going head-to-head -head in a mirror with Kungana is going to work. Just their RMP is the best in the world. Picking up Met X on their roster as that Priest specialist was so key for them this season and this year. So CGN Esports, they've been running a lot of Enhancement Shaman Warrior uh, in this matchup, but maybe they've got some curveballs now for the finals. There has been some time since the circuit, so hopefully they've got something ready for this, because if they don't, this is going to be Kungana's year, I think. Mm, yeah, I've I've heard from basically all the teams in AWC this morning that they've practiced harder than uh, they've ever practiced before, so you know they've been putting in that work before we made it here into the global finals, but it's the same story, Enrique. Over in North America, we've got some top dogs over there as well. We can see the bracket. What are you looking forward to this weekend with North America? Mm, I, I mean, all these games look excellent, I would say. I mean, Kawhi obviously winning uh, in North America in terms of the circuit. Um, had a phenomenal season. They really always do. So uh, can any team really beat them? That will be the question. Uh, I would say Team Liquid has kind of leveled up. This has been their best performance in a really long time. They've been putting in a lot of work, a lot of effort, playing basically every single meta composition. So I think they'll be a force to be reckoned with. But I could see any one of these teams uh, making it into the finals. 
Absolutely. Also, make sure you guys are sticking around for next weekend. We've got that cross region tournament coming up and, um, you know, they're playing for seeding as well as they head over into that weekend and face against each other. Uh, and that's really important. Your placement here, basically the first per first teams that are knocked out on either region are going to have to play the number one seeded team in the opposite region. So not only is there quite a big prize pool on the line, huge prize pool that they're competing for today. First place gets $70,000. Uh, they're also placed for that seeding in the cross region tournament we finally get to see who's the best in the world in awc but if you guys are tuning in chat right now to that to try and get that spectator title there it is uh there's a link right there you can check out however basically what you want to do if you want that title for the in-game um what is it is it what is it, is it just fearless spectator yeah there i want that did you, did you guys get that have you guys gotten it yet? You guys pressed the wrong yeah, button? To. I'm trying to. I will be getting it this weekend. Right, in, a, that's for sure. in a couple of hours. Yeah, I need to connect my account. But what you want to do here is go to the reward button below the stream, link your account to verify you are connected correctly. This button is going to be swapping from rewards to connected with a little tick. Uh, and if you guys have been tuning in before we actually went live, you're going to have to refresh the stream. So uh, make sure that those are connected and you should be able to get that spirit fearless real spectator title and I needed to uh, listen to my own advice because I haven't done that yet and I would also like a title thank you very much but <laughs> let's look at uh let's look at the first match we have coming up here we've also got a um, new org in the mix looking for esports e which is our first game coming up it's now CGN esports so huge welcome to CGN esports thank you so much for investing in WoW esports and these players as well they've been working super hard all season and they are first up against Kungana Zico yeah, that's right. So CGN uh, is going to be formerly LF Org. Uh, if uh, you don't know who is on that roster, it is, uh, you know, uh, Swapsy, Lontar, Tasia, it's uh, the whole gang. And the only team that is running currently, uh, as far as I know, no Rogue Mage um, yep. here in Europe. These guys uh, have been playing a lot of uh, Mage Warlock, been playing a lot of uh, Warrior Mage, been playing uh, a lot of Cleaves as well, uh, with Swapsy on Death Knight, uh, with Lizzo. Um, you know, uh, so they got a lot of options, but they came in as fourth and they're going to go up against Kungana. I mean, nobody wants to go up against Kungana right now. <laughs> um, or ever, but, uh, really. It should be a good one. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it. go ahead. I was going to say, look at those stats. Kungana leads 5-0 <laughs> over CGN Esports, winning 13 out of 20 games. But that does mean that CGN Esports has taken some games off them, right? So... I don't think it's going to be completely one-sided. I think this will be a really, really close match. Um, but yeah, Kungana obviously the favorite right now. They haven't really lost a series, or they haven't lost a series uh, to anyone. Uh, their RMP looks absolutely unbeatable, but that also means they, they have kind of a target on them, right? Basically, every single team here knows if they cannot beat Kungana's RMP, they're not going to win. So I think that's what a lot of these teams have been focusing on these last few weeks. Yeah, it, it would definitely make sense. I mean, you know, this is uh, going from the round robin format to actual elimination of teams, especially when you've got a team like Kungana to face. It's certainly no easy task, but maybe that new esports title will bring them a bit of luck. And uh, Super Tease, you know, there's been also some changes. Do you think that we're going to see anything significant this weekend? Uh, yeah, I mean, Demonology Warlocks got a lot better. Um, I'm curious to see if Zipai's team, SK Gaming, utilize a Demonology Warlock at all in their setup or an Elemental Shaman. I really hope that the teams play into their strengths and their roster rather than trying to kind of copycat Kungana. Um, the only team right now I think that can would be Casual Dads, but even they were getting stomped out in the circuit and they've been playing those classes for a long time as a team uh, with Rogue Mage as a setup. So I, I don't think you want to go toe to toe in a mirror here. What are CG and Esports going to be leading with? in game number one is going to be the question they're going to be starting with a death knight warrior which was this is unexpected for me and a restoration druid i was anticipating at least maybe a hybrid dps for their team um or an outlaw rogue definitely not a resto great. druid this this is either desperation or genius i i think this is going to work out <laughs> extremely well uh, I feel like right now, Resto Druids are actually quite good into healing into Outlaw Rogues specifically. So Kangana, if they played Subtlety, then the Resto Druid is going to be uh, a bit of a liability, I would say. But in this particular matchup, I think this is a great blind pick coming in from CGN Esports. Yeah, and this is kind of what we've been talking about. We want to see more cleaves. We want to see teams play to their strengths. Tagging in Blizzo uh, is going to be great here for CGN Esports. So let's see how it plays out. 
We got the opener immediately here onto Blizzo. They stun him up, and now they're going to swap over to Lontar here with a nice sheep, and that is going to be Swapsy's anti-magic zone. Now they're going after Meh here with a Strangulate. He's taking quite a beating here, but Meh uh, is getting gripped back from that Abon limb, and he's still taking quite significant damage here, man. Not out of the woods yet. Nice Vortex there as well by Lontar. Getting very aggressive here, man. Whoa. Taking a lot of damage here. Still in trouble. He uses the Guardian Spirit. He uses the Apotheosis and the Fey Guardians as well. And uh, Mac basically had to use his entire spellbook there. But with that Apotheosis, he's going to have uh, at least the opportunity to reset some of those cooldowns. And uh, hopefully for him, uh, get to set up another uh, go here. Let's see who they're going to go after on the side of Kungana. They got a fear, and they're looking to set up. Yeah, let's see if they can find their target here. Matt is still just being tunneled down. They haven't been able to get him off. Now a kidney shot and a blind. Big setup. Are they ready for it? Blind ends in one second. They don't get the sap. They go for a cheap shot. Can Raikou get a ring of frost? They get a polymorph. Good continuation of crowd control, but Blizzo seems to be all right. They grip Meh back into the fray, trying to cleave down the Holy Priest. Bladestorm out from Blizzo. Massive damage onto Meh. Strangulate out. Are they going to take him out? He silenced a 1%. He fades oh. and manages to hold on, blinking across the map with the soul shape. But CGN Esports are threatening in game one. A swap now onto Lone Tar. Blizzo intervenes over with Barkskin. Reducing pressure, trying to keep Lone Tar alive during the stun. And these teams are just cutthroat at each other in game number one. I mean, under so much pressure, Meta did such a good job getting away, and not only getting away, sat down for a drink, so completely recovering his mana in that situation, and uh, that's going to be a great position to be in. Lone Star getting interrupted, in a little bit of trouble right now. He's already used that Tranquility Heal immunity. Kidney Shot will land. Lone Star, how's he going to get out of this one? The Iron Bark will connect. That will reduce a lot of incoming damage, and I think he'll be able to get away. In the meantime, Matt getting chopped up here by Blizzo, Swapsy, and Matt, or Swapsy and Blizzo can connect at the same time. That's what going to be when Matt's in a lot of trouble. Asphyxiate is going to be coming in, but the Fey Guardians are active, reducing a lot of that incoming damage. A great heads-up play there by Meh. Gets interrupted, and I feel like if Blizzo and Swapsy can maintain their uptime, here's the A-bomb's limb. Matt could be in a lot of trouble, and keep in mind, I went and checked. He is not playing that Resurrection Legendary, so if he goes down, he is down for good. Oh, man, still in a lot of trouble here from the Bladestorm. Blizzo getting very aggressive here, building up those stacks and uh, just uh, trying to keep that pressure. He's got the Necro Banner for a couple of more seconds right now. Man, still taking some damage. Swapsy now looking to connect as well, but they don't have the Strangle it. They do have a stun available, I do believe. I didn't see any Asphyxiates coming out there onto Meh. And uh, Meh still just uh, trying to tank out here. Lontar, though, also taking a decent amount of damage here from Raikou and Waz. And uh, Lontar trying to anticipate it. Here comes the Asphyxiate onto Meh. Nice double Dragon's Breath defensively there by Raikou, uh, protecting his healer there in that situation. He gets a Sheep onto Blizzo. Meh just uh, doesn't look like he's taking a lot of damage right now. Both of these teams really not getting tested too much. And we're kind of anticipating this game to go a little bit deeper into dampening here. Uh, with both of these healers uh, just uh, being able to keep uh, their team alive. Meh, though, Whoa. getting strangulated. Could be in trouble here. Do they have any more follow-up here for Matt? It doesn't look like it. He's going to go and activate that greater fade and try to duck around the corner, try to get away. And now uh, Waz getting aggressive with a kidney shot onto Lontar. Ring of Fire gets dropped. Right, looking for the polymorphs. It's gonna. Uh, he's going to get one onto Blizzo. Just slow him down for a second. Matt sitting in the back line there drinking while Waz is trying to keep up the pressure onto Lontar. And uh, mana-wise... So far, uh, it's an advantage for Kungana, but it's been a couple of close calls on the map. So if Blizzard and Swapsy can connect with that next Necro Banner up in 20 seconds, that could be a win condition there for CGN Esports. Yeah, they're going to really need to net basically a kill with it. Lontar's going to run out of mana so much faster than Met X. So that's about 15 seconds away. Blizzard's going to have to pre-bladestorm the crowd control on his banner. If he gets CC'd on it, Met is not going to die. Swapsy likely going to be anti-magic shielding aggressively as well. Here's a combustion from Raikou. A big kill opportunity moment. They're going out to Lontar. He's in bear farm. Proxitry of life with that swift man. He's going to get instant regrowths here and be able to stabilize. D decides to just go into bear farm using wild charge to drag Waz to Raikou to get a double in cap. Here comes the stun. Here here comes the cooldowns. This is where they need to find the kill. Triple fear. Beautiful oh. setup by CGN Esports in game one. They just outdid the RMP on CC. I cannot believe it. And they're going to actually take the first win. Kungana only lost one game the entire circuit to the team of Bugs. And now they're uh. starting the tournament off with a defeat. Which we, I, I mean, I, I was wondering, are they going to perfect the finals here and just go all the way through without losing a game? But. Game number one is going to be shut down from CGN.
Yeah, CGN Esports with lots of preparation coming into this game number one. I think this is a beautiful pick by them. The restoration druid, especially Lontar, in those final moments of the match, I'm sure we'll be able to talk about it, but it gets a beautiful double incapacitating roar into the double intimidating sh intimidation shout uh, from the warrior, and they're able to take down the priest, just denying any of the crowd control that Raikou and Waz are going to be able to put out. This is just a great start for their team. Yeah, and this is exactly what we were talking about during the circuit because we were seeing a lot of teams kind of attempt to play rogue mage and and you know outlaw rogue uh, rmd and things like that and we we were talking about it teams need to play to their strengths this is the finals you're not gonna beat a, a team like kungana at their own game you need to play to your strengths and figure out what you have uh, that that can uh, win this and in in cgn's uh, uh, you know uh, in cgn's arsenal it's been Blizzo. It's been that uh, swap CTK. Ooh, look at this. It's been uh, Enhanced <laughs> Warrior uh, Cleaves. So uh, this is also very interesting. You can see uh, kind of how the damage spikes here uh, throughout the game. And you can see um, uh, the <laughs> yellow is a CG and look. East portion. I guess every time they pop Abon limb yeah. or, uh, or the banner <laughs> right there. So yeah, they're syncing them together. It if you notice, so the top chart is a DPS and kind of the DPS spikes of the game, and the bottom chart is the HPS, so the healing done at the beginning of the game. So you can see the healing and damage <laughs> kind of sync up at the 30 second and uh, two minute 30 second mark, but at the end, it's all damage, no healing. But we can see this final setup here. This is beautifully done. So Lone Tar just trying to be uh, as heads up as possible by his team as much time as possible. Inevitably, if Blizzo and Swapsy can stay on meh, he will go down. But Lone Tar just has to stay alive. He's camping it out in bear form as much as he can. But we're going to see kind of the game-winning setup here. Lone Tar in bear form. He charges over to Raikou. Double incapacitating roar. Blizzo comes in. Double intimidation shout. And there's the stun into the silence onto meh. And he gets dropped. So... Uh, I think this is something CGN looks like they're very practiced at, but my big concern for them, um, I think, first of all, winning the blind pick is going to be massive for them, but I don't know if this is a composition they can blind lock because the subtlety rogue is just so threatening against the Restoration Druid. Yeah, and the mind games priest as well. I think running a Venthyr priest would be a lot better for Kungana. They'll be able to get a lot more triple setups, so is this going to be a reliable blind lock? Maybe CGN... I wonder, depending on the map, if Kungana picks a big map, I wonder if they'll blind lock like a mage lock and try and play a mage lock on a big map into the outlaw RMP and then on the small maps try and TSG, try and counter pick because I don't know how they can win a big map into sub RMP with a resto druid. It seems like that would be incredibly difficult. So I'm curious to see how they want to navigate this or if they're just confident. Maybe they they feel like their TSG is so good that they could win. Um, but Ashamane's Fall will be a really tough map. You're going to get baited out into the open. You're going to get swapped to a lot. Um, but I, I asked uh, Waz during his stream, I think, last week. I was like, what are the chances we see Chaz? And he said, or I asked Raikou <laughs> this. And he was like, he said something like, as high of odds as you healing for Kawhi or something. Basically, it was not, <laughs> not going to happen or something. But now I'm wondering okay. if it will happen at all. If teams suddenly get like some curveball compositions here. And they're going to be like, well, we need Chaz. Um, maybe like a DH Boomy, because I've seen yeah, Waz been practicing, practicing a lot of Boomkin um, into these cleaves, uh, especially with a Warrior. I think that it can do really well with a Boomkin. Um, so I do wonder if they'll pull that out if they have to. But I, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, right? It's one game, man. Like, Ella RMP has been really <laughs> good. It's it's one game. I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself here and think that Kungana are going to be kind of uh, remaking the wheel here uh, in game number two. I'm imagining it's going to be a sub vent here. Um, swap from Kungana on a big map here, uh, but we have to wait and see. CGN are confident. They're going to stick to the Resto like Druid, it. Fury Warrior, Death Knight um, despite the map disadvantage. I like it a I lot. I like that. We, we have a saying, if they can't beat you, or if you don't know if they can beat you, force them to swap, uh, force them to make you swap, <laughs> or force them to make you swap your comp. If you don't know if you can win or not, just lock it in and see what happens. Uh, I like that from CGN, uh, and worst case scenario, they can uh, go to a small map and, and, and set themselves up again uh, for another clean matchup. So we'll see what Kungana will lock in. It I'm is going you. to be the same matchup. So they're That's probably changing, they're probably changing more like talents, legendaries, uh, covenants, things like that. Um, I kind of expect to see a vent there as well, to be honest, uh, from Meh, uh, or, or maybe a Kyrian. Uh, I, well, I think, so 
I think there's a few things Matt can do. I mean, number one, he, I think he's going to play. If he knows he's the target, he probably wasn't anticipating. I mean, a lot of the time when you fight a warrior death knight, they just go after the mage. So perhaps he didn't build his character as durable um, as he really could have. So in terms of like his trinket selection, um, not only his trinkets, but also his legendary. So he might just go for the resurrection legendary as well. So he'll have twice the opportunities to survive. Um, quite literally so uh, as well as like you know the fly talent there are options here for Matt and I do anticipate you know now that he knows he's going to be the target more than likely in this match he makes that adaptation but if he does make that adaptation maybe CGN Esports they don't go for him they go after Raikou play more of a slow play pace game try to get Matt out of mana and just train down the mage uh, relentlessly and try to take him out so I do think both teams kind of have options here and there might be a bit of a mind game in terms of targeting and just depending on what Matt decides to play yeah, we we'll, we'll have to keep an eye out for his covenant and uh, what he decides to do there. And uh, I, li I like that as well. If CGN esports, this is where Tessia can be really important because he's he's going to be kind of the coach during the match. So he can uh, quickly go check out the, the AWC plugin, see what talents everybody's running. If Matt is running uh, the Res Legendary, he can pass that information on to his team. And then they kind of know what to expect a little bit more. And they have a chance to kind of swap their strategy around, go after the Rogue or the Mage. Um, if or just try to go through it as well, but at least it won't be like a big surprise to them. So um, that's just gonna have to do a good job with uh, just being the coach uh, because he's gonna have to relay a lot of information to his team. And I mean, it's like what Sid was talking about. This is very shocking. Uh, CGN Esports uh, leading right now in this series here against Kungana, a team that lost only one map in the entire circuit. So uh, CGN right now looking to walk away here and, and put themselves. Uh, basically in the best situation possible for the tournament. Let's see if they can do it. Same matchups as in game number one, a larger map, and Blizzo is going after Meh once again here, and Swapsy will try to reconnect here. Let's see what they can get do uh, doing. Waiting to see if he's running the Divine Ascension on Meh here so he can fly away to safety if he needs to. They're just immediately going after Lone Tar, but that anti-magic zone from Swapsy stabilizes him throughout the start of this match. Now they got crowd control on Waz. They're going after Meh with the Strangulate, fearing up Raikou, preventing a CC for a moment. Bladestorm coming out from Blizzo to immune. Any follow-up from Waz trying to cut down Meh. He's going to activate the Fae Guardians. Oh, he gets pulled oh. down on his... Oh my goodness. Are they going to be able to finish him with that? Usually, that's a very scary moment as a Holy Priest if you get pulled by the Abomination's Limb on your Divine Ascension, your main escape mechanism. It's going to mean that they're going to get a lot of uptime here, but at the same time, they're going after Lone Tar. He's going to have to deal with getting tunneled down. He's holding Waz and Raikou close to his team, but I don't think they have any AoE CC right now. I'd rather see him pull them out of line of sight and avoid Meh and avoid Raikou at this point, but he's right in front of the entire team. This is dangerous for Lone Tar. Procs a Tree of Life, though, and gets a big heal. Managing to recover. Blizzo goes for a flesh craft around the corner, gets a counter spell out of the way. Lontar cyclones Raikou, punishing the counter spell, but swaps these polymorph. Lontar's gonna jump over and dispel it, trying to get him to meh for the next stun here. They're gonna try and bait a cooldown prior to that A bomb limb. It's very important that they get as many cooldowns as they can before that big go. But I wanna see that bait like we saw last time with Lontar pulling Waz next to Raikou and getting double CC. Because if Raikou or Waz are free and they can peel Blizzo, meh is not going to die. So let's see if the CGN Esports can coordinate that. Lone Tar pre-trank bubbles the kidney shot. Bashes Waz. Stun onto Meh. Triple crowd control. Beautiful setup, but Meh oh. will be going up into the skies. Healing himself up with that Divine Ascension. And that one talent alone is just changing this matchup so much. Now a full blind. Blizz is getting cut down in game two. And Kungana will strike back, tying it up one to one. Almost saying, you know what? Game one, eh, we weren't maybe ready for this, but now we are. And CGN Esports are going to need to find a response. Yeah, I mean, basically what they could do is they can keep Lone Tar very scared in bear form. So he's going to have to, basically if Waz has uptime on him, Lone Tar is going to have to camp it out in bear form. And if he does that, Blizzard's not going to have any heal over time effects. And uh, during their kind of offensive moment, Kungana was able to turn it around with a beautiful blind. I want to see exactly what led into those final moments, but... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, Kungana obviously making some adaptations in terms of talents for Matt, but also I think just going after Blizzo and those big all-ins, trying to punish the Relentless from Lone Tar, uh, definitely worked out well for them. So they, they I think Matt feared Swapsy, and he was kind of around the corner, and then uh, Waz just started tunneling Lone Tar, forced him to sit in bear form, and uh, Lone Tar tried to pre-trank bubble the kidney, uh, and then after that they just uh, sent a long CC chain with the blind, and able to i think actually he got polyed and then into a blind and they're able to get the kill on that um with the combustion so uh just a few talent swaps and they're gonna look as deadly as ever two minutes 17 win here for kungana tying us up 
Uh, that was on a larger map, though. And here we can see again uh, the HPS very synced right now with the, the damage coming in here. Um, you can see here at the end as well, not a lot of healing uh, coming through there um, as they get that kill. It actually looks like it is a lot of healing. If you see CGN Esports healing line, the yellow one in the bottom, it actually seems like a lot of healing, just the damage um, from the side of Kangana was double the amount of healing going out. So maybe an unfortunate circumstance, maybe Lone Tar overcommitted his hots. This is the real difficulty of a Resto Druid against RMP is trying to anticipate who the target's going to be, right? Um, and Kungana mixed it up. They didn't just keep tunneling Lone Tar. They went him at the start, put pressure on him, and made him think he was going to be the main target for the match, and then made a swap over to Blizzo, which means that Lone Tar was likely allocating some powerful hots to himself, uh, anticipating himself to be the target. This was the pull down in the opener. This is where I thought Med was just going to die, but unless he CC'd during this A-bomb limb and Blizzo and Swap are connecting, he's probably not going to. And right here, so Lone Tar tries to immune CC with Tranquility, and then he bashes Waz to stop CC, oh. but he gets Polymorph, so... Big mistake by Lone Tar there, getting caught in a polymorph. Blizzo tries to blaze from the kidney, but Waz is patient and then gets a blind out of the polymorph. There's no way. Through the Enraged region, actually. Oh, could he have got Rally off, actually? That actually looked pretty close to being able to maybe get Rally. That's really unfortunate. I, I don't think it'll be as one-sided if that doesn't happen. As a Resto Druid, like, especially against an RMP of this caliber, you can't get polymorph when there isn't a CC before it. If that happens, like it, it's pretty much game over. Yeah, definitely an unfortunate situation, but honestly, great play there by Raikou as well, just kind of sniping it, sniping that polymorph out of nowhere. So we are going to be going to hook point. I, I think a lot of us would have guessed <laughs> if CGN Esports <laughs> is going to be able to pick the map. We are going to the smallest map in the pool, and that will be hook point. So a little bit more difficult, I would say, for Matt to get away on this one. Not going to have uh, as much room to kind of move away. And also the pillars are going to be smaller, and that's something I would say Matt really relied on. Is actually getting to a pillar and then allowing Chains of Ice to fall off and not allow Blizzo and Swapsy to get the uptime that, that they really need to take him down. And I, I actually have a question for you, Supertees. Do you know if you can use Divine Ascension while you're silenced? Because it looked like he could. So he got he got stunned into a silence at one point. It was the second Divine Ascension of the game. It looked like he was actually able to fly up. And if that is true, that you can Divine Ascension during silence, that seems like a really, really solid kind of counter to these say TSG all ends. No. I want to say no. You can't. No, they just I saw do that as well. Silenced. I'm okay. pretty sure you can't. You have to pre-fly the CC. If you pre-fly it, I think you immune it. But well, he got not. stunned into the silence, and I, they might have gapped it. I, I we'll have to wait and see in this next game. But if they did gap it, then that it. was a big mistake by CGN Esports. Otherwise, yeah, I think the Divine Ascension might be really difficult for them to deal with. Yeah, I, I saw that too, uh, that he had uh, a strangulate on him while he was in the air. But yeah, it might have been a gap. Um, We'll definitely see it anyway. If we see a strangulate on Mahan, he just pieces out, and we know for sure that uh, it's. Uh, I mean, what what can they do then to get a kill if <laughs> if that's uh, if that's the answer? <laughs> like half your lockdown, uh, you can't actually hit the target, and they barely got the kill too in game number one. Yep. And that was such a beautiful setup too because they tried to get that setup. Like they almost killed Mah in that first setup at the very start of that game number one. Then after that, Waz and Raikou were constantly dragon's breathing, gouging and just annoying Blizzo and Swapsy during that Asphyxiate uh, uh, Strangle Egg combo. But um, in that uh, in that game number one, uh, when they won, it was that double roar into double fear, and then they barely, barely had enough damage to actually take him down. So if they can avoid the Strang like that, then I, I feel like CGN, uh, I, I think it's going to be extremely tough for them to actually land a kill again, especially if Meh was playing Red's Legendary wasn't uh in that in that last game he's not no that's uh <laughs> that's brave <laughs> it does feel like he's the he's only target so if he just takes talents and legendaries that makes him like as annoying of a target as possible while still probably being the best target that they would be able to take this but maybe he's worried about running out of mana if he d runs the res legendary and maybe cgn esports cleave targets like uh, when Mad jumps up into the air they go after a different one but the main mechanic they need to be trying to land is the ursul's vortex so you can use Ursa's Vortex on the Priest as the rest of Druid, and if the Priest tries to fly up, it's going to pull him back down. So he should be doing this every time that they do a Stun Strangulate. It should line up with the cooldown of it, if I'm 100% not, I'm not on it, but it should come very close to lining up. They need to have that. Um, so they need to get like an in-cap bash on the DPS while putting a Vortex on the Priest, chain the in-cap bash into a Fear, and the Vortex pulls the Priest down and then kill him through Fae Guardians during A-Bomb Limb. That's, that's kind of how I'm seeing their win condition at the moment. 
I got some uh, confirmation, by the way, that you can indeed use Divine Ascension while you're silenced. So if during those Strangulate goes, he just flies up in the air, it's going to be a lot more difficult to take down Matt in this matchup. So we'll have to see if CGN Esports can find a different win condition or if they're actually going to be able to drop this Holy Priest outside of that stun lock combo. And so far, it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to, but on the smaller map, uptime should be a lot better. We're all tied up 1-1 in our first matchup of the day. CGN Esports looking for a huge upset against Kungana here. Uh, and Kungana looking for the swing match victory here. Uh, which will ensure them that game five advantage if we do get to a game five very very important game here for kungana to win and it is a bad map for them let's see what they decide to do here blizzo already getting very aggressive there's the necro banner too he's getting absolutely crazy here onto meh popping everything but he does get disarmed there nicely done by waz Meh responds with the fae guardians flies up in the air they're going after raiku though but a nice uh heal there onto raiku actually that was not the altar time now he activates the altar time and he's going to alter back there and get another big heal. Now they're going after Lontar. They got CC onto Blizzo. There's the anti-magic zone coming out from Swapsy. Man, still in some trouble in a kick right now. But they do kidney shot Blizzo. And that should slow him down. I believe that was a vanished kidney there from Waz. So uh, resetting that cooldown immediately there with the vanished legendary. He's going to have another blind up as well very shortly. And uh, that could be the next uh, start of a CC chain. It looks like they want to go after Lontar once again here and just try to sheep uh, Swapsy and Blizzle while they're going after Lontar and making it kind of a healer race right now. But Blizzle with the recklessness, Lontar in a kidney shot, both healers in stuns here, asphyxiate onto Meh. But Blizzle swaps over there for just a second with his wreck. He might have been able to drop Meh right there. Meh uh, finally recovering here, still has his Divine Ascension. And uh, it looks like Matt is going to survive here with the Apotheosis. But that was a scary situation for both healers here. And uh, also, the damage onto Raikou earlier was very scary. Matt now with the Vortex down, exactly what Supertease was talking about. Now he can fly up in the air. Oh, that grip! Triggers, but he gets gripped beautifully down by Swapsy. Matt still on 30% HP. Blizzard coming out of the blind. Can they keep up the pressure? Matt goes for the Greater Fade. Catches a, a Flash heal. But those are some nice plays coming out from CG and Esports. You can tell they are not out of the game just yet. Okay, if they can make plays like that, Matt is going to be in trouble. But Lontar is running thin on cooldowns. They're pushing on top of him. He goes into bear form. He's going to need an intervene. Blizzo needs to avoid CC and get intervene on Lontar during this next kidney. But they might be able to take him out. There's no Iron Park and no Bark Skin. He's on the run trying to line of sight Raikou. Waz is chasing him with the sprint. He pre-Tranquility bubbles, but Blizzo's in a polymorph. He's not able to get there. One more second left on the Tranquility. Waz moves in. Raikou's interrupted. They're holding the kidney shot, trying to bait Lontar out of bear form before going for it. Defensive Ring of Frost, but here comes Abomination's Limb and Necro Banner. Massive damage. Blizzo gets disarmed on it. Beautiful disarm, but Blizzo's on Polymorph TR. If Blizzo gets uptime, Mech could drop. Where's the Vortex? Man, it's getting crushed in game three. Fades away with the Guardian Spirit. Now Lontar in trouble on the turnaround. Is he going to fall to Kungana in game three? They need this. This is the swing match. Can they take it away? He's so dangerously low. Frenzied Regen on the run trying to stay alive but he what will not be able to as he is overwhelmed by kungana Matt takes to the skies to secure the win and moves to match point oh wow what an explosive finish to that game i mean lontar he had to camp in bear form for such a long time he actually i feel like he made a bit of a mistake he charged into the ring of frost maybe he thought it would just get broken but after going to the ring of frost was able to commit a kidney shot into a vanished kidney shot so even though he's playing relentless I think it's a nine second stun lock combination on the Restoration Druid. He came out with the Nature Swiftness, but with no heal over time effects on himself, uh, it's not going to do anything. And then his health basically didn't go up, and he just could not heal himself. He was too far behind at that point of the game. Another great all in there by Kangana. Once again, really just punishing that relentless choice uh, coming in from Lontar. But can't really blame Lontar. I feel like you, you don't. You can't really run the, anything but Relentless into an Outlaw Rogue. There's just too much crowd control incoming. But the problem is, when you play Relentless and you're, you're not able to play the IQD for an actual crowd control break, then unfortunately, you, know, you just you find yourself in these situations where a good RMP like Kangana can really all in you. And we can see the healing done uh, near the final moments of this game. CGN Esports just completely fell off. And um, unfortunately for this poor Druid, uh, wasn't able to get any healing out.
Yeah, and uh, I mean, that was such a close game. You really got to give it to CG and Esports here. They've, they've brought something very nice to the table here. And there were so many close calls. I think this is the Vortex. So this is the Strangle. Look at the Vortex here. Matt walks out to trigger the Vortex right there. And then he flies up and gets gripped down immediately there. So, you know, Swapsy is ready to outplay him. Lontar is ready to outplay him. And Matt, he's very, you know, cautious here. He knows there's a Vortex on the ground. He can't just fly up in the air. So he triggers it. Um, before he, he, uh, he goes for it. And then there's the ring that Ben was talking about. Donta just charges in and look how much time it's giving Kungana here to get the setup. They get the, the, you know, the fireballs out. They get the CC. And then here, a big DPS race, but meh, it does survive with that Guardian. And then here they strangulate Raikou and, uh, they are able to dispel it. Lightning fast dispel there from meh. And, uh, they're able to drop Lontar here. He's got no healing over time effects. He drops the Iron Bark. He tries to uh, pick himself back up. He's very close to being able to, but just too much damage coming out from Kungana, and that's the swing match. Kungana now up two to one here, uh, and uh, it's starting to to look more like uh, kind of what we're used to. I don't know if I'm a fan of the pre-tranks. I feel like every time he's pre-tranked, he's instantly lost after doing it. Like just not having <laughs> that as a safety net. Like if you hit it, great, you get a kidney. Guess what? Kidney shot doesn't have a cooldown. So it's like you immune to one kidney, and then two seconds later, he's got <laughs> kidney again. Like, you're trading your ice block for that. I feel like it's If it's he came out of the Sunlock combination and got the it, Trank off, he would have lived, right? Yeah, or, like, I feel like you can't pre-Trank bubble because it's too valuable for you to live. It's too important for you to live and too valuable for you to live, and there's too much CC that's constantly resetting that it's even worth it to trade. Like, even if you Trank a blind, like, the blind is coming back... <laughs> Like, that's three <laughs> times as fast <laughs> as your Trank bubble. It's still not valuable enough um, to I mean, make it's, a trade like that. It's a really... I don't envy a single healer having to play against Kingana's <laughs> Outlaw RMP. Like, it's a nightmare, quite frankly. But I will say, I do. I feel like Lone Tar in certain moments is playing a little bit too in their face. Like, I, I, I honestly... Yeah, I, I feel like his job in this match is just sit back. You know, throw out to spells, be at, oh, away... Try to be at the pillar as often as possible, so Raikou um, isn't able to get off effective damage, and he's basically just sitting in chains of ice. Um, I, I think that's a much better strategy. Like charging into the ring of frost, or the ring of yeah, charging into the ring of frost. Raikou just started poking him with damage while he was in bear form, and then he goes into the kidney shot with zero hots at 60% health already, and you're not going to live a double kidney shot at that point, especially when you don't have your tranquility bubble. So. But, you know, I still like this composition from CGN Esports. There's a lot of really close calls here on meh. You can really feel the potential, but I feel like one time might have to play it a little safer. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I really think that CGN Esports, they brought a great comp here. Uh, they were able to win one game, you know, arguably because of, you know, the talents uh, not being being the ones that you would expect. But... Uh, in the, even in the last uh, two games, I would say it's been pretty close. Okay, maybe their game on, on Asha mains wasn't that close. Uh, Lontar just kind of got caught and then got infinitely CC chained. Um, but I would say this last game was very close. I mean, there was, uh, I would say there was two uh, moments where Meh was one or two executes away, you know, from uh, just dropping there. So um, CG and Esports, I, I, I don't expect to see anything uh, different out of these guys. Um, just uh, the, the same old um i mean they could they could bring in tassia or something but i, I just I, whatever they do i want to see a cleave if that cleave is a different type of cleave i'm okay with that but just stick to the cleaves because let's put it like this this is this series is 50 percent of kungana's losses uh, this season so uh, <laughs> it's always, even though maybe you're not winning the series it is kind of working you know <laughs> I, I like it. I feel like the Ursula's Vortex is a good counter for the fly from the priest. He gets good uptime for the t for the cleave. You get good AOE CC. What I'd really like to see Lone Tar start doing is kind of just like drive-bys. Bring Waz to Meh when they want to do the go, so he can Vortex Waz next to him, and then Wild Charge away. So if Waz tries to chase him, he's going to get pulled back. Then he gets distance away from Waz. Meh gets pulled down on the go, and then he can pre-hot himself and pre-hot the warrior. And just constantly like... When they have the go, bring the rogue on top. If they don't have the go, pull the rogue far away. Maybe try and root him behind the pillar, in cap clone or bash clone or something, and just weave in and out between dragging on top and getting away. Is what I'd like to see from Lone Ooh, Tar. Nice. Good start there by Swapsy getting a Waz out of stealth. Uh, unfortunately, against the outlaw rogue, it doesn't matter that much, but definitely uh, a decent start here for CGN Esports. Let's see what they can get done. They grip with Man. It looks like he's going to be the target choice once again. Blizzo is oh. going to go into a kitty shot. Oh. Another grip there by Swapsy, but it's not going to matter. We got a polymorph onto Lone Tar. 
Blizzo going to be using his Enrage Regeneration. Try to stabilize during this moment. He should be more than okay. And now it's going to be Matt on the back foot, topping himself off. With those Fey Guardians, can be very durable. And both these teams playing excellent defense at the beginning of this match. Yeah, beautiful stuff from both teams so far. Uh, not too bad start here for CGN Esports, but unfortunately, Lontar uh, getting pollied there did cost them a lot of their uh, offense. Now, Lontar putting a kidney shot. It looks like uh, Meh is going to go in and try to fear him uh, out of that kidney. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to get it. Waz gets disarmed, so he can't sap out of it either. And uh, I don't think he would have been able to get that anyway with that Relentless. And uh, Mah now, once again, on target here. Looking like he wants to get aggressive. Looking like he, he wants to push for a fear. And like they want to go after a Blizzo on the side of Kungana, but not able to. And now they're going to double fear the DPS. Go after Lontar here instead. Mah, though, taking a lot of damage from Swapsy. He's caught up in the Asphyxiate. Uses every man for himself to actually break out there. So uh, you don't see it on the cooldown bar. But Mah uh, did have to use a three-minute cooldown in this push. And he's not out of the woods yet. They might have a strangulate for him too. Swapsy gets Polymorph. Before he can access it, Lontar in a full blind. Blizzo in a three versus one right now. Can they find a Ring of Frost follow up? Raikou's going for it. He can't get it in time. But Anti Magic Zone gets swapped. Meh, actually, with a preemptive uh, fly right there. I'm not I'm not sure if that was just very preemptive or um, or what. But he doesn't have Meh fade. He won't have that available. He doesn't have fade either. So Meh actually will be in trouble. Blizzo, he's got War Banner in 20 seconds. So. Uh, Blizzo's going to be able to pack a big hit of damage there. They also have Strangle It before he's got that Divine Ascension. So there is opportunity right now for CGN Esports if they can keep Lontar alive. What I like about Lontar is he's in the starting room, which has a lower ceiling. So if the Priest goes in there and tries to fly, <laughs> it's not going to be as impactful. So I, I like Lontar's positioning this game, but is he going to be able to stay? Now he's dragging Waz on top for the go. Drops the stun, but he gets caught in a polymorph. He cannot get caught in a polymorph here. They're trying to kill Meb, but he's not Ursula's Vortex, but he did fly earlier. I don't think it's off cooldown yet. He's just going to retreat away. Fade Guardians with the greater Fade. He's getting greedy with the Guardian Spirit. Decides now to pop it. He needs to line all these cooldowns up. Ursula's Vortex is pulling all the members of Kungana together to get cleaved down by Blizzo's Bladestorm. Met is struggling at the moment. I think he's used all of his Serenity charges. He's interrupted on a Flash Hill, trying to Soul Shape away. Blizzo in Hot Pursuit. Waz finally out of the stun, and they fear Blizzo, Polymorph, Swapsy, and managed to buy Met time to recover. Now, what is Lontar going to do? I think he should try and pull Waz away, but Waz is actually going after Blizzo, pulling Lontar in, a pre Trank Bubbles again. This has been two games where they lose the game 20 seconds after Lontar Tranks. So, how is Lontar going to be able to deal with this if he gets swapped to? Blizzo gets kidney shot. He incaps Waz on the kidney. He jumps into bear form. He knows he's the next target. That's the next kidney DR. Waz wants to get as many kidney shots as possible. Lontar's out of bear form. Ducks back into it with a stampede. He pre bears. He's in kidney. No combust. He's trying to hold bark skin. Good greed play by Lontar here. He needs that later on. Man, it's going to fly into the air. No pre grip from Swaps. He got gouged on it. Really good coordination from Waz there. Pre-divine him on his way down, trying to boost his healing towards himself before he hits the ground. But here comes the Apocalypse from Swapsy. He saved some damage for the bottom end of the Ascension. Raikou is blasting Blizzo in midfield while Lontar is caught in crowd control. Blizzo managed to survive for now, but now he's in a kidney shot. Is he going to be able to hold on? It's match point. Swapsy drops an any magic zone. Will that be enough? They interrupt the mind control on it to make sure its defense is there. Lontar jumps in, trying to get a heal onto Blizzo. He incaps Waz for a second. They fear Raikou. And they managed to stay alive. Blizzo's going for it. He pops the recklessness. Can he take out Meh? Are we actually going to go to a game five? The first time that Kungana will be taken to a game five. Basically, this entire oh. circuit play. They are so close to it with the Guardian Spirit proc here. And guess what? Abomination's Limb comes up in 10 seconds. And this time around, Meh does not have the same powerful cooldowns to align with it. If Blizzo and Swapsy connect during this next setup with an Ursula's Vortex or a pre-grip on the fly, I think Meh is going down. Uh, definitely a really tense moment here for Matt. What is he going to do? Gets a double fear, though, on Swapsy, on Blizzo. Can he get behind the pillar? If he can get behind the pillar out of line of sight, it's going to be big. Got a kidney shot. Unfortunately, no Ring of Frost there by Raikou. They tried to comes. set it up, but good denial. Here it is. A big all-in on Matt, but he pre fay Guardians the setup. He's going to be trading out that 40% damage reduction. Should make him very tanky during the setup, but it is an overwhelming amount of damage coming in from Blizzo and Swapsy. Gouge on Swapsy. Kidney shot on Blizzo. Polymorph on Swapsy. Kungata with beautiful defense. Great control with their Rogue Mage. Gonna really slow down that offense and keep Matt alive for now. He still has the fade, he still has the soul shape, a lot of tools left to work with, but Lontar's camping it out in bear Ooh. form. It's gonna be a divine ascension. Oh, Unfortunately, the grip will not land. Matt will stay up in the air, and uh, he's able to top himself off. So Kungana kind of weathered the storm, a really scary, tense moment, uh, but they make it out alive.
You gotta give uh, Kungana some credit here. The way they're peeling for Matt, and also the way they're coordinating uh, stops on Swapsy so he can't get the grips on that uh, Divine Ascension, and also the way Meh is kind of outplaying it. Sometimes he just presses it instantly, sometimes he waits to see if they're gonna use, uh, you know, uh, any cooldowns into it. And right now, Blizzo is in a lot of trouble here. He catches a big heal there from Lontar, though, and uh, it should be enough with that overgrowth. Lontar trying to duck away here from Waz. He's in bear form. Waz is trying to harass him right now. Can he reach him? For that kidney shot, Blizzard now bolstering his defense with a Fleshcraft Waz. Uh, gets over there and kicks him. Meh, could be in trouble here. They get a double fear. Lontar dispels it, though. And it looks like uh, they're not going to find the kidney shot here. Waz wants to get it out of form, and he does. This is big trouble for Lontar. And Waz gets gripped away. Chains of Ice. He can't reach again. He hooks back, but Lontar uh, will recover, most likely. Nice double Dragon's Breath there by Raikou to allow Meh to fly up in the air there. Mana between both of the healers. A pretty much tied up here, and this game is definitely going the distance. It could be anybody's game at this point. We can definitely see Mech going down here in the next couple of seconds with that uh, big, big spike of damage available for Blizzo. The Necro Banner, only eight seconds left. He's got the Recklessness, and Blizzo is popping off right now with the Recklessness. Big damage onto Mech. Can they find a stun lock? Can they find something? There it is. Asphyxiate. Do they have a Strangulate as well? Do they have a Vortex down? They need it. Lontar gets blinded. He can't Vortex right now. And it's going to be Meh taking a lot of damage. But Blizzard gets disarmed. Meh still in a lot oh. of trouble here. Guardian oh. Spirit gets popped. Can they proc it? He's dropping dangerously low here. Swapsy going all out right now. While Lontar sitting through that crowd control. Meh still on low HP here. This time with no Guardian. But a kidney shot on Blizzo And a sheep on Swapsy allows him to get away. But that was a very close call. Mana... Almost tapped here for both of these healers, Super Tease. This is the scary part of the game. We're in dampening. There's no mana left, and I think they just got a gas pedal. I don't think Lontar trying to peel away for a drink is going to be wise at this point. They just have to win with nothing. Can they manage to pull it off against Kungana? Undefeated week after week after week in the first series of the Grand Finals of Europe. Are they going to pull it off and go to a Game 5? Meh. Takes to the skies once again, but this is going to cost a lot of mana. They're swapping to Waz on the ground. They're cutting him down. He's down below half at the moment. Meh gets interrupted as he touches ground. Is he going to Fall over, Lontar in bear form. Silence onto Mad. They're doing it. They're so close to doing it. The blades are from Blizzo. Swapsy gets blinded defensively. Blizzo fears everybody. Here. He's going for the kill. Lontar dispels the sheep, but Blizzo gets sheeped instantly. Swapsy's DB. He grips Mad back, and he's gonna do it. He's so close. He blinks away, and they're gonna actually do it. I cannot believe it. How is he alive? He is not. We are going to a game five, an unprecedented situation for Kungana here in this series. I cannot believe it. CGN Esports playing like absolute legends. Yeah, I mean, there is no doubt about it. Great adaptations coming in from this game. I think Lontar, with his defensive positioning, did a really good job finding himself, uh, in the, if not finding himself in these situations where basically Kungana can checkmate them with the extended kidney shots, uh, the blind polymorphs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So really, really good teamwork coming in from CGN Esports. And now they're all tied up. I mean, this is the first time I think we've seen Kungana kind of sweat in a series this entire year with the Rogue Mage Priest. You got to give it to CG and Esports here. They're taking us to a game number five. And uh, I mean, you can see here a lot of damage coming out from uh, Swapsy here. Blizzard's overall damage, a lot less. But Blizzo is the he is the closer. He's the man with the burst. He's the one who uh, deals the damage during the stun locks and lands those kills. And you can see it here on the damage meter, on the healing meter. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, pretty crazy. You can see uh, Kungana in purple and uh, CGN in yellow and uh, just uh, really, really crazy. You can see how the damage uh, on that top uh, half is kind of lining up with the purple uh, on the bottom half, uh, the yellow at the top. So a lot of damage, a lot of healing coming out from these teams. And uh, we're going to go to our first game five, our first uh, series here in, in the finals. Uh, it's going to be a game number five. And uh, what, a, what, a, what an interesting opener here for this weekend, guys. I can't. I thought they were gonna get stomped, man. Man, like they played like absolute legends. I really love these coordinated assaults, trying to make sure stun into silence, grips onto the silences, vortexes for setups. Lone Tar trying to pull Waz away from the fight throughout, uh, and then Rudium behind pillars with the Tree of Life proc, and then bash Cyclonium out of position, and really coordinating because. I think that's the one thing a lot of melee cleaves don't focus on. They just kind of do damage and try not to die, but they don't focus on offensive setups. And whereas this time around, CJ and Esports have leveled up. They're not just doing the do damage and don't die. They're trying to get CC. They're trying to coordinate together, out position their opponents. And this is the difference. This is the key difference that's kind of evolving their cleave today. 
um, as opposed to cleaves that we've seen in the past that have focused on that traditional do damage and don't die. And this is the final moment of the game when Matt touches the ground, there's zero mana left, and Swapsy saved his silence for the end of it. And they desperation, they blind Swapsy in desperation, but Blizzo fears Waz away, he can't help out. They dispel Blizzo, he gets sheeped again, and I, this is where I thought he was dead. He blinks in soul shape, gets gripped, gets bashed, trinkets, and blinks at 1%. And what actually killed him? Because I think Blizzo's disarmed. It seemed like it was a surprise. I don't even know what the global was that killed him. If it was an adaptive swarm, because I'm pretty sure Lone Tar like shot some damage at him um, right in those final seconds. But uh, <laughs> everything yeah, they is, can. <laughs> this is a really big improvement from CG and esports. I, I love that they're offensively playing this comp, not just trying to dampen, drink, sit in the back like a lot of melee cleaves do. They're including the druid, focusing on trying to get setups, um, and it's you know it's it's throwing a curveball. But now because they lost the swing match on hook point, they're gonna have to play on a big map where it's going to be a lot harder um, to get those types of positionings that they were getting, but they're going to stick with it. They're not uh, They're not changing course. Uh, it's the only comp they've been able to get able to get wins with, so why why bother risking a change here on Tolveron Arena? Uh, and then Kungana do have the option to. Are we surprised that Waz isn't going sub and that Meh isn't going vent there? Maybe Meh just dies without Fae Guardians? Is, Fae is Guardians is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he probably dies without it. Yeah. I think the go is probably too threatening to drop it, but uh, but then if you're not running mind games, I don't think bringing a sub rogue is going to help because then the rogue is just a target, whereas outlaw he's not a target, so Meh doesn't have to heal two targets. So I I don't think Kungan to change. It's kind of weird. Like I don't know how you guys view these matchups, but I feel like the games that Kungana has won, it was like ooh CGN kind of made like a blunder. You know, it's like they could have they yeah. found themselves in a situation that they probably could have avoided. You know, it was like. Yeah, Lone Tar getting polymorphed, and then maybe Lone Tar pushing in when he maybe shouldn't have. Um, but it feels like if things kind of go the way it should, CG and Esports, they look really good in game number one. They look really good in game number four. That, that the wins to me were very convincing. So I kind of wonder if Kunkana is realizing that, and, and they're going to want to make a change. But they've never had to change off RMP. So yeah. <laughs> What are they going to change? <laughs> they to? said they said the likelihood of Chaz playing would be me being a substitute for Brain on Kawhi. So, so that's, uh, he's not playing or what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but I feel like a Boomy DH right now wouldn't be too bad. Um, what about so. Rogue Mage Druid too? Yeah. Probably not. Uh, I mean, maybe. I don't think we're going to see it. I, I don't think we're in. I don't think they're going to change off Rogue Mage Priest. They haven't the entire year, right? I think a hundred percent of their games are Rogue Mage Priest. If they make them change, that's insane. Because we've been talking about this comp for basically like the last couple yep. of months, right? I feel like even Chad has been talking about Outlaw RMP the last couple of months. So if they can make Kungana change their comp, like it would be impressive to say the least. But no, they're going to stick to it for the rest of the series. Game five, big map. This is going to allow Meh to pull Blizzo and Swapsy into bad positions, giving more time for Waz and Raikou to peel for him, baiting Lone Tar into bad positions. And, and CGN Esports are going to have to overcome their greatest adversary, right? I mean, this is the greatest adversary for anybody in Europe, maybe even the entire world at the moment. So sending them to the lower bracket and sending them to tomorrow, basically, because we're only playing uh, upper bracket matches today, uh, would be a really good way to start this. Like, they're definitely living up to their, their sponsor's name here. Um, even just taking two games so far against this team, which nobody else has been able to take two. Um, yet in the competition. It almost makes me wonder if other teams are looking at this like, hey, maybe we should try a DK Resto Druid Priest Tunnel strat. Maybe maybe that could work. Like maybe we can try a demo well, lock DK with a druid maybe or something like that. Um for for these RMPs as an option. because uh, I think it's it's looking much better today at least than it ever has. It's interesting too, because it you know, Ret Warrior is a composition that didn't do too well in the circuit, but it is a really popular uh, ladder composition. I was trying to investigate that a little bit more. Um, and apparently, uh, you know, Ret Warrior does pretty well, specifically with a Restoration Druid into these Outlaw RMPs. Um, so, yeah, I mean, bringing in the Restoration Druid, it seems really good. I mean, it's super durable to an Outlaw Rogue kind of training you down. Uh, you got a lot of longevity in terms of mana, and I would say the heals from Resto Druid are more than enough to kind of bolster the defense of a Fury Warrior and Unholy Death Knight, which are kind of inherently tanky uh, with themselves. So to me, it makes a lot of sense. And then you'll, obviously you have that added utility with the Vortex that we're seeing from Lone Tar. If Waz overextends, he can get Bash cloned, and he can just get controlled up, allowing Blizzle and Swapsy a lot of free reign on the healer. But Game 5 between these two teams, I don't think anyone would have expected this first game going to a Game 5. Kungana's been so dominant, but CGN Esports in defiance with their Warrior Death Knight is looking extremely good in this first series. Yep, everything on the line here. How do you want to start off the tournament? 
two to two between these two teams. It is Kungana's map pick and comp pick. Let's see what they can get done here. Matt already in big trouble. Blizzo going absolutely berserk right now with the recklessness, with the necro banner. Just trying to get some uptime. Matt trades out the Fey Guardians, trying to get a nice fear there actually onto Lontar. Who are they gonna? They're gonna set up onto Lontar here. Using cat form, he gets kidney shot. And uh, he is going to take the combustion there from Raikou, and that will be traded for the anti-magic zone. A pretty fair trade, or a pretty standard trade, if you are the DK. Now, immediately, Blizzard and Swapsy back on target. They interrupt Mac, and they chain this with a, with a stun. Swapsy is in CC right now. Can't access his uh, his toolkit right now. Blizzle actually swaps you with a very quick mind freeze. Can he get anything else? Lontar seems to be dealing with Waz there in the back. Oh. Man actually forced to use his trinket right now. Is every man for himself to break out of that stun? And they still might have a, a strangle here onto Swapsy if they can connect here. Blizzle though stuck in a kidney shot. Lontar in a full blind sheep. Blizzle though with a massive heal right there. Able to pick himself back up. He gets disarmed. Channels out the fleshcraft to bolster his defense while Lontar sitting through that last sheep. Here comes the strangulate. Matt, what are you going to do? He doesn't fly up in the air. He flies up on the last second there before uh, any uh, vortexes or grips are uh, coming into play. But now when he comes down, this is going to be a very scary situation. There's a lot of damage available here uh, for uh, Swapsy. He has that Avon limb as well. And they could uh, potentially force something here from Matt. And uh, he's going to go for it. The apocalypse gets popped. Matt uh, could still be in some trouble here. Swapsy gets sheeped up into a fear on the dispel, unfortunately for him. And uh, Swapsy is going to be getting ab absolutely taken out of the game here. Now, once again, kidney shot onto Blizzo. And Kungana looks like they're stabilizing, but CGN looks kind of like the aggressor right now. And they look to be the team that's in the driver's seat. Yeah, let's see if they can keep up the momentum here. Mana seems to be the name of the game, and it's, it's in favor of Lontar so far. He's got to get ready for these swaps. Met is dragging the cleave on top of Lontar, getting ready for the swap to Lontar. Is he prepared? He's in bear form, trying to tank damage, but he's getting lower and lower before that stun. They're going to disarm Waz so Lontar can leave bear form and get hots and get the vortex down, I think. Strangle it onto Met. Lontar is charging in, incaps the team, trying to go for the kill. Triple cleave. He drops the Fey Gardens. Is that going to be enough? He's getting chopped down. It's match point here for Met, and he manages to pull it off at the last second recovering his entire team in his moment of need. Now Lontar getting caught in a kidney shot. Here comes Combust, but Raikou gets spell reflected on his polymorph. He's trying to lob in more pyro. Swapsy saves him with the anti-magic zone. Now Raikou trying to reset his cooldowns with shifting power. As Med touches down to the earth, Will Lontar be able to recover here so his team can stay aggressive? They need to stay aggressive. They managed to get Apotheosis outside of the cooldown windows here. Lontar repositions at the pillar. If he can proc that Tree of Life and root Waz around the corner, a bash clone during a go, that's what I'm really looking for. Met is in trouble, gets gripped back into the fight. Lontar gets kidneyed. Raikou gets reflected on another Retreat sheep. Down. That sheep reflect is so deadly here from Blizzo. Every time Met is in trouble when that happens, Blizzo pre-intervening Lontar, anticipating the kidney shot, but Waz is patient, holding on to it. Adrenaline rush is rolling. Lontar incaps the team, trying to just get away from Raikou in line of sight him, but he doesn't want to. He looks like he's charging in on Meh. A bit reckless from Lontar here, just standing on top of his team with no intervene. He's got Barkskin. He goes for the bash. Can they drop him in this? Guardian Spirit coming up into his strangulate. Raikou, is he going to get reflected on this polymorph? They blind Blizzo. And they go for a kidney. Oh, he gets Versal's Vortex on his kidney shot by Lontar. CG and Esports are playing out of their minds right now. And they've got the advantage. They're ahead on mana. They're ahead on momentum. Their cooldowns are coming up in 30 seconds. If they could just keep this up, just keep playing like legends for a few more minutes, I think they're going to do it. They're going to pull off the impossible. I mean, it's definitely looking that way. Lontar right now into a chastise. Is there any follow-up? A diminishing return polymorph. I don't know if that's going to be enough. There's the fear into the kidney shot. Lontar has no heal over time effects. Can they take him down? This is the huge all-in from Gungana. Beautifully set up. Double kidney shot. Lontar, how are you going to survive? He's got the tranquility. And this is the moment where you want tranquility. And now, man, he's overextended, getting chopped up by Swapsy. Lontar, can he survive? He connects the iron bark. That's exactly what we wanted to see from Lontar. And that setup in the past, he wouldn't have had the Tranquility would have gone down. CGN Esports looking bulletproof right now, and they're continuing their charge onto Meh. This isn't looking bad for them, but still such a close game. Another setup here on Lontar will trade out the Bark Skin, and that should make him more than durable. But the next setup on Lontar is going to be incredibly threatening. Oh. There's no trinket. There's no Bark Skin. Meh, though, right now getting caught into a strangulate. Can they take him down? Can they pull off the impossible? No way! Line on Swampy. Oh. Blizzo looking like a one-man army trying to take him down. Incredibly close call. Uh, man finds himself in a situation where he finally will survive, but this pressure is just unrelenting from CGN Esports. 
Yeah, and man has got basically no mana left here. He's got a greater fade. They're going for the CC chain here. They're trying to drop Blizzo. Man, not able to find the fear there, though. They do get a kidney shot onto Lontar, and they don't have a blind out of it. Raikou needs to land something out of that. Not able to get it. And man, in a lot of trouble here. Trying to soul shape behind the pillar. Dropping dangerously low right now. No Guardian Spirit for 38 seconds. No human ratio. He's got basically nothing to work with. How is he going to stay alive right now? They are going. They need offense. That's the only thing that will keep going in this game. They have have a blind coming up for Waz in 20 seconds. If he vanishes, he has it right now. They need to make something big happen with that. They go for the kidney shot. Bust. There's a combustion. Who are they going to try to drop here? Lontar is not taking any damage whatsoever zone. with that anti-magic zone dropped from Swapsy. Beautiful AMS to avoid the crowd control into the AMZ there to save his teammate Swapsy with that relentless. Not going to be able to shrink it out. So he has to make preemptive moves like that. Here comes the and setup. Blizzard has been playing like absolute legends. Here comes the setup. Man immediately flies up. Doesn't get gripped on it. Doesn't no get vortex on it. No. And he's getting good mana with that Symbols of Hope. Beautiful play there by Mah. You could try to recover a little bit in that match. Still anybody's game here. Both teams running dangerously low on mana, Sid. He Fey Guardians before the A-bomb limb. That's the only thing that's been keeping him alive every time. If Lontar and Blizzo survive, they're getting on Kidney DR. There's no CC DRs. If Blizzo procs a Bladestorm, or has Bladestorm for his Conch Banner here. Mez gonna die, I think, their Guardian Spirit. Disarm. They're just going for it! Are they gonna be able to pull it off? Triple Fear from Blizzo! They need to connect during this time! Mez pops the Guardian Spirit. He's 10 seconds away from Apotheosis. 9 seconds away from being able to make sure that he can survive, but the peels are coming in from Raikou. Blizzo not getting dispelled out of these Polymars. He didn't get the Spell Reflect this time around. He leaps over, trying to connect with the remaining damage, but the peels from Raikou were key during this moment. Mez goes for a Soul Shape, but it doesn't take him too far away. Blizzo in a Kidney, Blind on Lontar, Enraged Regen. Is it going to be enough for Blizzo? They were so close, but Raikou completely shuts them down during that assault. All their cooldowns go wasted. They're going to have to win with just shambles of damage after that. Lontar pre-bears the kidney, anticipating the hits. Bark skins the burst and needs to get out of that ring of fire and stop Meh from drinking. But Meh is ahead on mana. Meh's in a good position away from Swapsy. He mounts up. He's going to be able to mount up and run away. There's no way he's actually on his mount right now. Getting away from Swapsy. Lontar, he's going to flesh crap behind the pillar. Preempt the attack, but Blizzo's the target. He needs to get ready for Blizzo here. He's going to overgrowth, get all those hots up, and try and get him stabilized. But he's caught the gouge on his NS. He gets gouged and purged on his NS. He's not going to have that instant recovery, but Matt is still in trouble. There's gas pedal to the floor. Disarm onto Blizzo. He runs into the ring, so he's on both DRs at the same time. Gets polymorphed half. Now he's fully DR'd to CC. Bay Guardians is going to be running out. Lontar baits Waz really far away. He pre-evasions the bash from Lontar, or the in cap from Lontar. He kidneys Lontar, but it's just the rogue. There's no way he kills him. If Blizzo gets a spell reflect on a poly here, I think it's over. They polymorph Swapsy. Meth flies into the air. He's going for an aggressive uh -oh. holy fire. He's attacking while he's in the air at this moment in time. No way. Are they going to pull off the win with that? Lone Tar gets the iron bark. He gets the anti-magic zone, but it's not combustion. Those aggressive plays from Meh have created opportunities now to send Combustion with no zone. But they don't want to go on the Warrior, I think. Can they kill him through Enrage Regen? Maybe they can. Blizzo leaps over, charges in. I can't believe this game is still going. I thought I counted this game over like two or three times at this point. Blizzo into a kidney shot. Combustion is out onto Blizzo. He enraged regions, but Lone Tar's in such a good position. He's just 80 yards away, healing Blizzo through the assault, praying they can get the win. They have Abomination's Limb. They have the Conk Banner. He gets the Blade Storm, and he's going to be cutting down Meh at any moment. There's basically no mana left for him. They're all over him. I think this is it. No They're way. doing the impossible. There's no way. They're going to be able to do this. They pummel right because they in cap the team, and they pull it off. They take down Matt. I cannot believe it. This is unprecedented. CG and Esports remain in the upper bracket. A beautiful performance coming in from CGN Esports here. Uh, they brought a composition none of us expected. They played it out beautifully, bringing us to a Game 5 and ultimately handing Kungana their first loss of the season in a series. I mean, this is just such an impressive performance, and this is what we were talking about. These teams have prepared so much. Kungana's had a target on their back with their RMP, and I feel like CGN Esports, they definitely did their homework moving into this tournament absolutely unbelievable man cgn esports coming in as the fourth seed battling it out to the bitter end just to qualify but you can't you can't say anything about the players on these rosters and you know it's not been their meta but they found something and uh, 
And this is exactly what we want to see. We want to see these teams play to their strengths. This is the finals. And what a way to do it, CGN, with the, uh, with the TSG. They were trying the turbo during the circuit. Didn't work there. They fell flat, uh, I believe, on the last weekend. And uh, they went back to the drawing board. And, and what, a, what a massive performance as well uh, from all individuals in that last game. Lontar, uh, beautiful survivability. Swapsy, beautiful uh, defense, beautiful shutdowns. And Blizzo as well. Uh, with just crazy amounts of damage. And uh, we're going to see some of those uh, uh, close uh, moments here early on in the match. And uh, this is, uh, I believe, when Meh is in big, big trouble. Actually, uh, looks like uh, Blizzo and Meh are in big trouble in that one. And um, uh, some more uh, key moments here. Meh flying up in the air, going after Lontar. Lontar taking decent amount of damage. Defensive fear onto Raikou during that combustion. And that's just another, uh, you know, beautiful example of Swapsy and Blizzo's defense. Lontar uh, has the tranquility here when he needs it because he wasn't trying to get fancy with it. And then he, uh, another uh, big moment here onto Meh. They get a full blind onto Swapsy. Meh, one more, one more uh, there on the Meh. And he is a dead man. And then here, I believe, is when they almost kill Blizzo. Look at Meh, holy fire, smite, smite. Just doing crazy DPS here onto Blizzard. He barely, like, he is so unbelievably close to dying there if it wasn't for the anti-magic zone of Swapsy. And then here, I believe this is uh, the final moment of the game here um, where they're going after Meh and uh, Blizzo. He's getting disarmed. They're getting all the kind of micro CCs out of the way. And at this point, man, he's got no mana. He's got no cooldowns, no Look Fae Guardians. Uh, for five seconds, that Vortex there from Lontar on the soul shape of Meh might have been enough uh, actually to buy him time to get those Fae Guardians back. But Lontar, he wanted to get that kill. We saw it earlier as well when he went for uh, those aggressive bashes. Just beautiful stuff from CG and Esports. Yeah, that's just incredible since the last time we saw them. You know, they were certainly like everyone else struggling against this team, Kungata, but it really clicked for them. So what a way for CGN Esports to make their debut in two hours esports uh obviously huge congratulations to them no one's knocked out quite yet i know you guys kind of said it already but Ngana, they're in the lower bracket this isn't a place we've seen them since i don't know when do you expect this to rock their confidence at all then uh I, I i mean it has to a little bit right i mean these teams are i mean this team specifically Kungana, they're all professionals um but everything's you know the sunshine and rainbows when you're <laughs> always winning the thing is when you lose that's when you're going to get tested but i don't expect a team like Kungana to kind of lose focus uh, i'm sure they're going to be going back to the drawing board immediately you know analyzing uh the vod seeing exactly what went wrong what they can improve on start thinking of different compositions so uh, i think a, a team of the caliber of Kungana. Um, you know, obviously a disappointing loss for them, but I think they'll be able to bounce back. Yeah, I think they, they certainly will. But CGN for sure going to be riding off that momentum as they head forward into this bracket. Next up, we've got another up around. Still no elimination today. It's SK Gaming versus Casual Dads. We can take a look at that right here on the bracket. They are the next up quarterfinal series. And then we see CGN Esports bumping up there to the semifinal. So they're going to be playing the winner of this next up game. Um, I, how, how are we feeling about this one, Super Tease? I mean... Just based on the first one, I don't know if we could make any prediction with the second one. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, both teams have been practicing a lot of Outlaw RMP. Like, I'm anticipating that, but maybe not. Like, maybe SK Gaming do the Demo Ellie type of composition um, and, and kind of find their own way through the bracket rather than trying to take the RMP comp uh, from Kungana and Casual Dads. Uh, we'll have to wait and see for the first game um, for me to really kind of predict this. I feel like SK Gaming are probably a cut ahead at this time at this point in time like if i was betting man i'd bet on sk gaming right now um but i, I want to wait and see that blind pick i'm very curious for this matchup yeah curious as well sk gaming coming in just a little bit higher in terms of seating uh their second and casual dads is third but they both have a match record of five to two so they both had pretty solid seasons uh so we'll definitely have to see what they do decide to bring out to that blind pick but obviously uh, we gotta head to a break before we actually get there but we're moving on forward here in this year break european bracket so up next after this break sk gaming versus casual dads see you soon
everybody, welcome back. We are now moving on to our second match of the day here. It's SK Gaming facing off against Casual Dads. This is the second and third team. And now we are joined here with Gelu Baba. Hello, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Happy to be here. Ah, how'd you feel about that first match? Did you, did you predict win. it? Uh, I mean, we wargamed them a little bit and they played uh, Death Knight Rogue and they were losing. So I, was, I was a little bit sketched about how they would perform, but they had a different comp mindset. That's good. That's good. Yeah, definitely. Obviously worked out for them. Uh, but next up, we've got SK Gaming Casual Dads. I'd love to hear, um, as a competitor, Gelu, your perspective on these two teams. So Casual Dads are, as the name suggests, very casual. I know Alec right now is quite literally on holiday playing on a laptop. <laughs> Uh, he's he's off in Italy on a hundred MS. They said. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Nazarin's ever since the Destro nerf hasn't really been around that much, but they still have that really excellent core rogue mage, which they have won Lizcon with even and countless other tournaments. So the outlaw rogue mage could perform very very well. Then on the other side, you've got SK, who obviously they've won several tournaments in the past. Marrow's won. Countless in a row, same of Asgarath, Deepai. And they have the Rogue Mage as well. They're obviously, they've got some ults in there, but they're performing very well on the ladder and uh, quite well in the tournaments as well. They also have that Lock Shaman, which they might bring out. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what they come out with because SK have a lot of competition. Yeah, very true. Let's see what they bring out here. Game number one SK Gaming versus Casual Dads. Oh, they did I, it for no way. I for what, one what is today? very excited. We have a Mercy on the Warlock and Zipai on the Elemental Shaman. Elemental Shaman has gained a lot more popularity recently. Uh, you can get a lot of Lava Burst out and put out a lot of damage. The one thing I will say is I feel like most players feel like Elemental Shaman are particularly weak into Rogue Mage Priest. So locking this in uh, into what you expect to certainly be a Rogue Mage Priest is quite a bold statement here from SK Gaming. Yeah, for sure. Um, very scary playing this technology warlock into an outlaw rogue, I would say, because the pet can get killed quite easily. However, they can stop a lot of things with the axe toss stun, but it looks like they're going on to, to Zipai initially, forcing out his wall in the opener, choosing to start with the fire element rather than the earth element. He's having to trade his cooldowns out very early. Wait and see if they can punish that later on. He does hold his medallion at least, so maybe a trinket grounding. Uh, later on and he'll be able to recover but he's just under so much pressure not even a minute into the game finally recovered and are they going to get aggressive it looks like they are onto alec a massive swing of damage but clyde immediately responds and clyde is playing mind games this is very threatening onto an elemental shaman so i do wonder if he is respect out of nature's guardian uh for this matchup specifically because if he didn't he is running nature's guardian if they trigger that at low hp with mind games he'll just outright die to it so he needs to be very careful at the moment they're just pedaling down even despite alec being in italy is still overrunning sk game is he by repositioning away from nixie trying to get distance big lava burst proc onto alec as clyde gets stunned for a moment alec blinks behind the pillar he's going to respect that ascendance proc that opens up an opportunity to lightning lasso nixie and try and pull away from the assault he's trying to stall until his astral shift but 24 seconds away, but here's the kidney shot. Asgrath, line of sight in CC. If he can pre-fade a DB or a chastise here, he's going to easily be able to heal z -Pi. Oh, he gets blinded. That long distance blind, so difficult to avoid. They get follow-up. Can they get the Ring of Frost? Alec blinks over. Oh, they get the sap. z pre-fleshcraft. He gets kicked on it. Sap is still up for two more seconds. z is going to use the gateway. Look at that positioning right during that crowd control to escape with the demonic gateway. Excellent play from SK Gaming initially. Yeah, Zipai having a phenomenal game so far. Uh, still has that rock elemental available if he really needs it to bolster his health as well as his defense. So that's kind of the, the last thing I think he'll likely trade out. But it is kind of annoying to do that because uh, you lose a lot of damage when that fire elemental isn't available. Big ascendance proc here by Zipai looking for a hex. Going for a lava burst, but gets interrupted on it. 
In terms of mana, I would say Clyde still has a little bit of a lead here. And I'd say SK Gaming, they've kind of struggled to find pressure so far. Zipai has just been so far on the back foot. You know, if he's not in a kidney shot, he's running to survive because his healer is in crowd control. But Sun goes out onto Clyde. Nixie in midfield is going to be caught into a lasso. He gets interrupted immediately. Great backup there by Alec as he continues to push forward, looking for crowd control here onto Asgarath. Asgarath trying to just avoid him at all costs. Going into a kidney shot. Zipai at 50% health. Scary moment, but doesn't look like there'll be any follow-up. Never mind. A vanish blind coming in from Nixie. Crowd control is just so unrelenting. Zipai trades out his astral shift. That should be enough to survive, but this is a great push here by the casual dads. And Zipai, that was a very close call. Yeah, so it's worth to note that neither healer are playing the Resurrection Legendaries. They both could go down, but right now Alec is taking the brunt of the damage taking so much, pops out the mirror images, goes in to cauterize here. I'm not sure if his Guardian propped from Clyde there, but if it did, that could be a huge downfall for the side of Casual Dads. Being, that cooldown being on such a long, long duration would uh, really cause the end of the game. Clyde playing Venthy in this matchup compared to Asgarath means that Casual Dads could also lose on mana, considering Asgarath will be getting all that mana back from his Fae Fairies. Wait and see, because mana is even so far here, and Alec is just getting blasted. Suddenly, momentum shift for SK Gaming. He's dying while Zipai's in a kidney shot. A very scary moment. Is this going to be the downfall of RMP in day number one here between SK Gaming and CGN Esports? Because they're looking very good so far. Zipai has been kiting excellently, stalling, so that he always has a go stopper with a trinket or an astral shift or pre fey wall. Uh, from Asgarath, so I am curious to see if they can get win this in dampening. Full blind, though, in mind games, was casted by Clyde, chastising the fear on the Warlock. Excellent setup by the casual dads as they're pushing for the kill. Zipai manages to avoid the mind games with the wind shear. Has grounding totem available as well. He's just running away from Clyde. He knows the mind games is the most threatening as Asgarath positions behind the pillar, connecting a guardian spirit, now trying to turn it around. Alec blinks behind the pillar, shifting power to reset those powerful abilities. They can continue the assault as Asgrath escapes across the map, just running side to side. Classic Lock Shaman strategy is using the big map and pulling with the life grip and the demonic gateway and dragging your opponents out in the open and then making a swap. They're going after Clyde and the Axe Toss, maybe? Doesn't look like they're coordinating anything with it. I actually wouldn't have, wouldn't have mind a swap there, uh, but they're still focused on Alec. We're waiting to see if Zipai can get an Ascendance proc. That's when the Elemental Shaman is most threatening. See if he can find one here and get an ice block before the next kidney shot. As we see Nixie jumping over to Asgrath, kidney shot vanishes, not available. So no kidney shot for Zipai. They gouge the hex. Clyde is rolling up for crowd control. Mercy ports the fear. Zipai gets the wall up. Now Mercy is open to get crowd control. He fears Nixie. Buying time for Asgrath as Zipai gates to the pillar. Now Clyde is stunned. Again, just swapping to Clyde right here. I think wouldn't be too bad of an option, especially with how much mana they could burn. But Zipai's on the back foot. Asgrath uses IQD on the blind, gripping Zipai with the Fey Guardians as Alec gets denied on his combustion. He hides around the corner once again, trying to protect that shifting power. Asgrath into a kidney shot, setting up for crowd control. Are they going to find the Polymorph or a Fear here? Doesn't look like it. The chain's dropped. Asgrath Holy Wards and should be able to recover Zipai, although the damage is quite tremendous from Nixie at this point. Just hovering between Asgrath and Zipai, and right now with no IQD and no trinket on the shaman, this next setup could be lethal for casual dads onto SK Gaming. Yeah, it absolutely could. I mean, let's see exactly how they're going to try to weather that storm and survive. Zipai right now at about 50% health. Uh, Asgrath is struggling to keep him alive, and his mana is not looking good as we are entering dampening. Big howl of terror, though, coming in from Mercy as Alex is getting blasted. He is playing the Prismatic Cloak, so every single time he does blink, he's going to get magic, magic damage reduction. That's going to make him a lot more durable if he can time that blink at the right time, especially when Zipai is able to throw in some big damage. Lightning Lasso on a Nixie to control him up at the pillar. Really like that talent choice coming in from Zipai. Just basically his job in this match is to be annoying as possible, try to live as long as possible, and buy Mercy time to try to close out the game with all that Demonology Warlock damage. But at the same time, Alec is trying to get control of Mercy and his pets, slowing down that damage. And pressure just so back and forth at this point of the game. But SK Gaming has a big lead in terms of momentum and pressure. Alec on the back foot, on the pillar. And all of a sudden, mana is actually in favor of SK Gaming. And this is the exact kind of positioning you want if you are playing that Wizard Cleave. Have the RMP at the pillar, on the back foot, all rotting down. Clyde's not going to have an opportunity to drink. SK Gaming just needs to hold on a little bit longer, and they could actually find a Game 1 win. Yeah, that Night Fae paying dividends for them. But here, Alex's combustion 
comes out. The kidney goes out onto Merce to try and prevent the peels. They force out Astral Shift from z here. But that's really not the biggest cooldown you could force. They used Blind earlier on in the game, but they should be getting it back fairly soon due to that Vanish Legendary from Nixie. The next setup could be rather big. z no wall. Asgarath, no Guardian. But they need to get it soon because they are crumbling under the pressure. Axtos goes out onto Alec right now. The Tyrant is, is up. It is hitting Clyde. They're just trying to force him away from the pillar, trying to make him heal as much as possible. The Tyrant goes down. No crowd control on that Tyrant, though. They need to try and look to try and ring a frost that to try and prevent more damage from happening because they are really crumbling under the pressure. Another blind goes out onto Asgrath, but once again, they don't really force anything with it. Yeah, the coordination is lacking here from the casual dads. And as we get deeper into dampening, the damage from SK Gaming is going to stick more and more and become unrecoverable, I think, at a certain point. So long as Asgrath and Zipai can always have an answer for the combustion of Alec. Speaking of which, right now, there's not really a good answer, but there's no CC. They're just sending damage. Can they kill him with no CC? Zipai drops a grounding and throws back damage at to, over onto Alec. Asgrath finally into the kidney shot. Nine seconds away from the astral shift. Zipai's in trouble. Is Asgrath going to be able to stabilize him? The opening at 22%. Fago Guardian's out. Zipai's going to get aggressive. Alec is getting overrun. Triple Howl of Terror out from Mercy. Trying to cut in. Clyde pre-fades, but he's, Asgrath is counterspelled. Zipai could be in trouble. Mercy trinkets out a Dragon's Breath. Trying to keep his pressure going. Hand of Gul'dan after Hand of Gul'dan. Fear out of Axos, I think. Fear no one to Nixie now. Instead, trying to peel him away from Zipai on the kidney shot. They want to stay aggressive here, but Mana is completely tapped on both sides at this point. I'm not sure who's going to come out ahead. Asgrath has Apotheosis, making his Serenity free at this point. So he's going to get some big heals out during this time, whereas Clyde needs to wait 25 seconds to that Apotheosis of his. If he can stagger out to that point, though, he should be able to recover his team. But it's still, this 17 seconds feels like an eternity right now. 27% dampening. z Kidney Shot, immediate recovery. Asgrath, pre-Guardian Spirits, the blind. z gates away on the go. Lobbing Lava Burst as he kites away. Nixie is feared on the go. Beautiful positioning here. Alec gets blasted down to 1%. How did they not proc cauterize right now on this point? It's actually unbelievable that they don't get cauterized right here. Bladestorm from the pets. Massive damage incoming. They still don't get... How do they not get cauterized from this push right now? Clyde's in a full fear. There should be no way they don't get cauterized from Alec here on the Fire Mage. How did they not get it? Apotheosis is now up for Clyde. Big free healing should be incoming. z on the back foot. He astral shifts. He's trying to fake the interrupts, but he gets kicked by Nixie. Goes for a Fleshcraft. He kept that as a back pocket recovery, but he's still getting swarmed at the moment. Astral shift has fallen, but it's reset by the cooldowns of Asker. He's four seconds away from it. He's kiting with the Spirit Walker's Grace. z is playing an insane game right now, positioning Alec in the midfield. He has to retreat away. Lightning Lasso onto Nixie for the swap, trying to pull off a miracle into dampening. Clyde is speared away. Alec and Mercy going toe-to-toe -to -toe in midfield. Nixie, Cloak of Shadows onto z -Pi. Asgrath is drinking, trying to give his team a little bit more of an edge as this game goes so deep into dampening. z pre-walls. Asgrath breaks out of the blind. They know it's do or die for SK Gaming. They need to end this game in the next minute. I think it's over for them. Yeah, I mean, at this point of the game, things are very tense. Nixie in the middle of the map, though. He has no Cloak of Shadows. He gets stunned. Can they take him down? He's got the Vanish. Trades it out immediately. And now that Clyde has no man, I mean, Nixie is just a very vulnerable target as well. There's two openings here for the side of SK Gaming. And Casual Dad's not going to be feeling nearly as confident with Nixie in the middle of the map. And alas, so he gets dropped. SK Gaming claimed game number one. And despite these rogue mages just absolutely dominating the circuit, SK Gaming coming in with this composition, getting a game number one win. I mean, this is just something I feel like a lot of us didn't expect, but it is great to see these teams kind of improvise, bring in these different compositions, and really mix things up here. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this was casual dad's game to lose I, I i think they have the upper hand in this matchup they just didn't shut down the wall of damage enough you see his numbers that he's putting out here his tyrants were getting full value his uh grimoire fell guard was getting full value it was kind of uncontested just sitting in the middle of the map doing whatever he wanted really you need to be uh when you're playing this outlaw rmp you need to be shutting down dps more because the longer the game goes on the more opportunities you have to win and they just took far too much damage from what I could see. Yeah, we're going to see that on the scoreboard here. SK Gaming in the purple line is tremendously above the yellow line of casual dads. But if we look at healing, 
Uh, Clyde did a very impressive job to heal despite uh, Mercy not being shut down for that long and keeping his team going, that miracle moment. And then they just swapped to Nixie. That's what I love about Zipai's positioning. He kept options on the table by pulling Nixie into bad positions and just kiting with life grip, kiting with gateway, and then blasting whoever was out in midfield. You love to see Zipai on the Elemental Shaman. I love seeing Mercy coming on his main, coming on the Warlock, Asgrath backing them up and running this Lock Shaman. It seems like it's been such a long time since we've been able to see them pull off wins with this composition. And now it's testing the meta. It's testing the RMPs. Are they going to be able to clean up their plays here? Because I, I, mean, I agree with Gelo. I think the matchup-wise and Ellie Shaman, uh, it's not a good time with a rogue on you the entire game and then combustion just sent at you and you always need an answer, but you don't really have good answers uh, as an elemental shaman. So playing out of their minds, and but casual dads will get an opportunity to kind of level up here for these next games. Maybe Clyde drops the mind games. I, I, I felt like he never even got a good mind games off um, that, that kind of threatened lethal throughout this entire game. This is that miracle moment where I couldn't believe that they didn't get caught. Or I was like, mercy, he's just free casting damage. His Tyrant's going to run around the corner, and I can't believe they didn't get it at that point. But they give up on the Mage. They go after the Rogue. They pop Ascendancy. Thunderstorms Nixie into midfield, getting the Life Grip out of the way. And then he positions on the Gateway so that Zipai can escape here when he's in trouble. He gets interrupted. And while he's interrupted, I think he uses the Gateway. He Lava Bursts, Gates, and then, oh, Nixie's like, whoa, wait, I'm stuck in the middle of the map. I can't do anything. And then just dies uh, as a result. So insane plays on the side of SK Gaming. You can tell that they're polished and prepared. Um, and casual dads are the ones that are going to need to clean up if they want to take this series. I mean, definitely. We'll have to see a little bit of improvement from them in this one. I mean, there was a few moments in the game where it was close, but I feel like SK Gaming had a really clear game plan. I kind of wonder if for maps, uh, we see casual dads go to something really small, like a hook point or something, or perhaps they want like a bigger pillar to avoid that Demo Warlock damage. I mean, Gello, I know you were saying that against the Demonology Warlock. Like, my question for you is this. I mean, this is one of those compositions where you have the Demonology Warlock is obviously very threatening, but you also have the Elemental Shaman. And I mean, the Elemental Shaman is just so vulnerable. The idea of just chasing him down the entire game um, seems very, uh, you know, it seems like you want what you want to be doing, um, very appealing in the match. Um, but you think that they should prioritize more on controlling the like the Demo Warlock damage? I mean, the thing with Demo Warlock damage is it's you can allow him to ramp, you can allow him to free cast as long as you stop the tyrant and you CC the pets after he's done it. So if you know if they put a root onto the Grimoire Fell Guard, which is doing twenty five percent more damage than regular Fell Guard, if you put Ring of Frost on the tyrant, if you CS the tyrant, if you line of sight the tyrant, then he's doing a lot less. But here, his tyrant was just shooting everyone in the middle of the map. His fellow guard had full uptime. His pets weren't really controlled on the go, so he could just stun defensively, offensively, whenever he wanted. He... They just need to try and control him a lot more. It almost seems like there's like it's more of a priority to just like it feels like as the mage it's more of a priority to just limit the demo warlock's damage than actually get crowd control on the healer. Like uh, eventually, like you said, your outlaw rogue is going to kind of pull ahead on the elemental shaman if you can sustain that long in the match. So I kind of wonder if we just see you know Clyde go for more mana regeneration. No, he's going to be sticking with the mind games. Not going to be swapping over to the night fay, but. Yeah, I'm really curious. Casual Dad's going to be trying to pull out a win here on the smaller map. I think it's going to be about controlling Mercy's damage as much as possible in this match. Uh, let's see how they decide to start it out. Yeah, so we start with the cheap shot onto Merce. We can't find a sap onto Asgrath, unfortunately, as they try and open up onto Zipai. Zipai once again playing with that offensive fire elemental in the start of the game. Maybe having to trade out his wall. We get the Night Fae Guardians from Asgarath instead on Alex Combustion. Here's the blind onto Asgarath. Choose to sit through it. He's playing Relentless and IQD. So every three minutes he can use a trinket out of these blinds. But he just chooses to sit it as he has the Night Fae Guardians on Zipai. And this opener from Casual Dad's really not forcing too much. They forced the Guardian. But that's only a minute cooldown. They didn't even get him slightly low. Yeah, this is not an impressive start here for the casual dads on the small map. They did get the trinket from Zipai though, with a polymorph now into Asgarath. Mercy is counterspelled. This forces the astral shift, so finally banking some cooldowns, but they are getting punished. Look at the damage onto Alec and Clyde from Mercy at this moment. 
uh, with that soul rot as well as the tyrant initially building momentum getting a howl of terror on the multiple targets z by thunderstorming the kidney shot but it's a vanished double kidney onto the healer alec trying to get in position but mercy's trying to shut him down with fear he gets counterspelled on fear nixie tearing in with lots of damage he off kicks asgrath z by flesh crafts while the interrupts are down trying to take advantage of that time Mercy gets feared away. Zipai staying close to the demonic gateway, but he doesn't have it for just a second here. A couple seconds away. Asgrath gates and can pull Zipai now to the pillar if he needs to on the kidney. I think, no, he actually doesn't have Leap of Faith yet, so Zipai's a bit stranded here with the opposing RMP. Asgrath actually might even be trying to drink around the corner, realizing that this game went so deep into dampening, uh, making sure that you're always ahead on mana and kind of overwhelm your opponent seems to be their main strategy. I think with the small map, what I would like to see from SK Gaming is more swaps to Clyde. Look at Clyde right now. He's feared out in the open. He's on top of your team. Axe toss him, tyrant him, and kind of go all at him. But they're going after Nixie right now to get evasion and feint. Evasion is going to be a little bit effective for dodging some of the physical attacks of the demonology pets, but not going to be of too much consequence. The Cloak of Shadows is really what they want from Nixie to have him as a viable target, but I don't think he will be until dampening at least. Nixie gets knocked away. z once again positioning on the Demonic Gateway. Gets Kidney Shot. Asgrath pre-activating cooldowns on this Kidney Shot, anticipating the hits. Mercy in a fear. Really like these fears on the Mercy during the kidney shots. Alec going for a combustion here, but it's lightning lassoed. It's actually getting turned around on him. Really devastating for Alec during his combustion when there's no astral shift. They get a polymorph, but it looks like it breaks out. Alec is low here. Is he going to go down? Popping the mirror images. Gets windsheared on the Ring of Frost. Trying to get a polymorph. Blinks in onto Asgrath. He might regret blinking in. Mercy ports back. It's a double howl of terror. But the Ring of Frost is going to connect onto all of those pets. Denying the Grimoire Felguard. Good defense from Alex so far. I love the counter spells and the fear from Mercy. The chastise on Mercy into the fear. Trying to remove the Warlock a little bit more in game number two. Nixie stunned up. And they seem really tunneled on killing Nixie right now. Uh, whereas I think I would prefer them baiting Clyde into the open, fearing him, and then swapping to him. I think it's worth calling out the control that just went out on Mercy. He got counter spelled on his Tyrant. Polymorphed on his Tyrant. Polymorphed on his Tyrant. Dragon's Breath on his Tyrant, Counterspelled on his Tyrant, Feared on his Tyrant, and then when he finally got it off, it was a Ring of Frost, and Alec was immediately at the pillar. So that's the kind of control you definitely want to see. Alec right now in the midfield, though, getting blasted. And if Zipai procs, he gets an Ascendance proc uh, on a lot of his damage, the Echoing Shock, it's going to be a massive burst that is kind of hard to detect and can kind of just come out of nowhere on that Elemental Shaman. But so far, SK Gaming looking incredibly dur durable in this game number one. That being said, Asgrath is actually behind on mana at this point of the game. So Clyde has been doing a good job maintaining. And I think in general, casual dads have just been doing a really good job shutting down Mercy a lot more in this match. Yeah, Alec playing far better this game defensively. But here comes the blind onto Asgrath. z once again trading out the Astral Shift. They have Combust for next go. However, z does have Trinket, but he does not have Wolf for that. They don't have Night Fae Guardian, so they may be able to get the Guardian from Asgarath instead. Nixie now with the Cloak of Shadows, the Evasion up. He's trying to go for an offensive push. Evasion just topped the Axe Toss. Kidney onto Zipai, Combust onto Zipai. Can they get any crowd control onto Asgarath? He Holy Wards, he dashes around the pillar, but he's playing so close to Zipai that he can kind of get Focus Kicked, Focus Gouge. It's very dangerous stacking mm. up this close when you're against an RMP. But here comes the Tyrant from Merce, the soul rot up for the tyrant. It gets rooted and they run away. Great reactions from casual dads here. This is what we needed to see in game one. Just as soon as that tyrant's up, you just get out of there and you know, they survive using very minimal cooldowns. Oh, it looks like they're swapping to Clyde. At least all the imps are on Clyde at this moment in time as he's spell locked on his mind games. Asgrath in a blind for one more second. They don't chain the crowd control. Clyde's going to go for a Mind Games. Doesn't look like he got it. z I think, grounded the Mind Games, and Clyde is really getting no value from that ability so far. z gets interrupted by Nixie as he rolls over. Asgrath gets a big heal, and they're still just going after Nixie, cleaving down Alec as he crosses the map. They fear Clyde as, he out, as he's out in the open. Good punish from Mercy, responding to all that CC onto himself by CCing the Priest. Nixie, line of sighting his healer for a moment here as he tries to get back to Clyde and recover. He gets chastised stunned by Asgrath, cross crowd controlled with a lightning lasso on Nixie. I love that coordination from Asgarath and z -Pide. Oh my goodness! One second away from Cloak of Shadows! Big heal comes in from Clyde, saving Nixie in the nick of time. This Clyde line of sights and desperately tries to recover. Another kidney shot onto z -Pide. z -Pide trying to knock him away, repositioning out of line of sight of Alec and Clyde as Alec blinks in aggressively, counterspelling him, now baiting for a hex, full hex. Oh, unfortunately, it's going to break to some of the AoE damage from the Warlock. Can't really control, unfortunately. Nice lasso with a, uh, with cross crowd control here with that spell lock. 
And with damage onto Nixie, Z Pi's repositioning Nixie away from Clyde so Mercy can get fears. Look at that coordination. Clyde's into a fear, but it's Z Pi who's falling behind with a polymorph onto Asgrath. Looks like he was able to get out of it. Now that Dragons were putting him on DR for basically all CCs here against the casual dad. z into a kidney shot. Asgrath trying to get some flash heals to get a Serenity. He doesn't have one. He needs more flash heals. He's a couple seconds away from it. z getting knocked away from Braum for a moment. Isle of Terror comes out from Mercy, but z on the back foot. Has to Astral Shift. This is not Adrenaline Rush. This is not Combustion. So he's sinking that cooldown. If we don't see like a him out from Asgrath to reset that... Astral Shift, he's going to be in trouble. Alec is so close to another Combustion. Dixie is so close to his most powerful damaging cooldowns as well, but they're getting cleaved down. z gets gripped back to the pillar. Nixie is pushing in for the kill. Can they finish z -Pi? He's going to pop out the Fire Elemental and try and get aggressive. He hexes Alec. Just unfortunately going to break. Full Fear onto Clyde. Setting up for z to maybe go for a Lightning Lasso here. There's no counter spell right now. He could go for it. They're going to chastise stun Nixie. Blast out some Lava Burst into a Lightning Lasso. Try and KO him, but he pre-faints the stun. And it should be enough with Clyde in the background, I think, to recover. No, they get Cloak of Shadows, which is way better than nothing on this push. But here's the kidney shot. Combustion is coming up in two more seconds. Maybe they should have saved it, honestly, to coordinate with the Combustion, because now I don't think Alec wants to send it. Oh, let's see what happens. Asgard's mana is running thin. Both these healers are going to start to struggle. We are at 15% dampening. z behind the pillar, just trying to create as much space as possible and force Alec to chase him to get off any kind of damage. z just constantly running into the middle of the map, allowing Mercy to get off as much pressure as possible and try to create some space here. But a big kidney shot lands. This is massive damage here on z He can easily get dropped. He trinkets out. Is it going to be enough? The Guardian Spirit trades out by Asgoth. A really scary moment there. That was a great push by Nixie and Alec catching z out of position but that astral shift is going to be available off cooldown soon here for zipai he's going to be able to use that on the next setup and uh casual dads i mean the pressure really is mounting right now going for a mind games but clyde oh! might go down he gets dropped a beautiful push there by sk gaming i do not believe he's running the resurrection legendary they're going to be going for it here on zipai but zipai knows he's going to be fine gets out of the stun trades out the astral shift and a 2-0 lead here for sk gaming i mean this is just unbelievable. Even on the small map, they're able to pull out a win. I mean, where do you see? Where do you think that they can improve here, Gallo? Um, honestly, I'd really like to see Clyde play Kyrian because I think that the Kyrian resets very, very fast on all the imps. It's especially good when you uh, when you play Mechanicos and it cleaves on all the pets. You can get that damage off very consistently, and it's very high damage compared to this uh, mind games, which doesn't really seem to be doing too much. This game was much better though. They took a lot less damage from Merce. You can see his numbers are just significantly lower. So uh, I mean, just, this is a great improvement from Casual Dads and I would just say they're a bit out of position at the end. Yeah, getting punished there. Um, but uh, that, that plays a testing to SK Gaming strategy, right? They're just running across the map and at any moment you get in their crosshairs, it's like, target acquired. I see you, Clyde. Moving out in the open to try and heal Nixie. Uh, and that's just part of the strategy from SK Gaming that casual dads need to be ready and prepared for. So really nice swap here from SK Gaming in game number two. And this is an unprecedented day one of tournament play. Are both outlaw RMPs going to be sent to the lower bracket in Europe here off the initial stages uh, with the elemental shaman demonology warlock with the death knight and the warrior earlier on in the day. And this is where we see z constantly pulling Nixie around the map. I thought he was going to go down and Clyde manages to recover him. But because there was so much pressure on Nixie, if you're Clyde, you're thinking like, oh no, I'm, I'm way focused on Nixie. Keep Nixie alive, keep Nixie alive. It's all about Nixie. I have to protect Nixie. That's all that matters. And that's what they're doing right now. They're building that mental inside of Clyde's head throughout this game. Uh, and then at a certain point, they're gonna be able to win. I think Zipai pre-healing streamed this go as well, that he, sh he would have died if he didn't. He was literally at 1%. The healing stream totem actually kept him alive just long enough uh, that he could survive this go. But later on, because they're hammering so much damage on Nixie, Clyde just doesn't anticipate it. He used Fade to try and immune CC, and look where Clyde is. He's in the middle of the map. Mercy's like, hello, Clyde. Why are you casting mind games? My Tyrant is here. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to regret that right now. So really good punish from SK Gaming. I love that their strategy is flexible. I was getting a bit worried that they were tunneling the rogue too much, but uh, in their master plan, it ends up working out catching Clyde here on hook point, which means now they got to win a reverse sweep if they want to win this series. That's not an easy thing to do, especially because it seems like SK Gaming is very prepared for this matchup. And that's kind of what we talked about in the pre-show. I mean, every every single one of these teams knew that so far, 
this year, well, at least in the circuit, it was kind of the story of outlaw RMPs. I mean, that's what most teams are running, finding success with that, um, you know, the Rogue Mage Priest, specifically outlaw. So a lot of these teams, they've been practicing, trying to figure out answers. How are they going to deal with that composition? And it seems like SK Gaming has kind of found their answer. Now, I do think there's room for improvement from casual dads, but this is not an easy matchup to navigate. Um, I would like to see a Covenant swap here from Clyde. It really feels like the mind game is getting absolutely no value. It's getting shut down during those important moments. Um, and outside of those important moments, you're really going to get no value from it whatsoever. So that's one thing casual dads can do to kind of mix it up here. Um, but we're going to be going to Dalaran Sewers, which is actually, I feel like Dalaran Sewers is kind of a good map for the side of SK Gaming. Um, so it's an interesting pick for casual dads for sure. Yeah, I mean the, the upside of, of Dalaran Sewers is that the priest on SK Gaming, Asgarath and Zipai, they may end up stacking quite a bit, so Nixie can go back and forth, kick one, kidney the other one, gouge, and as he was doing on hook point. And I mean the other maps in the pool are quite large for the kiting. You've got uh, mm. Ash Main's Fall is going to be very far away, Black Rook, everyone's going to be very far away. It's just sort of the closest map that you can get uh, that's left in the pool. So I, I would I would say they wouldn't really have much of a choice in this one, unfortunately. I think the gateway is also really hard on this map. It's like you want it in the middle, going box to box with the waterfall if you don't position it exactly. It can sometimes come down and prevent you from using gateway. Uh, so sometimes you'll set it ramp to box, but then you got like weird line of sight issues where you're out in the open, not really at a pillar. So I don't, I don't think it's that bad into a warlock. Um, also, the pets will be easily line of sightable on this map. You just jump off the side if you need to. Um, and then Nova them if they're in a bad position coming around the boxes. So I think the small maps make sense for casual dads with the way that SK Gaming are playing. I'm almost a bit worried now, though, if they manage to even win here that like, uh, Empyrean Domain, like, what are you going to do? <laughs> Mercy is going to do so much damage on Empyrean Domain. He can just stand far away so his irons out in the open. His imps aren't going to get CC'd and line of sighted as easily. Like... This is going to be actually rough for casual dads, I think, to reverse sweep. I mean, a problem for this map as well is the Tyrant is actually so tall that if he is down, he will shoot up. <laughs> so That's it's, hilarious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't exactly line of sight him when it's down on the bottom, which is, uh, yeah, it's very unfortunate. But That's really interesting. I didn't even know that. So, uh, yeah. Oh, that's my favorite mount in the entire game. Just a shout out right there. Uh, you love the alpaca. Absolutely beautiful. But you are going into game number three. This could potentially be the final game of this series. SK Gaming looking super strong. Drop 2-0. Casual dads. They need to reverse sweep if they want to stay in that upper bracket. Otherwise, they're going to be going down to the lower bracket. And that is not a position you want to be in. Um, because you're fighting Kagana, which is not is something anyone really expected. I mean, the team that has, has been undefeated so far on the circuit is waiting for you in the lower bracket. Um, so Casual Dad's going to have to fight back here for dear life. But uh, obviously, SK Game is not making that easy. And this Elemental Shaman Demonology Warlock has looked really solid so far. Yeah, although they are Outlaw RMP, their openers haven't really been getting anything, which... You kind of want to be able to get that sap on at least, you know, the Warlock before you start the game. But as you can see here, Clyde has swapped to Night Fae this game instead of that mind game. So he will have a lot more longevity this game, more defensives, more mana. So they're in it for the long haul this time. Yeah, let's see if they can drag it into Dampening here against Zipai. I mean, Zipai is a lord of Dampening on this Elemental Shaman, so it's going to be really tough uh, for this team. They already get Cloak of Shadows and Fae Guardians. Big overlap on the side of Casual Dads. Pre-Astral Shift from Zipai on the blind here. Insane plays. These are the types of plays that you need to kind of switch these matchups in your team's favor. If you can keep this up, they might get a clean 3-0 against the Casual Dads. Send both RMPs of the European region to the lower bracket at this point in the tournament and be going up against CGN Esports in that upper side, which could be an insane series. I don't even know what comps they're going to have prepared for each other given what we've seen so far in the tournament could be quite surprising kidney shot onto zipai alec trying to reset combust shifting power trying to go for crowd control asgrath looks like he pre-faded the frost nova he's going to run away with a fear clyde is stunned up nixie's in a lightning lasso he's trying to grapple over to mercy to kill that fell obelisk so it's not buffing all the pets very important against the demonology warlock to limit their sustained damage but he's out in the open to try and do that trade and look they are not afraid to hit clyde they just blasted a couple of spells over to him, and he's just ducking around the corner to try and recover. At any point, SK Gaming are ready to punish. Yep, Nix is going to be charging forward, continue the damage here. Zipai gets gripped on that kidney shot. Good back up there by Asgrath, who's positioning very far away. And this is the thing. I mean, Zipai 
anytime Nixie's at the box with him and he's able to line a sight Alex, he can go for these lasso plays, which is going to reverse momentum, obviously stop damage on him and get a little pressure there on Nixie. So the lasso's really, really nice. It was a nice knock there by Zipai as well. Using the map to the full potential, Zipai gets interrupted. Nixie continuing to make a charge. Here's a full blind on Asgrath. Zipai in a kitty shot. Is it going to be a trinket? Looks like he's going to sit it for now. The Fey Guardians trade out from Asgarath. There's a nice preemptive Fey Guardians there before the blind, before the Ring of Frost. And that's the only reason why Zipai didn't have to trade a single cooldown during that go. And now, casual dads, they get punished. I mean, this is a beautiful turn of events here for SK Gaming. That was the blind Ring of Frost. And all of a sudden, it's casual dads completely on the back foot. They get the ice block. A beautiful go here by SK Gaming. Yeah, casual dads put very on the back there. Alec now with the combust, trying to desperately get what he can, but there's no crowd control on anyone. The smoke bomb comes out, but it doesn't really achieve much in the terms of crowd control. He just kind of walked out. z still though, though. The CS been used onto Merce, now allowing Asgraf to free cast. But Asgraf gets focus kicked by Nixie, just runs over, kicks him, puts him into the blind. The IQD from Asgraf breaking that instantly. But now, for the next go, there is no trinkets on the side of SK Gaming. There's no wall on the side of Zipai. This could surely score the end of the game if he can get his combust back in a very quick manner. Let's see if Alec can do it. 50 seconds away. Every fireball is going to be important from Alec here, but they're going after Clyde. He's in the middle of the map. Zipai repositions to the gateway. He can gate while he's kicked. Love that coordination from Zipai. He gets the interrupt out of the way and also gets a distance from his opponents. He knocks away Nixie off the side after using that grappling hook. Zipai is playing insane right now. He, he came to play on this elemental shaman, living up to the name Zipai. Just a legendary player on this specialization for such a long time, even despite the meta being stacked in these outlaw RMPs favor for so long. They're finding a way to navigate through it and managing to do it their own way. Alec is getting blasted. No block for three minutes. Zipai just repositioning, stalling for his cooldowns. Nixie knows that he's stalling. Needs to get aggressive. Nice ring of frost under Mercy around the corner on the boxes here. Nixie's getting aggressive. He's getting cheeky. Pre-Cloak of Shadows. Anticipating a stun as he jumps out of line of sight, but Alec is pushing up. Clyde is pushing up. They're going for the kill. Asgrath anticipates it, activating Guardian Spirit on the Z Pi. Now they're going to have to wait for that. They're actually going to go into it. That's a mistake. Z Pi is going to get gripped back to the pillar. Once again, Asgrath Z Pi, amazing positioning, stalling this. But here's Combust. They get a full blind. They could win here, maybe. Astral Shift from Z Pi. And there's no kidney shot. Again, just the coordination from Casual Dads. Just not there at the moment. They're going to kidney Mercy for a second, but now Nixie's in a lightning lasso, and that bought just enough time for Zipai to survive. Now, Fear's on to basically all members of Casual Dads. Clyde's going to pop the Apotheosis. It gets Feared again on it for a moment. Alex's going to activate the Divine Aegis during the cooldowns here of the Demology Warlock with both of those Fell Guards out. Gets a Frost Nova, trying to control the pets, trying to get them under control at this point. Asgrath half mana, Clyde half mana, Clyde wind sheared. Both Apotheosises are rolling. No Cloak of Shadows, though. For 40 seconds, he has Vanish. He could reset it uh, another 20 seconds off of it and get pretty close to it here. Smoke Bomb's coming up, and there's no Trinket. There's no wall. If they can get a Combust with a Smoke Bomb before Nixie dies, though, it's match point. He's going to Vanish away. That Cloak of Shadows now five seconds. They need to get aggressive. This next Smoke Bomb needs to win the game. Alex should be pressing Fireball right now, I think, to try and get a reset on his Combustion. They can win with Bomb Bust. They go for a Kidney Blind, but uh, there's no damage, and Nixie's just going to die. Cloak of Shadows is at 10%. He's trying to recover with Clyde. The coordination's not there. He gouges the Tyrant, trying to control it as much as possible. But now with no cloak, he is an open target. He's trying to chase down Zipai, but if Zipai gets a pre-wall, this is everything could come down to this one moment here. If Zipai gets a pre-wall, maybe Nixie just dies before it even matters. He's getting blasted right now. There's the kidney. Where's the bomb? Where's the bust? This is it. This is their opportunity to win. Askrat ducks into the bomb with the Holy Ward, gets the Guardian Spirit, and denies that moment. That was their one glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel to kill Zipai, and it gets shut down. That was such a beautiful push there, but unfortunately not able to get it done. And once again, I have to call it Asgrath with his Fae Guardians on that blind setup, just completely reversing the momentum. Zipai is going to be taking no pressure a little bit earlier on in the game. Here's a big kidney shot, though, but Nixie gets caught into a stun. Asgrath is going to be gripping Zipai back to the pillar. Nixie gets knocked away. Alec going for a double frost. Now a potential ring of frost. Can he find it? It's a kidney shot. No, it gets spell lock. Great denial there by Mercy. 
Asgrath will get out of the crowd control. Alec still trying to find a polymorph. It gets death. That's just this is such an annoying matchup for Alec to try to get anything done. If it's not wind shear, he's getting stunned, he's getting knocked, he's getting grounded. There's just so much disruption in this match. Next, he's going to kind of have to carry Alec right now. Going for a double Dragon's Breath. Ring of Frost here onto Mercy. But Alec overstays his welcome in the middle of the map. Clyde goes for a drink. Mercy denies it by gating over. But he's kind of left Zipai alone at this point in the game. Mercy going for fears. Finds it onto Clyde. Can they find any pressure here on Anixie? He's in a lightning lasso. He's getting blasted down. He does have the Cloak of Shadows. But has to make the trade. Wants to avoid a lot of that incoming damage. Fate Guardian is going to trade once again by Asgrath here on Azipai. Really bolstering his durability. Asgrath's going to just cross the map once again. But that kidney shot does land. If Alec can find any crowd control, can he get the polymorph? Doesn't look like he's able to. Big amounts of damage though with that combustion. That will be the Guardian Spirit. Asgrath grips him over. Just really good defense. And I say the one thing SK Gaming is doing so well in this matchup that they have to is they're not overlapping their defensive cooldowns. They're making the proper trades. They're really extending this game and casual dads has yet to find a really solid opening 17 percent dampening now in the match point game between sk and casual dads casual dads they are on the back foot nixie at 20 percent is on 10 percent the lower bursts coming in he gets gripped to the pillar the fey guardians are up he's attacking the fell guard desperately trying to get combo points trying to alleviate some pressure from his healer clyde who has absolutely zero mana but now they go in but Asgrath is drinking. They're trying to catalyze on this. They're going to kick onto Zipai. The blind onto Asgrath. No trinket available. Wall comes out from Zipai. The ring connects onto Asgrath. But there's just so many peels coming out from Merce. It doesn't look like they have quite enough damage. Combust is coming up very, very soon. He's shifting to get it back. The kidney onto Asgrath. Will he pull this Combust here? And he pulls it out. The, the CC is ended on Asgrath, though. And the Combust is not doing quite as much as it could. It's trying to connect to him, but the Night Fate Guardians from Asgaroth and Zipai is just so, so low. The heck comes out onto Alec, oh. though, and reversing the pressure onto Nixie. Nixie into the Cloak of Shadows, Clyde into the Fade. Zero mana once again for the sound for the side of Casual Dads. Oh my good. I can't believe Zipai is alive right there. He, he just lives with a shaving of health. And they might be able to pull off the miracle. Asgrath is drinking in the back line. Clyde can't drink. Mercy's on top of him. Asgrath gets a tiny bit of mana here, and maybe they can pull off the win for his team. Clyde's got apotheosis in his back pocket, though, to get some big serenity heals. He's going to go for that right away to get those free serenities. Uh, Mercy getting cleaved down a bit. And this is kind of an awkward situation. Are they going to get aggressive, push on the RMP, and trying to end the game? They get life grip on the warlock, but he life grips the smoke bomb. They tried to go for a miracle all in on the warlock, and Asgrath totally shuts them down. Now Nixie in trouble. So deep into dampening, Clyde trades out big cooldowns on the Nixie, keeping him stable, keeping him aggressive. They're trying to push for the win before that astral shift comes up in nine more seconds. Can they find it seven seconds away from it? Can they connect damage in the kidney shot? Combust is coming up in ten, three seconds away for astral shift. They blind Asgrath. They fear Mercy. They're going for it. Z out of the stun though he's got astral shift he can just pop it he's gonna pop astral shift they're trying to shut down cc they howl the whole team they spell lock clyde lava burst incoming on to alec from zipai managing to survive yet another blind here from the casual dads during all of this chaos getting deeper into dampening both priests managing to snag a tiny bit of mana to keep this battle going just a little bit more longer zipai standing next to the gateway getting ready for his next escape perfect positioning here as he's looking to rise and challenge Thor for the God of Thunder title here on his Elemental Shaman, knocking Alec and Nixie off the side and trying to get them out of position so that Clyde can avoid CC. Alec is slowly marching back, trying to get on top of him to find crowd control. Will he be able to get there? They pre fake Guardians the Kidney Shot, anticipating the damage. Now Alec is being overrun. He gets a Frost Nova onto both Fell Guards. The Kidney Shot Mercy, good control under the Warlock, but those pets are out. He's trying to drop a Ring of Frost. But I'm not sure if they connected on the fell guards. He's getting chopped down, and I cannot believe it. It is an unprecedented first day of the AWC. If SK Gaming can pull this uh -oh. off, but no, Alec has survived. Zipai is now on the back foot. Asgrath anticipates crowd control, activates the Holy Ward. They're trying to purge it off before going for CC. He blinks away from the purges, trying to line a side. Zipai's kidney downstairs. Is Asgrath ready for this hit? Zipai's in so much trouble right now. Mercy, emergency peels, stuns Alec, fears Clyde, trying to stall for Zipai. Can he stay alive? He's on 10% lobbing lava burst and will get taken down. Now, Mercy in a 2v3 with zero mana on the Holy Priest. He's caught in a cheap shot. And I think He's likely going to tap out at this point. Kidney shot, yes, going to tap out. I can't believe it, but casual dads pulling it off at the last second. It's messy, it's dirty, but it's done. Unfortunately, uh, on the bigger maps, I don't think they can afford to be messy and dirty. <laughs> uh, everything will be exposed to the light of Empyrean Domain.
<laughs> yeah, I, I mean, in pure domain, it could be uh, definitely scary. But casual dads, they managed to hold on. I mean, like you said, it was a little bit messy. But ultimately, if they can bring the game long enough, the consistent pressure and durability of that outlaw rogue can push forward. And at the end of that game, it was just Zipai and Asgrath. There was really no cooldowns left for them to work with. I, I honestly feel like Zipai, Mercy, and Asgrath had a kind of a they had a really good game. I felt like it was going incredibly well for them, but things just fell apart. This dampening got higher and higher. Casual Dads was able to pull out a win. But the question is, can they pull that off two more times? Yeah, really excellent choice from Clyde to go on that night fate. Feels like he got a lot more value than the mind games. Just being able to drag the game on longer, resetting cooldowns, getting mana back. And I mean, this, this big map could be a double-edged sword for uh, SK Gaming as it will allow Clyde to get more drinks off as well. And it feels like the longer the game goes on, the more it kind of swings in Casual Dad's favor as that outlaw damage just kind of kills them without any crowd control needed on Asgareth. Yeah, I can see that being a problem for them. This was just... I actually can't believe z -Pi. They just managed to get deeper into dampening. That seems to be a key role here for these RMPs um, in their matchups is just surviving long enough that you can kind of just overwhelm the target and the Elemental Shaman becomes so flimsy, so... Not being able to finish the game here, Clyde with good positioning, not getting caught for any swaps. That was likely key uh, for the sides of the casual dads. But <laughs> again, there's lots of moments like this, whereas if that's Tolveron and the rogue is like that, I, I feel like he's probably too far away from the pillar to survive. Ultimately though, kidney shot healer, chastised warlock, running down the elemental shaman. He's got no wall. Uh, it's going to put them in a good position. I also think at this point, I couldn't believe that they didn't win. Maybe it was a mistake to run. I think Zipai Lightning Last was Nixie. Does he try and retreat? Oh, we're going to skip past it. We're not going to get to see it. Um, both healers oom at this point. And there's just no cooldowns, right? Like, there's no mana. There's no cooldowns. Asgrath can't really do anything. And Zipai knows that. So he's like, all right, Mage has no block. I'm going to go down in a blaze of glory and just throw a lava burst as my last global. Hope it procs and kills him. Um, <laughs> and we can go to a 2v2 because there's nothing else. I've been choose. there. <laughs> It's, it's going to be a, a tough game either way. Like, I mean, this matchup should not be easy for the Elemental Warlock, I think, if the Outlaw RMP is playing um, proficiently. So even on a large map, it's still going to be a struggle. They just need to not let it get to them, right? They can't let this one loss get to them um, and maintain, and they are going to go to the, the Lights of Empyrean Domain. We were already there. We've been here the whole day. I'm not a big fan of being Empyrean Domain. I think Maldraxxus is way cooler and less uh, brutal on the eyes, but uh, <laughs> we are finally going to go there in-game now as well. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of as expected. If you're playing a wizard comp like this, you definitely want to be going to Empyrean Domain. It gives you a lot of room to kind of kite around and maneuver. Asgrath especially, he's just been running laps, trying to get away from Alec, never really wanting Alec to get the Dragon's Breath Sheep, the Dragon's Breath Ring of Frost, when Zipai's in a kidney shot. So just trying to make sure that situation doesn't happen. SK Gaming will be locking in the same composition. They're up 2-1 right now. This is their map pick. This is their comp pick. I expect these two compositions for the remainder of this series. I don't think either one of these teams is really going to deviate, and it's going to be up to casual dads to win two in a row, uh, two in a row uh, but it's going to be really tall ask uh, on two large large maps back-to-back. -back. I mean, I could honestly see SK Gaming losing this game and then swapping to RMP at the end. They kind of always have this thing where they they stick to their main comp until the very last second where they're kind of losing and then they swap to RMP or, you know, something else and then they usually take it away. Casual Dads have been, they've been okay in the mirrors recently. At the start, they were very kind of, uh, eh. But now they've, they've done a lot of war games and they've, they've improved a lot in the mirrors. But I, I think SK Gaming could take it from them. You think so, huh? You think if it comes down to a mirror match, you're actually going to be giving your edge to SK Gaming? I think they're a lot more practice at the moment. Hmm. All right. Well, there you go. I mean, that, that would be interesting to see if that does happen. But um, I, I feel like I... It's just, it's so difficult. I mean, in the early stages of the game, SK Gaming is just looking like totally bulletproof. But... If they can make it till dampening, Casual Dad's pressure just kind of overwhelms. And it's, it's Outlaw Rogue really doesn't have many weaknesses, but I would say the one weakness it does have is it has a really weak Mortal Strike effect. So unless you are winning in those extended crowd control chains, um, it's really difficult to kind of push through in terms of raw damage because you don't have a strong Mortal Strike. Um, but that's where dampening kicks in. And then that consistent damage plus dampening kind of gives you that artificial Mortal Strike. And that's where it becomes an absolute nightmare to live against an outlaw rogue. So 
casual dads, they either need to have extremely clean crowd control and win in the early stages or just live. As long as you can, try to maintain your mana, keep them on the back foot, just get control of Mercy's damage, keep your Outlaw Rogue on the Elemental Shaman, try to deny his burst, and if you can do that, you can extend the game long enough, you can just find these win conditions like we saw in that last game. Yeah, for go. sure. I, I really like to see maybe some more blinds early game defensively because it feels like the the early blinds aren't really forcing anything. And if you're just playing to get into dampening, there's no real reason to play as aggressive as you are. You're just kind of losing mana, losing resources. So maybe if they try and play a little bit more defensively, this game would be better. Because they kind of gave up on crowd controlling the Tyrant as well on the Dalaran game, which I noticed. They played uh, because they had the Night Fae wall. They didn't seem to care as much defensively. Yeah, definitely <laughs> cleaning up defensively here if their main strategy is to get into dampening is going to be very important for the casual dads. It's something they're known for, though, with Nixie and Alec. Their BlizzCon win was running, I don't know how many laps of Tiger's Peak defensively to get into dampening. So let's see if they can get there. They're getting aggressive, though, off the initial stages, blasting down Z-Pi, but getting nothing. That was Combustion Adrenaline Rush and Guardian Spirits all you get. That is not a good start for the RMP. And look at this map. Alex out in midfield getting destroyed by Z-Pi. Has to get back to the pillar. Nixie now could get swapped to. He's going to get caught in a lightning lasso. Is Mercy in position? He's got the Tyrant out on the battlefield. Ring of Frost. He's trying to land a ring on. He misses the Ring of Frost on the Tyrant. As the Tyrant looks like it was interrupted, but now it will be free casting. He gets gouged by Nixie. That purple demon in midfield is going to be a key player for the side of SK Gaming. They need to get control of it as it has now finally faded away. You can see Clyde out in the middle of the map. I would love to see swaps to Clyde here. Like, look at him. He just looks so juicy right now. There's swap to him, a little axe toss into the Dreadstalkers, hunt him down a bit. I, I really want to see some swaps to Clyde here on Empyrean Domain from SK Gaming. Yeah, let's see if they're able to do it. Anytime he is uh, overextended or has to cross the map, that's going to be an opportunity to stun him, kind of blast him with some damage, and at least tax his mana quite a bit. Asgrath has a clear mana lead in the early stage of the game. Here's a smoke bomb dropping down from Nixie. They go after Mercy with that smoke bomb, but they get effectively nothing from that setup whatsoever. Mercy's just going to use his portal to get out of that one. He's going to be completely fine, so I'm not sure I'm a big fan of that play. Um, but they're going to go for it and not really net too much, but they are going after Zipai right now. Full blind on Asgrath. This is the Guardian Spirit. Zipai needs to throw some heals on himself, but the blind subsides. And Asgrath is able to connect a big heal onto Z-Pi, uh, which will ultimately stabilize him. SK Gaming, survive another setup. Yeah, it looks like he actually used his IQD trinket on that blind to try and hold Z-Pi's wall here, which uh, is an interesting play as it's such a long cooldown. So that means that the next crowd control that hits Asgrath is going to have to sit full. Z-Pi may have to trade out his trinket wall on this next attack. The Axe Toss already goes out onto Alex, so they don't really have the peels for this go, but the excellent grip away from Asgarath means that Alec just cannot connect, and Merce is just all over Alec. He's not allowing anyone to play the game. Clyde trying to get a drink off here, but Merce is just gatekeeping him on the other side of the map. I think that's why they were trying to hit Merce a little bit, because he's just so far in. But he's just so tanky. He's a demon lock with so many pet towers. He's been free casting, so his soul leech is just absolutely huge. Lava Burst coming out onto Alec here as he is getting put into the DR Lasso. He has Combust coming up very, very soon. And the Tyrant comes down. Excellent Ring of Frost from Alec. Really taking a note out of the defensive leaflets as he is just playing immaculate this game. No damage is being taken from casual dads whatsoever. Yeah, let's see if they can keep extending this or at the three minute mark at this point. Two minutes away from dampening. z by stabilizing through a Combustion, not having to use the Astral Shift. Both teams getting really good defensive trades so far in this exchange, but pressure's on to casual dads. They can't afford to lose. They'll be knocked down to that lower bracket to fight Kungana. You don't want that. You don't want to be knocked down to the lower bracket. Insane damage onto Alec there as he gets emergency pulled back to the pillar by Clyde. They're going to swap over to Mercy and not overextend at this point, trying to drag this fight out. But leaving the Elemental Shaman free casting gives him more and more opportunities to feel safe and proc these Ascendances and get massive swings of Lava Bursts into your team so this is going to be a dangerous gamble for them zipai's trying to retreat back to the pit with ghost wolf knocks nixie away and gates away they're going to kidney shot as grass zipai's going to run behind the pillar healing surge into healing surge retreating away and ghost wolf beautiful kiting but he's still in trouble as grass in a polymorph he's trying to get further away from nixie Looks like nixie isn't even chasing him at this point lasso onto alec and we're shutting him down here come the dread stalkers alec blinks away from the dread stalkers as mercy gets kidney shot lava burst lottery proc from zipai there but Unfortunately, gets sheeped immediately afterwards, trying to follow up with more Lava Bursts onto Alec. 
Going back towards the pillar, Fey Guardians from Asgrath anticipating the stun here. 30 seconds away from dampening. Both teams are taking a much more neutral position, just kind of attacking whoever's closer by and not taking too many risks here. Yeah, and at this point in the game, Zipai wants to get a smoke bomb, will drop down uh, here by Nixie, and this is an interesting adaptation specifically for this match. Nixie's going to be caught into a lightning lasso, and they're just doing a lot more pressure in this game. Going after Zipai, he gets away, just switching the combustion over to Mercy, blasting him away with some damage as well. So, really good push there by the casual dads. It looks like they're playing more for mana, not really trying to go for that extended crowd control. Here's going to be the Tyrant, though. Gets Novid. Do they have any more control for it? Nixie actually, I believe, goes for a kick on it. It gets feared. So this Tyrant damage is being limited right now. And it seems like casual dads, instead of going for like the traditional RMP where you get the you know triple crowd control and try to get the perfect setup, they're just attacking. And a lot of matchups, especially as the Ella RMP, just making sure you attack, do as much damage as you can while avoiding damage can actually be the optimal strategy. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, I think this map is backfiring a bit. It's so easy for casual dads to just avoid that tyrant, avoid those imps and Clyde. I think he can get drinks whenever he wants, really. But Alec taking quite a bit of damage here. Uh, just Zipai shooting him across the map with just various lava bursts. Lightning Lasso comes out onto Nixie, though. He does get CS and put into the combustion, trading out his trinket wall here. And that's really, really good for the side of Casual Dads. That next blind could be absolutely huge as we are heading into dampening. Last game ended at around 30% dampening, so we're getting very, very close to what the other games finished on. Yep, we're getting to that critical mass point. The healers have a lot more mana this time around, but that's in favor of Asgarath at this point. So let's see if Clyde can even that out. Lava Burst procs from Zipai. Nixie's back at the pillar, though. Gets a sap on Asgard. Mercy could be in trouble deeper into dampening. The valuable percent-based heals are not going to be as valuable in dampening as they have to use Guardian Spirit on the Warlock. But Zipai is being left open, blasting Alec, forcing him to retreat back to the pillar. Mercy's lining up Hannah Gildan after Hannah Gildan, getting a lot of imps, a lot of imps. So he gets a third one in a row here. Rocking that set bonus, getting malicious imps out as well. Try and ramp up for a big push of damage. Here comes that push. Clyde into the fear. Stun onto Alec. Here comes the Fell Obelisk. Buffing off all those pets. A swap onto Clyde. Clyde immediately breaks out and blinks back to the pillar. He does not want a repeat of going down like Hook Point as he teams up with Alec at the pillar. Smoke Bomb onto Zipai. Two seconds left. Asgrat ducks into the Smoke Bomb, trying to get some big heals, but now he's in a kidney shot. Zipai pops the Astral Shift. Are we going to a game five here in the second series of the day? Full blind. That Astral Shift is going to be subsiding. Zipai's defense will be faltering. Asgrat gets line of sighted into Frost Nova, trying to get back in line without going down is such a risky decision for Zipai here, but he does manage to stay alive. Now, can he get aggressive? Lobbing out those primordial waves onto Clyde again, trying to set up a stun and to stun onto him and make a swap, but not enough damage to finish him. Zipai pulled back to the pillar on the demonic gateway, getting ready for that. Another primordial wave, big lava burst. So they're going to gate or life grip here. Asgard's trying to reposition. Nixie gets a kidney. Zipai goes for a hex during the kidney shot. Flesh crafts with a fear. Nice coordination between Zipai and Mercy, both casting important abilities so they couldn't shut down all of them. And they were able to stabilize throughout that crowd control on Asgrath. Now they're trying to get aggressive. And look at the damage is done. Clyde has basically zero mana left. They've got them pinned at the pillar. And I think they're just going to poke them to death. I mean, it's certainly looking that way right now. We've got the Earthquake down. Zipai's Fire Elemental faded. He summons a new one immediately. Wants to bolster that damage. Get as much burst out as he can. Alec in the middle of the map is going to get blasted away. Clyde trying to go for a drink, but it is so unlikely on this map. He's really going to be able to. SK Gaming going to be trying to deny that at all costs. But Fae Guardians are available right now. Big damage here on Zipai. They're trying to recover some mana here for Clyde. As we're at 20% dampening, the game could unravel for either one of these teams. Nixie is going to be doing as much as he can. He's got the Cloak of Shadows. He's got the Vanish. He trades the Vanish. Mercy just going to gate away. And unfortunately, they're not able to really get too much done. He's a big kitty shot onto Mercy. He's just going to trinket out of that one. But now Mercy could actually be vulnerable. He's used his will to survive. Smoke Bomb's going to be available here really soon for Nixie. I could see them actually just taking down Mercy in a Smoke Bomb if they can get that overwhelming damage. If Zipai and Asgrath run too far, they don't want to leave Mercy behind. Uh, of course, he does have his wall, but in dampening, really anything can happen. Casual dads still have a few opportunities here, but things are getting scary for them quickly. 
the tyrant comes out from mercy and is actually getting some value out before it instantly got gouged as I said that. Nixie once again, crowd controlling it again. Merce put into the kidney shot and not playing that dark pact. So these little goes actually are taking a lot of Asgard's mana. You can take a lot of damage on these. Alec dropping low now. Clyde, very low mana. As soon as he pushes in, he could also be an easy target for the side of SK Gaming. But Zpi has no trinket. Asgraf, I don't think he has IQD for this go. We get the pre-wall from Zpi. Maybe get a, can we follow this blind up? No, nothing to chain it off. And the side of casual dads are just crumbling like an apple pie. Alec taking so much damage. Clyde taking so much damage. They're sending the chastise onto Clyde. Lava burst after lava burst. The Night Fae Guardians come out. Manages to top himself. But now it's Alec taking the brunt of the damage. He Night Fae's to the wall. He combusts. He tries to go offensive on this. He gets the CS onto Asgarath. Zpi though kiting that combust expertly with his fleshcraft and Alec now the pressure getting reversed and he goes into the ice block. This is a master class of elemental shaman from Zpi and Nixie's out in midfield. Cloak of Shadows on 10%, but there is some physical damage. Smoke bomb edged onto Zpi. Asgrath ducks into it, gets kidney shot. Nixie is still very low on health, trying to evasion the stun, but still could just die here. It's match point for the casual dads. There's nothing left. He's getting blasted, and SK Gaming have done it. They have bested Casual Dads 3-1, advancing in the upper side to fight CGN Esports. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> this is not what I expected or predicted uh, in the upper finals. So, actually, this is what I predicted in the upper finals. But I think most people... <laughs> you didn't people expect it, but you wrote it down as yeah. your prediction. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, it is true. I mean, it, it, we've just seen RMP win so frequently. It's just so hard to count them out. But two teams have really prepared here. They're going to be mixing it up. SK Gaming with their Demonology Warlock. Elemental Shaman, Holy Priest, looking really, really good going 3-1. and one. But I would say there was some really close games there. And it did feel like there was room for Casual Dads to improve. Not an easy matchup to navigate, but it definitely feels like they have opportunities in this one. So if SK Gaming ends up going down to the lower bracket, uh, I think these RMPs are still going to be difficult, but they got to be happy with this win. And uh, yeah, it was a beautiful performance by all three of them. But Zipai on that Elemental Shaman, like you said, Sid, really shined. Yes, yeah, I casual dads performed significantly better than I thought they would. Oh. <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> I mean, those games are very, very close. They, they almost won pretty much every game, and it just came right down to the wire every single time. It was almost a cross kill for either side, so that, that was a really great series. Love it. I mean, we can take a look here at the DPS and HPS. I mean. Yeah, big spikes of damage for both these teams. Uh, obviously, we can see that SK have a little bit more consistent damage, but that's to be expected with their class, uh, classes. Really not too much information to be gained, but the maps definitely... I don't, I don't know. How, how much did the map really matter in that one? I guess later on in the game, when Nixie's caught in the open, it gets a lot more unstable for him. I feel like that's the one part of the match where Dampening can really backfire is the Outlaw Rogue. If he actually is soaking up all that damage and he finds himself without a Vanish, without a Cloak of Shadows, Sid, I, I think that's when the game gets really scary. Yeah, definitely. The Rogue is just so exposed. Also, Mana just was in favor of Asgrath if Clyde doesn't drink. Like, look at this. He's like a 40% deficit. His whole team is dead. Zipai's just lobbing Lava Burst at whoever he wants. Like, oh, Clyde used all his healing on himself? Okay, I'll just hit Alec. Oh, Alec's at 20% combusting? I can just run away now. <laughs> Imagine if Zipai wasn't at the pillar here. Like, maybe he dies there with the counter spell. Uh, so really good positioning. And then and then all the while, it's like, you think Alec's the target? No. it's <laughs> They're going to be killing Nixie. So they just immediately go on to Nixie. He's stunned out in the open now taking damage. And I love these swaps from SK Gaming, and it's at this point where it's like, well, Guardian Spirit's down, we just got through Apotheosis, Nixie's desperately going for Smoke Bomb win right now, trying to end the game, but he doesn't have any cooldowns to stay alive with an out-of-mana priest. So it's like a Hail Mary from Nixie to try and pull this off, but they ran out of steam. Yeah, certainly a frustrating way to end it, I am sure, but Casual Dads, for sure, not out of the count just yet. We will be seeing them again soon. And SK Gaming going to be moving forward to the semi-finals of the European region. It's going to be CGN Esports versus SK Gaming. If I were in SK Gaming's position, I mean, we know that they had a pretty solid season, Gelu, but CGN Esports, I feel like, is obviously just like a completely different team than last time we saw them. I mean, if that's SK's gaming answer to RMP, then I 
do not have high hopes for that series, to be honest. I, I think that Casual Dads, although they played well, I think that Kongera is just a completely different beast, and I, I'm not entirely sure how they'll fare in the uh, LSD into RMP matchup, because those games were just so close that we just saw. Yeah, they, they certainly were. And uh, this is going to be a pretty big one coming up here. We can see how exactly we did get here um, and how this bracket is developing so far. We've got two teams currently sitting in the lower bracket, Kungana and Casual Dads. Loser of that one is going to be our first elimination round of this region and that's going to be on sunday so we don't quite get to see anyone go home just yet today uh but the big one that just formed is that semi-finals that we were discussing zgn esports versus sk gaming that's going to be coming up here next and that is the last european series of the day before we head over into those north american games so we are of course gonna have to head to a break before we get to see the results of that one but cgn esports sk gaming both of these teams obviously putting in a tremendous amount of effort and I, here's a tweet from lone tar uh very excited i know production had to bleep out some choice words there but it never doubt lone tar that's what happens they had All a right. good performance. That, con that confidence is justified, I think. I think so. What was that, Ben? No, I was going to say, I mean, it just speaks volumes to their team. They've been putting in a lot of work, a lot of effort, and sometimes uh, that's really, you know, what it takes to succeed. Um, I mean, obviously, they're very talented as well, so I, I feel like Lomtar might be downplaying his, you know, his talents at the game, but obviously <laughs> hard work is an, <laughs> an added benefit. Yeah, most definitely, and it certainly paid off so far for them. So we're, let's head to a break. When we come back, CGN Esports versus SK Gaming. We'll see you soon.
everybody and welcome back. It's the last European series of the day. CGN Esports facing off against SK Gaming. Zico, what's coming up in this series? Oh, uh, sorry, I was spaced out. I was uh, connecting my account uh, to get the Fearless Spectator title. This title is insane. And guys, I mean, th there it is. You just click on the rewards button. You just scroll down, Whoa. click on the rewards button, reward click button. on the connecting. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pop up. And that is it. Uh, it's going to say connected. Uh, as you can see at the bottom right there, we're just connected in a little like check mark. Mm -hmm. If you got that, you just got to stay on the stream for a little bit, but I think two hours, and you get it in game. And trust me, I got like 20 rank one titles, and I'm still going to use this. So it should tell you something about this title. That is amazing. I feel so educated now. Make sure you're checking that out. You can get your in-game title. Very cool. I still need to do that myself, but now I have all of the tools to do so <laughs> to Zico. But um, on the real, let's get into talking about this series. CGN Esports formerly looking for Org and SK Gaming. Both of these teams clearly putting in the work as we've seen here today and especially surprising if you somehow missed it this morning. CGN Esports actually putting Kungana down into the lower bracket for the first time. Here's a look at what we're currently shaping up to with the European side of things. We haven't yet eliminated anyone. That won't be happening today. All of those elimination rounds are going to be taking place tomorrow. Um, but we kind of got Gelu's thoughts just a little bit then. I want to hear kind of what you think from your perspective. Uh, you know, CG and Esports, obviously very different than what we saw them last time. SK Gaming also had their successful series against Casual Dad. So you you nailed it last time with your prediction. What do you predict for this one? I kind of predict that neither one of these teams expected this result. <laughs> I okay. wonder if like when they're going to the drawing board of you know what compositions they're going to be playing for the day, neither one of them really anticipated this. Uh, but it, it's really interesting because I would say both SK Gaming and CGN Esports, they have a lot of flexibility in their rosters. There's a ton of different compositions that they could run. I could easily see the series going to a game five uh, based off who comes out ahead uh, in the blind pick. And I think that's going to be especially important. SK Gaming, uh, you know, they have the Demonology War like Elemental Shaman Holy Priest. That's what we've seen from them today. I actually do not think that's a good comp. I could be wrong, but in my experience, that's not a great composition into the Warrior Death Knight. I think Death Knights are normally pretty good into these different caster cleaves. Uh, so I don't really expect SK Gaming to be running, um, you know, Elemental Shaman Demonology Warlock in game number one. Um, but then again, uh, it's very unlikely that they're going to be running a rogue mage. We saw Kangana just lose to CGN Esports. So what really are the options here for SK Gaming? Um, that's my question. And what is CGN Esports going to be doing? Um, what, you know, what, what do they decide to lock into the blind pick? Are they just going to keep going with that TSG, the Warrior Death Knight? Uh, or are they going to mix it up here for SK Gaming? Yep, certainly curious to see if that composition for CGN that they brought out against Kangana is going to be something that's successful to carry them out throughout the rest of this bracket against some of these other teams in the pool here. And I also am curious if we get a rematch between CGN and Kangana and how that ends up playing out because I'm sure that they are, you know, analyzing what exactly went on in that series. But one thing, one thing is for sure, those blind picks are coming in to be extremely handy so far in the global finals. But Gelu, we know that these teams have had a couple of weeks to prepare for this. What typically is like a player, is that practice schedule like? Um, I mean, it depends who you can get to war game, right? Sometimes it's easier than other teams. I think trying to get comps that uh, CGN play is very difficult considering they have such unorthodox comps. Or is trying to find uh, comps that say Kangara play is quite easy because they just play rogue mages. There's like a thousand rogue mages. But, right. But you're trying to you're trying to war game uh, DK warrior. How are you going to do that? But <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the DK rogue come out from CGN this game. DK rogue, huh? Ooh. Interesting. And I'm wrong. <laughs> Close. This is I mean, really this is, interesting. Uh, tell me about it, Zika. <laughs> I'll tell you about it. So, on one end, we got the patented Warrior Mage here from SK Gaming. And on the other end, you got CG and Esports here bringing in the cleave. Now, on paper, I would kind of favor, I think, mm, SK, if they can drag it out really deep into them. And I think this is the matchup that they wanted. But at the same time, I think CGN, uh, 
we'll see who they decide to go after here. But if they decide to do a healer race, we've seen them uh, earlier today uh, be very successful with that. Or if they just want to tunnel Maro and try to uh, get some CC going. No, they are going to try to swap over to Askarath here. No, they're going to fear him. And uh, Blizzo trying to uh, allow Swaps to get some time to connect here. And here comes the damage. Here is the Kyrian Spear as well. Mercy actually taking huge damage. Mercy dropping to 1 HP. Might just die. And Mercy getting blasted in that CC chain. Beautiful setup here coming out from CGN Esports. And uh, these guys can definitely go after any target here on the side of SK. SK now need to find uh, an opening here for themselves. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that Lizzo is opting to play the Spear now, whereas Merce is playing the Necrolord, as I suppose it's because he can, Swaps, he can Wraith walk out of that Spear and uh, Lizzo will be able to land them onto Merce. But then again, Marrow, if he does it right, he can blink out. He does have that all the time, so he's not that great target for CGN they, as they have no urges into this Druid Mage composition. I think SK gave me the slight advantage here. As they are able to uh, spam rotate crowd controls on the both the melees and just kind of play for a very very long game. Yeah, I'm really curious to see. I mean, Morrow obviously the advantage of having the mage is that you do have that spammable polymorph, so you can get control of the game. But the fire mage is going to be doing way less consistent damage in this match. He has that heavy hit with the combustion, but I, I feel like if Morrow gets controlled in this match, if Lone Tar goes for crowd control on Morrow at the right time. Mercy and Swapsy are going to be a little bit uncontested here and able to get out a... Or sorry, Blizzo and Swapsy are going to be uncontested and be able to get out a lot of incoming damage. So I'm really not sure who's going to win this one. Morrow right now basically just free casting. I'm actually a little bit surprised that they're not going after Morrow in this matchup. Uh, with the Altar Time, Morrow's going to be pretty durable. But at the same token, I feel like if you go after him, uh, his ability to actually cast damage, effective damage in this match, essentially goes down to zero. So um, uh, yeah, I, I'm... I wonder if they'll do a strategy change if they end up losing this one, but it seems like for now they're pretty set on just going after Asgrath in this match. Yeah, and Asgarath already no trinket, and here comes the damage. Blizzard's trying to connect. There is the Curion Spear as well. Asgarath in huge trouble. That's the Tranquility Bubble, and he's almost dying through it somehow. He's dropping dangerously low. One HP. Can they take him down? They fear him, and they send him, and that is going to be CGN Esports taking a quick win here. First against the number one seed, and now against the number two seed here from the circuit. This team is on a tear. The game's I mean, about that... 10 minutes shorter than I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I'm talking about, like, maybe they should be going after Morrow, they just instantly send Asgrath. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, he literally just dying through his Tranquility Bubble. That just means he had no heal over time effects on himself whatsoever. Uh, a, a beautiful push there by CGN and this Warrior Death Knight. This is something throughout the entire circuit that I wanted to see them play. It looked promising when they played it. I remember their first time playing it as a team. It was on Dalaran Sewers. They played it with a Resto sh a Shaman. It, it looked okay. And it looked like it's actually one of those compositions that could serve them well. So I'm really happy to see that they brought it in with the Restoration Druid. And uh, I don't exactly know what composition is super good into it. And I don't really, honestly, thinking about it, I don't know what compositions SK pieces really have to beat this. Like, what out of all the things that they could run, what do they have to beat it? Potentially an out? out? Could they run Outlaw Rogue? I guess they yeah. could, but only with a mage. But it, uh, we just saw... Like I said, we already saw them beat the Rogue Mage. And is SK Pieces going to be as good as Kungana? Uh, I'm not convinced of that. Well, they can run RMD, and that's what they've kind of ran in the past. So uh, RMD, I I'm not sure, you know, if the Druid dies uh, easier or uh, if he has an easier time surviving uh, in that matchup compared to the Priest. But that could be one adaptation that SK could do. And also they could go for uh, just a different strategy and uh, try to slow things down a little bit more. Um, you know, going to a large map, things like that can definitely be big. But here we can see the kill. Asgard, there's no trinket. He gets pinned down by the Kyrian Spear with the Asphyxiate. And you can see here um, just so much damage coming out here. Blizzard gets polyed. He trinkets, reflects the poly onto Morrow. And before that last poly comes through, actually, he does get that last poly, but Blizzard gets dispelled. He gets a fear and uh, we're able to uh, take him down. And that fear just acts as a, as a stun for one global in that situation. So I just ask Earth can't do any any crazy uh, instant heals. So really nice stuff from Blizzard, really nice stuff here in general from CGN. And 
this is what we really were talking about before um, before the finals. We, we were talking about how everyone is trying to copy Rogue Mage and just play Rogue Mage uh, with the alt rogues, essentially. But in order to win here, you need to bring in your mains. You need to bring in what your team was designed to do before you discovered the meta. Uh, because those are the comps that you play better than anybody else. And those are the comps that if you do somehow figure out a, a way to win against, you know, Rogue Mage and things like that with them, you're just going to be unstoppable because no one else can copy you. I mean, I would not suggest bringing in Merce in this matchup. I feel like a Dignity <laughs> Warlock would get uh, yeah. absolutely yeah. annihilated. His Tyrant will get maybe 1% value, if that. So then that leaves <laughs> you with maybe a Warrior. I mean, bring out Zipai on the Shaman or something. I'm not entirely sure. That's how I feel about Morrow yeah. on Fire Mage too, though. Mm -hmm. Like... Mm -hmm. Um, like Morrow in this matchup without an outlaw rogue or subtlety rogue to back him up, I feel like he's not going to be able to really get too much done, um, unless they bring it to dampening. That's their only hope. But I mean, uh, they did that wasn't even a bomb's limb when they actually pushed him over there. He had a bomb. Like after we just saw Asgrath go down, a bomb's limb came off cooldown, so they still had like a tremendous amount of damage. Um, I, I kind of wonder they were going to be going to a large map, so maybe Mage Lock. Maybe Mage yep. Lock? I could see that working on a, only a big map, I think. Um, I, I think there is potential there. So that might be the adaptation that we do see. But even then, I feel I, like CGN Esports has answers. I actually want to see Fire Mage Ellie or RMD. Those are the two comps I want to see from SK Gaming. One of those, I'm okay with. Mage Lock, I, I feel like if they play Kyrian Spear, which they do, and with the Abon Limb and all this, I feel like the Lock... Um, it's just gonna die. Like that's the problem locks have right now. They're just dying to melee. It's uh, super easy. Sure, you have a big map, and uh, maybe Mercy can kite and survive. But I feel like I would rather see Zipai on the Ellie. A little bit more unpredictable. Just one shot damage. Maybe in dampening, they can just send Swapsy. And um, if they do play Mage Lock, I I think I want to see Morrow play at Frost Mage at least. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I also don't think Fire Ellie's that good either. Cause I think the Shaman just dies. I don't know. This comp seems very strong, actually. I'm surprised I haven't seen too much of the uh, the warrior unholy DK residue until now. They seem to just be insta locking it in every single time as well. Uh, <laughs> they lock it this in in about two seconds, so they're very it's... confident in this matchup. And you see how long SK are taking. They well, they're stumped. They have no idea what to play. And I, yeah, I don't well, either. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's one of the joys of the of the AWC, though. We're going to be seeing a lot more of this composition on the ladder, <laughs> yeah, you know, this weekend <laughs> a, a, after today. People are already messaging each other, like, "Ooh, this looks kind of good," because you're right. This isn't <laughs> something you typically see that often on the ladder. Um, right now, Death Knights playing a lot with, I would say, Demonology Warlocks um, and maybe even Demon Hunters. Um, but yeah, the the Warrior isn't something you see the most of. They are going to be going with the Outlaw Rogue Mage Druid, so. I'm not sure how big a fan I am of this, in all honesty, because I feel like what CGN is going to do is probably just train the healer, and we're going to see a very similar story. Uh, Zipai, obviously, on that outlaw road, going to have a lot of peels uh, with a kidney shot, with the gouge, the dismantle, but I, I just feel like the offense from CGN is really strong, and I don't know if SK Gaming is going to be able to find the counter pressure that they need in this match. Yeah, I think no matter what happens here, for SK to win, they're going to need to play a long game. And I don't think it's the same thing for CGN. I think if they get two good goes on the Druid, they can take him down um, in general. Uh, I think they can uh, get uh, they can close out the match a little bit sooner um, for SK. It could happen. They could maybe take down Blizzo uh, with a blind like chain on Lontar, but uh, it would have to be really, really well set up. Uh, especially when you're missing out on uh, all the extra damage uh, from a Holy Priest uh, uh, by having that Rester Druid. It's the amount of pure healing that CGN have as well. There's no Maldix in the game anymore, so you can't just take away the self-healing from the Warrior or the DK. There's no Priest pressure from the, you know, having the RMD, the Rester Druid. He's a complete defensive yeah. healer. So their CC chains are going to be what, what scores in the win, but I don't think the CC chains will be enough to, to finish them off unless you get very good low clones early on so it's going to be a very long game if SK want to win this I, I don't I mean I, it's SK Gaming uh, they're a phenomenal team but I also just I feel like I don't really have with how well Blizzo and Sopsy are playing offensively I don't know if I have faith in them getting into the long game I mean maybe on Tolveron uh, we'll see I, I feel like this is one of their better options 
Uh, but SK Gaming, I feel like they don't really have that many great options. Uh, what's interesting for both of these teams is that Demonology, I feel like Demonology Warlock overall won't be an answer that either team can really play every game. I mean, we haven't seen it yet, um, but if either team decides to lock in a Demonology Warlock, the other team is going to lock in an Elemental Shaman. And uh, that is not a matchup you really like as a Demonology Warlock. Your pet's just dead the entire game. Um, so if that the matchup does evolve, and we do see Demo Locks, I expect, you know, either Swapsy or Z-Pi to lock in that Elemental Shaman. But to get to that point first, you know, focusing on Tolveron Arena, SK Gaming, they got to battle it back. I feel like CGN Esports is bringing in a huge surprise here with their Warrior Death Knight. It's looked really solid in every single match so far. And uh, I expect it to look solid in this matchup as well. SK Gaming is going to have to play really well if they want to win this one. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's quite a lot at stake here as well. I mean, this is the semi-final. Whoever wins here, you have guaranteed yourself a pretty good chunk of, uh, of cash as well for your team. So uh, CGN Esports, a team that qualified as fourth seed, uh, barely making it in. And uh, they're just looking completely revitalized here. Uh, bringing in, you know, Blizzo, bringing in Swapsy, bringing in their melee cleaves, Lontar on the Druid. Uh, finally, he's off the Shaman. And um, we see, uh, you know, SK Gaming here going to be bringing in a uh, comp that really got them a lot of wins uh, during the circuit. Uh, they relied heavily, I would say, uh, on this comp, but they also had some other options. And um, yeah, we'll see. I think if SK loses here, I don't even know. Like, what, what can they even play at that point? At that point, I think their best bet is to go just a uh, large map and, yeah, either Mage Lock or Mage Alley or some type of double wizard. Uh, I think that's really all they have left um, because that Warrior Mage, I don't think we're going to see it again. And the Mage Rogue, I think we all agree that for them to win with the Mage Rogue, they're just going to need to play out the game for a really long time. They need probably upwards of 40 plus percent dampening uh, or at least like 30 percent plus dampening to uh, secure a kill uh, unless uh, CGN makes you know a, a big error. So for SK, uh, I feel like they're just uh, kind of throwing comps at the wall and see what sticks. And the issue with Mage Lock is you don't have that sort of pressure that you used to have with Destro. When people sat behind the wall with Destro, you could just uh, rain of fire, ramp your infernals, you had so much cleave, and if people backed away, you still, you know, you're still useful. But now with Bemo, you walk away, nothing's happening. Your pet just dies behind a wall, if anything. So, and you can't really kite a Fury Warriors, a Frost Mage. You can't really kite Abomination Limb that is that effectively when you're getting, like, Super chunk down with Fury Warrior on you. Me and Ven have played oh, yeah. some Mage Lock, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we I was know the ask, pain. What do you think? What do you what do you think about the uh, Necro Demo Lock? If they played like Necro Demonology Warlock Frost Mage, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many interrupts. I don't think you'll ever get a Bale Spider's Bolt off there. Yeah, but at least you leave your Mage. So like, maybe that's like the maybe. dampening strat. You know, you you leave your Mage enough. Uh, time to get enough icy veins yeah, play and skeletons like off one minute gate and then gate every bomb limb and in between and then maybe i guess yeah but mage lock is a struggle a lot of teams have just kind of not been opting for it with the kind of rise of uh demonology warlocks so basically what what i think happened is demonology warlocks they were very strong and for a while people didn't really know how to deal with it and all the warlocks had been best friends with mages this is like the mages were playing with the demonology warlocks and everything was good but then the demonology warlocks realized that they could play with every other class also and you know the mages kind of got left behind unfortunately so seen a lot of demonology warlock on holy death knight um the double double warlock for example elemental shaman warlock and the spec overall is really really good but I don't know if we're going to see it in this particular matchup. And I feel like for SK Gaming, the fact that they don't really have that mage lock is a really, really strong composition for them. Uh, it hurts their team a lot because it was one of those compositions that really worked out well for them throughout the circuit. Yeah, definitely. And, um, and another interesting thought about this matchup is the fact that we're going to see a rematch uh, potentially if uh, CGN were to lose here to SK. I mean, we most of us are expecting uh, Kungana to beat Casual Dads in the in the lower bracket. I, I think it's uh, it's a pretty safe prediction for all of us to make. Um, but then they would have a rematch against CGN, which already beat them. So, if SK Gaming wins here, 
they might just have to fight CGN twice. They might just have to win here and then win again uh, against CGN again later on. So this is a very big game for SK because they could potentially avoid Kungana completely. Unless Kungana, of course, uh, just goes on a tear in the lower bracket and beats everybody. But um, there's a lot of things that, that can happen here uh, in this matchup. So can, uh, I think uh, some team maybe use the delay here um, to get into the game uh, to just talk the strategies and set up because there's a lot on the line. So... I wouldn't uh, blame them for doing that. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if they're talking strats or whatever, then that's kind of important. I think they get a five-minute delay either way, right? Yeah. So, I mean, this is a pretty big match for them. This is the sort of swing match they kind of have to win to in order to advance in the series. So, they need to get all that stuff down. But here we are going into the game. RMD on the side of SK Gaming, Unholy TSG, once again with the Kyrian Spear from Blizzo coming out. And uh, I mean, <laughs> those spears were so deadly onto Azgrath, but hopefully we have the Disarm from Zipai coming out now, the Double Dragon's Breath from Marrow, and should be a bit easier to peel. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Gates are open here. CGN so far has been unrelenting in their assault of healers, just training them down. Blizzo, once again, you're going to be playing that Kyrian Spear, and that does mean that if Asgrath gets caught, he's going to be stuck in that spear, taking a lot of damage or something to actually die through his Tranquility Bubble and Channel in the last game. Blizzo is going to be leaping over Swapsy, trying to get there right now. Beautiful setup here. Can they take him down? It's going to be an immediately di immediate dismantle onto Blizzo into a full blind. So just all out control on Blizzo with the blind breaks. And now Asgrath is in a lot of trouble trying to get out of the spear. He commits the bark skin, commits the nature swiftness, but he is just dying through it. Tranquility gets channeled out. He doesn't have many hots on himself. He has the iron bark, but if he trades that out, that's going to be the last little bit of healing that he has. His first push from CGN has looked very convincing, but at the same time, Blizzo taking a huge hit of damage. They kind of panic, throw out the anti-magic zone, the enraged regeneration, but I mean, at this point, CGN, they just have to stay alive. If they can do another push there onto Asgarath, they might be able to actually take him down. Oh, they do get the Iron Bark here onto Zipai. And like you said, Ben, a little bit of a defensive overlap there with the Enraged Regen, but it was a good trade nonetheless. And Asgrath still holding onto his Trinket. So if they can get that out of the way, that's going to be a key objective. And Asgrath wants to hold on to it for as long as possible. So he has time to get his cooldowns back. He's full uh, asphyxiated now. Here comes the pressure. Here comes the Kyrian Spear. Where's the damage? Blizzard gets sheep. Swapsy gets disarmed. Stuck in a Nova there, but Blizzard finally breaks out. Here comes the Recklessness. Here comes the Avatar. Big hits of damage coming out from Blizzo but he gets caught up in a sheep shot into a sheep disorienting roar by Lontar trying to buy his mana some uptime but they bash up Zipai they're going for a swap Lontar looking for the cyclone onto Asgarath he gets it Lontar playing very offensively here setting up his team and another recklessness proc here for Blizzo as he looks to try to take down Asgarath marching forward nice vortex there he's going to deny Blizzo a little bit of that uptime but if he can close the gap here and connect with Astan I think they have an asphyxiate coming up shortly here for Swapsy if they can connect that, it could be lights out for Asgarath. No bark screen for just two seconds. So he's going to have that for the next stun. And all those big cooldowns that they were able to force, uh, all of a sudden, Asgarath's going to have most of them back, doing a great job, uh, kind of just uh, staying alive and uh, running laps around this big, big map. Blizzo going to be the one on the back foot now. And we talked about it in the pregame. It looks like SK Gaming's strategy is to kind of damp it, but Asgarath here forced to use his Trinket, doesn't have his Tranquility Bubble, so the next stun, he also doesn't have his Bark Skin, very, very dangerous here for Asgarath, there might not even be a next stun, he gets caught up in a full Strangulate, big hits of damage, and z can't even help him out, he's taking huge hits, there's the DR Bash, Asgarath with the Battle Master active right now, with a few hots, if they can stay on top, they might just be able to take him down, Nature Swiftness as well, and now Asgarath has literally nothing, but he will survive that setup. Yeah, it's incredibly important that he maintains his trinket for those abomination goes every two minutes. But these in-between spear goes are going to be very dangerous as well. Spear coming up in 20 seconds. He has no trinket for that. No N uh, tranquility either. So he has to get away with only a bark skinning. Zipai no trinket. Mara no trinket. No one will be able to peel this go on Asgrath. But they need to try and get it in soon before he gets tranquility back. 
The full clone goes on to Lontar. Looks like SK trying to be offensive, but no, they get gripped in. Asgrath in it to the spear. The Asphyx onto him, but fantastic deals coming out from Marrow and Zipai. The disarm onto Blizzo. Asgrath having to trade out his skin anyway. He's just getting pulled back and back. The blind onto Blizzo now. Excellent peels once more from Zipai. But they're weaning Asgrath's mana very hard as well. He's down to 50%. And that next Abomination limb is coming up in only 30 seconds. Yeah, that's going to be a horrifying moment for SK Gaming, that Abomination limb. Such a powerful cooldown for, for the Unholy Death Knight. Zipai getting chopped up. He will get disarmed as Blizzard just wants to avoid as much damage as possible. They're making their way over to Asgrath, trying to kind of prepare him for this setup that they have available. If they can get the damage rolling, if they can get him low on health before using the cooldowns, Asgrath's going to be in a world of trouble. Trades out the bark skin, but this is before a lot of those incoming cooldowns. In five seconds, Swapsy is going to have that Abomination Slim, that huge hit of damage. And SK Gaming is going to have to weather that storm. Here it is. Spear of Bastion drops down. The A-Bomb Slim still not traded out. Out. They're kind of trying to desync it, bait out some cooldowns from Asgrath, and they do manage to get the Iron Bark. So there's no Bark skin, there is no Iron Bark. If Swapsy can grip him, get the A Bomb Slam, if Blizzo and Swapsy can connect, this could be lights out here for Asgrath. Yeah, let's see how he's going to deflect this one. Do they have a stun for Asgard? This is the big question. Lontar 20 second on the bash. Don't think they have the asphyxia it just yet. And it actually is going to be combustion and getting popped here. They're going after Zipai. Zipai gets dismantled. And so does Blizzo right now. And Blizzo trying to make his way back to the target. He gets kidney shot right before he goes around the corner. Lontar is there trying to keep him alive. Lontar in a full blind right now. But he gets the overgrowth preemptively before the blind. Zipai doesn't have a sap here by the looks of it. No vanish available. And Blizzo now will make it back to his target. Here comes the damage. Here comes the pressure. Do they have anything off? They have a DR bash. They forced out Asgard's trinket. And this is the Abomination Limb coming out from Swapsy uh, with those slappy hands gripping Asgard back right there. But trading his trinket for that is going to be a good exchange there for Asgard. They're going to need to try to land a kill without that, uh, potentially. And uh, they don't have the Necro Banner either. They're playing with the Curion Spear, but they force out uh, the Tranquility Bubble here as well from Asgrath. So two major defensives right there uh, with that Abomination Limb. Pretty good value here for Swapsy as he looks to continue the pressure onto Asgrath. Mana actually in favor of Lontar right now, but we are into dampening. We are starting to hit that wing condition for SK Gaming. Uh, sooner or later, Maru's going to pop off with his Combustions. He's free casting the entire game. They're swapping over to Z by getting into about 50%. Zipai popping his adrenaline rush, trying to get aggressive onto Blizzard. He can get a counter spell onto Lontar into full blind. Stun onto Asgrath into triple fear. Anti-magic zone drops defensively here. They don't get a follow-up on the blind. Scary situation. And you can see SK Gaming starting to land some pressure here. Yeah, that was an excellent setup from SK Gaming. The blind onto Lont The CS followed into the blind. And Swapsy has no trinkets available as he's put into a full kidney shot. Asgrath now sitting down for a drink. Blizzo able to just get him out. Swapsy still so very low. But he is playing that Spell Warden, so he's able to heal himself quite efficiently. But this is kind of a bit of trouble. Swapsy is getting his Abomination Limb back in 30 seconds, and it's slightly desynced with Zipai's Blind. So I'm not sure if he'll be able to heal Asgrath as effectively, as he still does not have that Tranquility. The Spear goes down now. He trades out Iron Bark, but they don't manage to get his skin. That means he will have skin, and he will have Trinket for the next Abomination Limb, which, as you said, have been desynced from the Spear. I'm not sure they want to have that continuing, because he does seem to be able to get away from these limbs when the Spear is not there. Yeah, so far, honestly, SK Gaming has done a really good job kind of handling this pressure, dismantling Blizzo and Swapsy uh, in terms of their offensive cooldown. So able to shut them down, but a big setup here onto Asgrath. Can they take him down? It's the Bark Skin. It is the Trinket, but it is an overwhelming amount of damage. Double Dragon Wrath comes in at the same time. Maro taking a huge hit of damage. He's just going to be trading out the Gladiator's Aegis to bolster his defense, and that is a great Trinket selection against the Abominations Lev. You basically just sync it up, use the, use the Trinket, it. As soon as he uses the cooldown, the rides you and bolsters your defense against that very powerful Unholy Death Knight cooldown. Blizzo taking a lot of damage. Rage of Generation is going to be used. And it looks like they're actually going to be going after Morrow. 
does use his uh, Alter Time. Actually, still has his Alter Time available in 10 seconds, but this could easily Whoa. be the Ice Block, and it is. Big pressure here from the side of CGN. They're mixing it up, not going after Asgrath anymore. Perhaps this is a strategy change or just trying to capitalize on that moment, but one thing's for sure, Morrow's not going to have that Ice Block, now, I think, coming back up in this game. Then he could be a vulnerable target. I mean, we're at 20% dampening at this point of the game. Blizzo taking a huge hit of damage at the same time. Things are unraveling for both these teams. Lone Tower was able to recover a lot of his mana. Let's see how Asgrath is doing. How much mana does he have available? Actually sitting down and going for a drink right now. This is a bit of a nightmare for CGN. And now he evens it up on mana. Both these druids doing a great job uh, biding time with their team in order to recover their mana. And that's exactly what you want at this point into a dampening. Bozo and Swapsy trying to continue the pressure. But as things get spicier later on in dampening, Zipai's pressure on that rogue is really going to start setting in here against CGN Esports. Yep, and Blizzo's heals, Swapsy's heals, they're all going to get weaker as well as we go by. But Askarath right now caught up in a stun. There's the fear. They're going after Morrow, and Morrow is dangerously low. He has the Carterize. Can they proc it? Swapsy's all over him to get the Strangulate as well. This has got to be the Carterize. Blizzo leaping over, and he will proc it. Morrow with nothing left. That was an insane setup. They force Askarath's trinket by going on him with the Abon limb. With the leftover pressure, they get the ice block. And then before he gets his trinket back, they stun fear and strangulate him go after Morrow. Morrow has nothing and this is really annoying for Askarath because he needs to prioritize saving some cooldowns now to help Morrow but at the same time if he doesn't use his cooldowns on himself he might die and look at Blizzo, look at Swapsy, look at the pressure here onto Askarath. Big hits of damage coming in. Lontar, I don't see him on the map presumably sitting somewhere drinking right now and uh, that's going to be absolutely massive as well here for CGN Esports as they look very comfortable. Lontar is going to come back with about 70% mana now Blizzo needs to get topped without having to use any big cooldowns here. He needs to try to hold on to the enraged region. They're going after Maru. He's taking huge damage. There's the asphyxiate on the Asgard. There's the spear. They connect it, but they don't get Maru. He preemptively blinks out of it. Expertly done there by Maru. Trank bubble coming out here. Bomb to Asgard. And they're just going to swap to him. They don't even need to use the abomination limb here. Swapsy actually did use it. Asgard dropping dangerously low. And they do get his trinket as a trade for that. So big pressure coming in from CGN Esports. But now they're on the back foot. Swapsy still has his Icebound Fortitude. He has the anti-magic shell up right now as SK are just swapping between Blizzo and Swapsy on hot. They don't have that purge from a priest, so they're going to have to just constantly swap on whoever Lontar is healing at that moment. That's why you're seeing both go up and down so frequently. But Asgrath has no trinket and Swapsy, well, he's got that Abomination limb coming up before he gets that back. Blizzo connecting onto Asgrath. He's feared him. He's allowing Swapsy to get to him. The Asphyxiate comes out onto Asgraph. He trades out the bark skin. The blade storm from Blizzo means he cannot be peeled. He gets disarmed immediately after, and Asgraph gets away. And the spear, they instantly swap back onto Mario, but he tries to grip him back in his spear, but he doesn't quite reach him into that. But he gets the skin without the Abomination Limb. The Abomination Limb is coming up in 15 seconds. And if he doesn't go down here in this bash, he's bashed on his NS and he will surely go down. Yeah, I mean, this is a really tense moment in the match. Almost 40% dampening, and Asgrath has no mana left. Blizzle and Swapsy, they just have to connect. But if Morrow and Zipai can find any crowd control here onto Lone Tower, Swapsy and Blizzo, their main defense, that self-healing, has gone down significantly in this point of the match. Big kidney shot here on the Blizzo, but Asgrath gets gripped over. Blizzo, can he connect? Big damage incoming. This is the Abomination's Limb. At, at this point in dampening, I mean, this is a nightmare of a cooldown to deal with. He's just getting gripped back, even though Swapsy is in a kidney shot. Blizzo trying to connect to his target. Morrow does have that ice block available. So maybe going after the mage not going to be necessarily the best option. They still want to go after Asgarath. Potentially actually looking for a drink here if he can. But uh, this pressure onto Zipai, I, I just feel like there's no way that Asgarath's going to be able to fully recover. Especially with the way CG and Esports is just going after multiple targets. A Rossi. big kidney shot though with the blind onto Lone Tar. SK Gaming shuts it down. They bring it to that point in dampening and are able to push through a lot of that Death Knight defense. Honestly, I feel like SK Gaming, Zipai, Morrow, Asgrath, they had a phenomenal showing and they dealt with all those cooldowns on those really scary moments from Blizzo and Swapsy quite nicely. Absolutely. Just great defense. Every single time Asgrath was in big trouble, there was always a gouge, a kidney, a defensive blind, a disarm, just something to slow them down. And even at the end of that game, when they got that big push, uh, Swapsy actually trinketed offensively to get aggressive. Or, uh, he used his Icebound Fortitude to get aggressive. 
uh, when they feared uh, Asgrath into the stun when he had no trinket. And uh, if it wasn't for Maru kind of pre-sheeping his Icebound Fortitude there, so obviously might have been able to chain the stun lock and uh, potentially land a kill. So just excellent defense. And this is what we were talking about. Eventually, in deep dampening, when you're a free casting Fire Mage like this, you're going to have a moment where you have Combust and they don't have anything. And uh, if you can combo it uh, with a blind like that, you're just going to be able to solo somebody. And that's exactly what uh, Maru was able to do here. Also, a uh, really good defense from Maru. Um, they, they, they definitely tested him with those swaps, but he's able to stall and, and get his Ice Block back. And... Um, be able to come out on top here yeah i mean that was the sort of the best map you could have as the rmd though just able to kite around the map because uh, it's so large so a little bit worried when they go to a smaller arena however uh i was wondering do you think maybe it'd be better if lizzo and sopped instead of playing the relentless if they chose to play orc trinket instead so they can you see on, on these goes like they get the spear limb they get blinded or they get disarmed into a sheep and then maybe if they could just trink it out offensively still got that orc for the defense then maybe they'll be able to score kills yeah i mean that's, that's definitely yeah it, it is a good point it is that it's those really scary moments right it's the spear and the a-bombs limb where you want to be able to like pair it with a trinket and really just kind of push them over the edge uh, those are going to be the most important moments in the match. So maybe having the crowd control break for that point is going to be important. And it's really interesting because at this point in dampening, they're able to force the cauterize on Morrow. So it, it was kind of unlikely he was going to get able to get his ice block uh, back off cooldown, but they kind of just stopped going after Morrow. Uh, I, I wonder, even though Morrow is doing a really good job of defense, I kind of wonder if Blizzo and Swapsy just you know, kept their attention on Morrow, limited the amount of fireballs he was able to get off, that they would have just really pressured Asgrass mana more and kind of limited the offense uh, of SK Gaming. So uh, maybe going after the Druid, they did eventually get uh, a little bit punished. Asgrath, I, I feel like, kind of weathered the storm and played it out really, really well. This blind, uh, obviously devastating. That instant crowd control of doesn't have an out for it because he's playing relentless so he's just gonna have to sit that and at 50 percent dampening there's no way the death knight's actually going to be able to sustain and stay alive so that's kind of the win condition for sk gaming but it is difficult to get there and i do feel like cgn esports perhaps if they do decide to use the orc um, with the medallion to get out of those crowd control chains when they actually have a win condition uh, they might be able to find victory sooner yeah, uh, offensive trinkets, smaller map. These are all things that uh, SK Gaming are going to have to deal with. Uh, now, if SK Gaming can win this match, they will be uh, in a very nice position because then they win on their counter. And uh, we've seen a lot of game fives, so it uh, could uh, be good for them if this one goes to a game five. We're going to see hook point. We're going to see RMD locked in again. And uh, let's see what CGN uh, decides to do here. Um, probably the same comp, if I had to guess. Uh, I mean, certainly looks like that's what they were setting up, and I don't think they have... I would be surprised if they had another answer uh, for Rogue Mage. Um, but maybe they do for the Druid version. Um, I say, I want to see more TSG. They look very practiced on it. They look, you know, absolutely bulletproof on it. Um, so we'll see what they decide to do here uh, with about a minute left on the clock. Yeah, the TSG seems very, very good. Um, there's another thing I was noticing, because they keep misaligning uh, Abomination Limb and Spear of Bastion. So sometimes they don't, they, you know, one is a shorter cooldown than the other one, obviously. But I feel like maybe they should hold it so they're always together so they can never get out. Uh, there was a few times where the Abomination Limb went off and the Druid just ran away or the Mage just, you know, he night phase across the map and they don't get that much value out of it in the, on the occasion when uh, SK Gaming play, well, very well and just get away. I th I'd say the only thing about that um, that maybe they're concerned about is if they commit both cooldowns and they just get like blinded or they get kidney shot and it's yep. like you don't get any value from both your cooldowns where if you kind of desync it, it's like, okay, I'll use the spear and they'll, you know, kidney shot me and gouge me and dismantle me. He kind of sacrifices his cooldown <laughs> and his moment so uh, swaps he can get more done. Um, but yeah, maybe just trying to overwhelm them with all their crowd control. I wonder, I mean, Lone Tars look phenomenal on the Druid, but I wonder... Uh, I don't want to say it, like Shaman, maybe? Could Lone Tar and the Shaman no. uh, be better than... No? I mean, you just don't want to see into Shaman, that's... Uh... I, I don't want to see I know, challenge. I know, <laughs> it's not great, but maybe the extra offense... Uh, now nah, they're just going to stick with the Druid. Uh, you know, I'm hopeful, but I don't think it's going to happen. Not today. Um, 
yeah, hook point, that should be uh, enough, I, I feel like. And also, I'm curious if we do see kind of a racial change here from CGN Esports, or if they do decide to go after Morrow, you know, 20, 30% dampening, it can be really, really difficult on that mage to actually reset that combustion, that really important moment where you can actually kind of push Swapsy over. At the same time, it can be difficult to take a mage down if you don't have a dispel for alter time. You get huge value for that cooldown, so... Um, yeah, some, some different choices. I, I don't think there's any like kind of clear win condition, but it, it is really interesting to see that SK gaming actually can bring the game for that long. They do have the peels with the rogue and the outlaw, um, or the outlaw rogue and the mage, uh, to make it to that point, um, and actually secure a, a kill later on a dampening. The thing to note too, for Blizzo is he is playing the impending victory. So he doesn't have the storm bolt. He's given up his storm bolt so he can heal himself for more. And that's one of the reasons why he's just so difficult to take down. Uh, on that Fear Warrior. He's actually made an adaptation uh, over to the uh, Necrolord. So he's going to be playing the Necrolord. Um, and that's going to be really scary for SK Gaming to survive. Yes, this is what we want to see. Blizzo, the closer, playing uh, the closer covenant here with the Necro Banner. He's going to have absolutely crazy burst damage if he doesn't get shut down. But they didn't uh, change anything in terms of trinket selection. Uh, still uh, sticking to that relentless here, and uh, we'll see how it goes, uh, how it works out for them. Right now, Zipa is into the disarm. Zipa is going to be the target here uh, on that smaller map. The gripping Ascraft. Here comes the asphyxiate. Here comes the damage. Here's the necro banner. Here is the abomination limb. Here's everything. But Ascraft just sitting through it. Lizzo in a oh. sheep and Swapsy in a blind. That was. All of their cooldowns combined right there. They have a little bit of leftovers on them. Can they get anything going? It doesn't look like it. Ascraft's behind the pillar. He traded Bark Skin for basically Blizzos and Swapsy's entire spellbook. A fantastic opener here for SK Gaming. But they have to survive a lot more than that. Yeah, it's actually said then with the Spears. They've sort of done it with the Necro here. They both pop together. They both get crowd control together and... Well, they end up forcing bark skin with everything they have, so that's that's not the best case scenario. I'm not sure if Necro was actually the play of swapping to here. I felt like the spears are getting so much value in the previous games. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it kind of speaks to what you were saying as well with not having trinket, right? Like you blow all your cooldowns, you get blinded. <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, that's that's unfortunate. You get dismantled out of the blind. Blizzle gets polymorphed into a polymorph, into a dragon's breath, into a polymorph, into a nova. He doesn't move his character. And when you have a team like SK Gaming that's just so proficient with their crowd control, especially mages like Morrow, um, it's really, really difficult. Um, but now, now that there's a little bit of havoc in the match, when those cooldowns come back up, it's going to be a little bit scarier for Asgarath. I don't mind that they popped it. I mean, the sooner you use your cooldowns in the match, the sooner they come off cooldown uh, for you to actually get things going again. So CGN Esports, they try to have an explosive start. They didn't really find too much, but they have decent pressure right now. Um, Asgrath had to trade out his bark skin, and when the cooldowns are back up in just a few short seconds, I feel like CGN Esports is going to be able to get really, really aggressive. Yeah, and uh, Zipai uh, not using his blind right now, even though it's off cooldown, he's vanishing. He, he literally doesn't care about even resetting that cooldown. He is just holding it for one purpose, and that is when the Necrolord banner or the Abomination limb is out, somebody's getting blinded, and uh, that is their win condition. Get to dampening and pop combust. So uh, every, every team is playing to their uh, win conditions right now. And uh, let's see how it goes. Swapsy right now going to be the target of choice here. Looking to make his way over to Ascarath. Blizzard's in a disarm. Ascarath camping it out in bear form. He drops the preemptive overgrowth. And here we go. Abomination Limb. Insta blind. Blizzard though popping off right now. Big damage with that asphyxiate. With that strangulate. Ascarath dropping mega low. But he doesn't have to use his trinket, which is that crucial defensive they don't get the trank bubble either so Askarath coming out once again only trading his bark skin traded his nature swiftness there as well but those are basically uh you know they don't matter at all because you're gonna have those back for sure before the stun is even back uh, on the enemy side so Askarath once again gonna weather another dangerous storm there and it's gonna be swapsy here on the back foot Mara popping off with the combustion gonna get traded for the anti-magic shell and the anti-magic zone there as well actually swapsy is still taking a decent a beating here from that combustion but he will recover zipai getting aggressive here with a kidney shot zipai uh, is gonna have his next blind ready and uh, honestly, he might be able to send a blind and then still have another blind as well for the Abomination Limb. So we'll see what Zipa decides to do in that regard. But I would say right now, 
SK Gaming, uh, looking very comfortable, looking like they're in the driver's seat, but it could change at any moment. Askarath uh, uses the bark skin here, strangulate coming out after that asphyxiate, and uh, he wasn't, uh, he didn't have to trinket there. I think they proc'd his auto frenzy there as well, but uh, Askarath. Uh, basically coming out of that one scot-free and it's once again going to be Swapsy here uh, taking the brunt of the damage. Yeah, so the blind gets sent out here onto Lontar into the re-sheep, but I mean, I don't think he's going to get a blind back within 30 seconds. He's an outlaw rogue, so who knows really, but I'm fairly sure that this next advance from CGN could force some major cooldowns. They're not going to have blind available. Zipai is getting his trinket back though, so he should be able to kidney or gouge them off of Asgarath, who is currently sitting it down for a drink, but they are moving towards him slowly. Maybe Blizzo could maybe go and fear him again to allow Swapsy to connect. They don't really want to grip him initially. They want to grip him when he's trying to get away, get him back into that bomb limb, try and make sure that he takes as much damage as possible. They can bust from Marrow now on the two Blizzo, and here is the Necro Banner, the grip, the asphyxiate, but they're going on to Marrow. Marrow, Nightfair blinks away. Beautiful Vortex on his re-blink. The Alter Time doesn't really do too much as he is put into, well, just the safe healing hands of Asgarath, really. <laughs> yeah, it's a <laughs> lot of throughput from that Druid. Blizzard at the same time, though, taking a huge hit of damage. The Necro Banner going to be doing a lot of damage over here onto Zipai as well. I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of that push on Amaro. Once again, the blind shuts it down. And I feel like if Swapsy could basically just sync up a Trinket with that Abomination's Limb on that blind, they'd be able to get so much more done in this matchup. Swapsy trying to shut down the drink, and that's one of the things about this particular map. It's going to be very difficult for Asgarath to actually sneak away and go for drinks. or 3% dampening at this point of the game. I don't know if these druids are going to be able to really recover too much mana. Push here from Blizzo and Swapsy on tomorrow, and they're just going to be going after the Beige. So a bit of a strategy change here. Uh, trying to just limit what Morrow can do in the match. It can be difficult to take him down. A big heal comes in from Asgarath, but this unrelenting pressure might make it really difficult for Asgarath to actually ever have a moment to recover that mana. They get the oh. ice block. That was without any cooldowns from CGN Esports. I really like the strategy chains here. Yeah, this is exactly what they need to do. Blizzard now getting blinded here. 44 seconds on that Abomination Limb. I don't know if Zipa is going to... Ah, he has a Vanish. It's going to be close to have another blind for that one. Uh, he did get it back in time last time, but... Uh, it was a very close call. We'll see what Zipai can do here in that regard. But right now, it's going to be Swapsy taking some damage. Mana still heavily in favor of Lontar. Lontar going for Cyclones here, getting aggressive. Maru with no Ice Block. Big cooldowns available for Blizzo very, very shortly here as well with that Necro Banner. And it could be a big push. And I think the reason why they're going after Maru is because when they're going after Askarath, well, Swapsy gets blinded and then Blizzard just gets sheeped. So... They don't really have uh, anybody doing damage, but at least now, if they go after Maru, uh, they could uh, at least have one person connecting with his damage. However, Zipai could always just send a blind on one guy and a gouge kidney on the other. Uh, Zipai on that outlaw rogue, very, very disruptive. And there it is, blind onto the abomination limb. He gets it back again using that vanish. And now Maru still though taking a lot of damage. Zipai looking for the sap here on the swap. So he gets a kidney shot onto him. I believe he was pulled out there, but that was an extremely close call. They almost procced Maru's cauterize and Blizzo still all over him. Alter time getting used here by Maru. And uh, that is unfortunately the problem here as well for CGN. If they want to try to take down the mage, they don't have an offensive dispel for that alter time. So Maru, every one minute. It, or even less than that with the uh, shifting power. Ooh, Blizzo taking huge damage here. Anti-Magic Zone gets traded. Iron Bark gets traded. He's going to survive. Uh, but yeah, Maru, uh, he's going to be able to reset a lot of those cooldowns as well uh, with that alter time. So he's, uh, even though he's down a block, he's not in the worst uh, spot. He still has his cauterize, and he's going to probably be able to reset that block. Asgarath taking that opportunity to get a full reset on his mana there with that huge drink. But now Blizzo takes Blizzo. so much damage to the, ma the mana. It doesn't even matter. He's just died. Not even combust, just the adrenaline rush from Zipai there. And uh, maybe he didn't have many hops. I think Lontar went to go stop Asgarath's drink, so perhaps wasn't prepared for that onslaught as they'd already used Iron Bark on the previous go. Wow. Uh, that was uh, completely unexpected. The fact that he went down there, just got kidney shot. Didn't seem like Lontar really had any cooldowns. I'm really curious to see exactly what he was doing in that moment. If he was going for drinks or what, because... He, he that went was to a... prevent Asgarath's drink, I think. He went to go roll him out and then... Uh, Crowd controlled himself, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
he cast Distract, and unfortunately yeah, Asgrath cast Distract, and he went and chased him, but yeah. So SK Gaming claiming a very beautiful game number three as well. They're now up in the series with this Rogue Mage Druid, and I feel like this could have kind of ramifications for the rest of the tournament. I know Raikou told Supatiz the likelihood of Chaz playing was extremely <laughs> low, but you can bet Kangan is watching these games and is like, oh, we might need a Druid in our games if we end up playing this team again. So it's kind of a nightmare situation for CGN. Perhaps they can clean it up uh, in game number four. It still feels like they have opportunities to win, but yeah, I mean, the Outlaw Rogue with the Fire Mage, the Resto Druid seems to be enough defense uh, and slippery enough that you can actually get away. Uh, I really feel like from watching these games, though, you need a Trinket. Like, not using Trinket yeah. seems extremely... Like, it's, 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 it's not good. They, it really feels that way. You have this huge hit of damage, and if you're getting blinded every single time you do it, it it's just such a waste. So I really want to see CGN make that adaptation. Yeah, and then unfortunately for them, this is their swing match. So now SK Gaming, if we're going to a game number five, well, they looked very comfortable on Tolvir. Asgarth was running a lot of laps there, you know, a kitty uh, in a big sandbox, basically having the time of his life. Well, there's other big maps available as well, and we're most likely going to go to them uh, if uh, CGN is able to tie us up here uh, and even get us to that game number five. So this is a very important game that SK is able to win. And not only that, but the winner of this qualifies to the final, and the second place price is $40,000. Uh, so there's quite a lot of uh, money here on the line for whoever wins this. And uh, also... <laughs> Kungana is down in the lower bracket. Uh, we saw, you know, both of these teams, their stats against them uh, in the, you know, in earlier during the circuit. So there's just there's just so many things, uh, you know, uh, on the table for you and things that you want to avoid. Uh, so this this is potentially the most important game CGN and SK will play in the tournament. And right now, SK uh, finding a, a massive win there. CGN, they got to swap to those trinkets. There's no question about it. They have to. I feel like the change to the Necro was a mistake here. They, they did not seem to force as many cooldowns in this game as any of the other games. Uh, they got the Black Rook Hold now, which is still quite a big arena. I'm not sure they had anything else available. But, uh, I'm not sure why they chose this one. I think Dalaran. Still, I yeah, think. Got... Yeah. yeah. And like Blade's Edge, which they usually pick as well. Maybe Dalaran is too easy for the Druid to up and down or something. I don't know. Yeah, you can but... Vortex down as well. I, I don't know. They're committed at this point. <laughs> Black, Rook, uh, Black Rook Hold will be the map, so I'm a bit curious. But I, I feel like for CGN Esports, um, yeah, I have to agree with you, Gallo. It did not seem like the Necrolord for the Warrior was nearly as good as the Kyrian. Um, just seemed like it was much easier for them to deal with it, especially... Basically, when Swapsy and Blizzo were popping their cooldowns at the same time, it was just a blind on Swapsy, Polymorph on Blizzo, Dragon's Breath to Dispel, Polymorph him again, Polymorph him again, Dismantle. Like, they're just throwing all their crowd control. So they have this really scary moment, but during that moment, it seems like SK Gaming is just fully prepared for it. They're saving blind each and every time. And, uh, yeah, I feel like in terms of offense, CGN, they have to mix it up a little bit. Otherwise, uh, I feel like we're going to see a similar result as game number two and three. Yeah, uh, I couldn't agree with you more. And um, it's not that surprising. I mean, we got three mages here on the desk as well. You know, we brought out the the smartest uh, players here <laughs> for this series um, hmm. with our intellect. And we're going to see Tessia tagged in on the Rogue DK. Now, Gelo, I know you talked yeah. a lot about this, uh, about the Rogue DK and uh, kind of how it works. So uh, what, what do you think about this? Is this a good answer? It is so incredibly disruptive it's uh it's really really difficult to play into you have the mind numbing poison from the rogue uh, coupled with the spell warden from the dk so people just cannot pass you have pretty much every <laughs> this stack dr under the sun i i think so i mean it stacks the tongues <laughs> feels like it <laughs> so uh, this is very hard i mean i think that this comp loses to uh, i i don't know I'm not sure. I mean, Rogue can die. That's, that's the worst thing about this, is the Rogue is... I think he's more vulnerable than the Warrior. Uh, you know, only just. Yeah, I feel like if you're talking about the weakness of the comp, it is the Outlaw Rogue. the Outlaw Rogue. Yeah, yeah. the Outlaw Rogue <laughs> defense, then you're looking pretty good. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, a really, really interesting choice. Do you think they're going to be going after Morrow here? 
Like, do you think they just go after Maro and kind of just... Uh, I think they go after Maro and just kick every single cast he ever does, and it just makes it very, very difficult. The, the high damage, coupled with, you know, you can't really blink unless someone gets kidneyed, and then otherwise you're just sitting that full six seconds is really frustrating to deal with. I'm curious. CGN bringing in a lot of these uh, Death Knight cleaves. Um... I feel like SK Gaming kind of figured out the Warrior Death Knight a little bit. Um, in those last two games, it definitely, you got the feeling like if we saw another game, SK Gaming was probably going to win it. So I like the fact that CGN, they mix it up. They now have an Outlaw Rogue of their own. Uh, it's going to bring in a lot of control. Uh, the one thing I do like about the Outlaw Rogue, especially against Morrow, is even if he's playing Blink Stun, uh, Tessia, basically Tessia and Swapsy can just train him down. They can even just throw the kidney shots onto Zipai. So they can just throw an off kidney on Zipai, slow down his damage, throw it on the Asgrath for crowd control. Or if Maro ever does decide he wants to try to get away, which is not going to be an easy thing to do, if he does blink, then he's going to be met with a kidney shot because he's not going to have that out as an answer. So uh, the Outlaw Rogue is going to provide a lot more lockdown for the side of CGN. Maybe uh, a lot less raw, kind of raw pressure than the Fury Warrior, but I think they'll have a lot more control in this match. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, this is potentially CGN's, uh, I mean, they're on match point here. This is potentially their last game here in the upper bracket. Then they drop down into the lower bracket where casual dads are waiting and Kungana. So they might get a rematch against Kungana, which I don't know how that goes at that point. And um, yeah, uh, anything can happen. They might get a match against casual dads. Uh, who knows at this point what's happened. Uh, today seems to be a day of upsets. And uh, it just feels, uh, uh, you know, really rewarding to be here. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, if you were here, guys, during the moment where all of this action went down, give us a one in chat. And if you want to not have to give us a one in chat, you could just click on the rewards button and then you have a fearless spectator title that just tells everybody that you were here. And of course, it's a limited edition. So you want to grab that. You want to click on those rewards immediately. Thank you. I'm waiting. I don't know if I've earned mine yet. I'm just sitting in the chat right now. I'm connected and ready to go. <laughs> Same. <Nothing. laughs> We've been here for two hours. We have, yeah. so I got it. I'll have to double check that after. But yeah, so, I, I can't wait to get into this game. Today has been a really kind of interesting day. I wonder if there's going to be any surprises when we go into North America after this match. But yeah, Kangana being down in the lower bracket, a huge surprise. CGN Esports beating the Rogue Mage Priest with their Warrior Death Knight. And now SK mixing it up and bringing in the Druid, actually kind of figuring it out an answer for Kangana for free. So that's kind of nice. It's like, thank you. Uh, thank you. Because I know Kangana is like, yeah, we got to go back to the drawing board. Like, you know, we didn't really expect that. We got to figure out what we're going to do tomorrow. And now SK Game is like, hey, you can just do this. And they're like, oh, great. W welcome, Chaz. You're back on the team. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's going to have an opportunity to potentially play if those teams do meet. But yeah, grand finals on the line. And it's like you said, Zico, there's a lot of prize money at stake just for winning this matchup. You, your earnings go up a, a significant amount. Yeah, $40,000 to whoever uh, finishes second. So whoever wins here, even if they lose after that, they've secured themselves $40,000. Uh, I think the price for third, let me double check, I believe it's twenty five k So it's a pretty uh, big difference there. Uh, between uh, third and uh, second place, you basically win another 15K uh, above what you would get if you were third. So very, very big game. And uh, with that in mind, uh, the teams, I don't know which one of them has taken a little bit of a delay here. So uh, we are going to get into the game. But, uh, you know, these teams, uh, we've seen it so many times, you know, people joining, they're swapping comp and then they join without conduits or they join and they only got one legendary or they got, you know, uh, the legendary for a different spec. We've seen it all at this point. Uh, so you definitely don't want to make a mistake like that. And another thing that I was thinking about is the fact that I don't think we've seen Tessia on Rogue uh, at all this season, like in the AWC. I, he's played it for, for years. Uh, in fact, he was really good at a Rogue. I think back in WAD, if I remember, he was uh, kind of considered as, you know, a top tier Rogue. But I don't know how much he's, uh, he's been practicing it. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't actually know if he has played it uh, with this team this season. Um, I don't think he has been it. playing it a lot on ladder, and he's been playing it a lot in war games. He's he's pretty much fully back to like how he used to be. He's very very good on the rogue. That's okay, why okay. I thought he's gonna play this comp a lot earlier, as they've been. Well, every time I queue, I face these guys, and it's incredibly annoying. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so we have it on good authority yeah. that Tessia is back on the rogue then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's basically the most... I feel like as a mage, it's probably one of the most miserable matchups you, you could play into. Uh, every time you blink, you get sunned. If you blink, you get gripped. You're chained the entire game. You have mind numbing on you the entire game. You have multiple interrupts. Um, it's going to be really, really difficult for Morrow to get a lot done in this match. But if there isn't any mage that could do it, um, it would be him. So let's see if he is going to have enough backup from his team or what exactly CGN Esports is going to be able to get done. But tagging out Blizzo, bringing in Tessia for his debut in these finals. Uh, and bringing him uh, on the debut on that rogue as well. Uh, obviously, he's very practiced on it, but we haven't seen it yet. Uh, let's see if he can perform. Yeah, he's going to need to perform, and he's coming in cold, and he's coming in in a very high-stakes match here. But Tessia, uh, he's been around for a long time. He's got a lot of experience. Uh, but this is the time to do it. His team needs him. And uh, SK Gaming just one away here from securing themselves the, a spot in the grand finals. Uh, you can tell these guys are hungry. And uh, it's been nice also to see them um, when I was off uh, for that one series. It was really nice to actually see them on that lock um, alley because that's something we have been kind of wanting to see from them more. Just because if you can incorporate Zipai in any way on his alley uh, with any comp, I think that's a great idea because he's so good at it. Um, SK Gaming, it looks like their hard work has been paying off so far. Let's see if they can take it all the way or if CGN is going to come back and bite here with the Outlaw DK. Yeah, so CGN opting for more disruption rather than more damage. As they, I think, I mean, Blizzo died the previous game very easily. I mean, he was absolutely getting healed and he just died through healing. So it's, uh, you know, you never win these long games in this expansion, really. It's always the team that just kind of rides you down and interrupts you the most that is the successor. So here we go. Here comes the opener. Marriage is getting a ring of fire onto Swapsy. No sap coming out for either team. A post druids are just sitting in stealth, trying to avoid that sap, trying to avoid that opener. Swapsy instantly disarmed, and the kicks have begun onto Marrow. Marrow stuck in those chains. He's trying to cast the sheep. He gets the sheep onto Swapsy. He blinks away in the full kidney, goes onto Thesia. But this means that Mara can be put into a full stun very soon. Yep, shifting power is going to be traded out by Morrow, allowing him to get on another Blazing Barrier, but he's already used his trinket, so he's going to be playing Orc and trade out his trinket. He gets gripped back. Big damage incoming. Kitty shot on Morrow, kitty shot onto Swapsy. <laughs> Both these rogues just kind of dismantling the opponents and each other. So you see a double dismantle come out as well. Both these rogues kind of mirroring each other at this point of the game. And there's just a bit of a blender. I mean, Morrow as a caster, you want to kite, you want to create distance, but it's very difficult to do in a matchup like this. So he's going to have to go for a lot of instant damage, kind of deal with tanking the kicks. He gets down the Ring of Frost as well as the Ring of Fire for a little bit of that cleave damage. Ashgrath now going to be getting gripped in, taking a little bit of pressure as well here from Swapsy. And, I mean, the main objective from CGN is just do as much damage as possible, try to live as long as you can, pressure all three members, and the mana bar of Lone Tar, and that's going to be one of the secrets to them actually winning this game. Asgroth is actually not playing a relentless IQD, uh, which is typical uh, against Outlaw Rogues. So Asgroth could p potentially have to trink it a blind and then be put in a really long CC chain or even swap to with an Abomination Lib. Uh, a lot of options here for CGN. I really like this composition coming out from them, but they're going to need to perform on it. Tessia right now with a full blind onto Asgroth. Double Dragon's Breath coming out from Morrow. Morrow looking for the Ring of Frost. He gets interrupted. He fakes it. Goes for the Polymorph. He gets stunned on it. Full sap here by Tessia looking to make his way back back here onto target but zipai connects there with the kidney shot onto swapsy and there it is that's the trinket of Askarath. next blind or potentially just the next abomination limb which is 25 seconds away for swapsy they could swap to Askarath, try to take him down or they could continue to ride the momentum on tomorrow with a long long cc chain i'm thinking a grip into a stun into blind sap or something along those lines could definitely be enough cc to uh, get Morrow to use his ice block here. So uh, CGN Esports right now, I would say in the driver's seats, things are looking good. Asgard sitting down for a drink though on the side of SK, trying to uh, keep his mana here for the long game. And I think for SK, we're just waiting uh, for dampening here. Uh, similarly to what we've seen in the other games, they're just looking to survive and uh, just overwhelm somebody with a big combustion. 
Yeah, SK once again, just trying to swap on hots over and over again. Change the kidney onto the DK, change the kidney onto the rogue, and just sheep as many people as possible. The longer the game, the better, because you get the more opportunities to just kill through healing with that combustor they seem to be doing in the previous matchups. Whereas Thesia now grapples onto Mara, the full blind goes onto Asgarath, he tries to get damage on the Mara, but he just alter times. And he just can't seem to force too much out of this. But here comes another kidney onto Asgraph. The Abomination Limb. There is no trinket for Asgraph. He bark skins. Can they get any more? The triple Dragon's Breath comes out from Marrow, saving his poor healer's life once more. Well, big damage still on Asgraph. He's trying to weather the storm. A kitty shot onto Tessia, though, will slow down a lot of that incoming damage. There's a lot of cleave coming out right now. Lone Charm is going to have to play catch up. And Zipai actually playing kind of an interesting talent here. Um, he is going to be going with the Dancing Steel, so improving his Blade Flurry damage, giving him a little bit more cleave, and I, I like it. I think it's a good decision. Swaps and Tessie are going to be basically grouped up this entire match, and Azipa, if he can maintain um, that Blade Flurry, he's just going to be cleaving everyone down, really taxing the mana bar of Lontar in this match. So we'll see if that pressure starts adding up and amounting to more, but you kind of felt it there with those crowd control on Lontar. Well, Swapsy and Tessia almost went down. Yeah, and uh, that's what SK Gaming, that's what they want to do. They want to just get to a deep dampening position and either get a cr long crowd control or just overwhelm with insane damage. And right now, Tessia is taking insane damage. There's a full blind on the long target. Do you have anything more to follow it up? Beautiful stuff here coming out from Zipa. Do they have anything to follow up the sheep onto Lontar here? Can they get uh, Tessia out of stealth? They do pull him out there. And now Tessia going for a kidney shot onto Asgard just for CC. Lontar going to be coming out of crowd control. Disarm now on. Onto Z by Swapsy and Tessia marching over to Morrow, trying to stack up those uh, cast reductions. Tessia in a full kidney shot. He's in a lot of trouble here. He's uh, this auto stun is gonna pro cloaks on one HP. Oh my goodness, Tessia literally cheating death right there. Barely holding on. That was an insane push here from SK Gaming, almost catching him there, but he is playing um with that Kyrian auto stun, with that Forge uh, Light Prime Minister, and uh, I think that is literally the reason why he lived there. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's playing the elusiveness as well. He's so lucky that he didn't just fall down there. It wasn't even cheat death. It was just sure luck. He still has his... I mean, I guess he doesn't have his human trinket, and Lontar apparently no IQD there, so they don't seem to be in a particularly great spot. They're trying to force some cooldowns here. The full kidney goes onto Zipai, the blind onto Asgraf. Can they follow it up? They strangulate Marrow to prevent the peels. Cheap shot onto Adsgrav. Zipai getting gripped back over and over again. But it seems like they don't quite have the damage to go through. The evasion is forced out. The adrenaline popped from Zipai. They're trying to turn it back onto Fezia. They don't quite have enough damage. Back onto Swapsy now. Make sure they tick the heart the target without any hots up as they just try and win on this mana lead. Well, let's see if they can do that. I mean, it is a big win condition for them. We're at 7% dampening. Both these druids relatively even. Lothar has a little bit of a lead. Double kitty shot coming in. Zipai gets the kitty shot on Swapsy. Counter kitty shot coming in from Tessia. And all four DPS have just been piled on each other the entire game. Just trying to get out the damage that they can. Marl's been doing a really good job surviving. It's a difficult matchup to be maneuvered as a mage. You get interrupted a lot. It can be difficult to get out the damage. But during those kitty shots, it's very important to try to connect and assist your rogue. Big power blast coming in. This is the combustion in the anti-magic zone overlapped with the Cloak of Shadows. I feel like that was a bit of a panic moment, but maybe allows Lontar to actually sit down and recover some mana, or at least not have to trade out um, during that kind of scary offensive moment. Tessia goes for a full blind sap onto Asgrath. Can they get the ice block? Doesn't look like they're going to be able to. Morrow maneuvers away, actually going for an invisibility right now, potentially sitting down for a drink. Nope, not going to. Blinking back into combat, trying to help out his rogue. Um... Uh, take down Tessia, so just great pressure, great defense from both these teams. Uh, but I would say there was a maybe a slight defensive overlap there by CGN Esports. Um, and if Morrow can reset his combustion fast enough, there might be an opportunity uh, for SK Gaming to actually get really aggressive. Yeah, let's see if SK Gaming can get aggressive right now because they're going to need to. Another situation like that uh, that they had onto Tessia, and this is just uh, this series is just over. SK Gaming right now with $40,000 on the line. They just need to get a little bit more damage in their swaps. Can they do it right now? Askarath working with very low mana right now. They're not allowing him really to get away. Two drink. Kinesh on onto Zipai. He's taking some damage. Askarath throwing out the rats now onto Tessia. They're looking to set up here. Full, uh, full disarm in 
into sheep there on the test. Yeah, Mara just can't get aggressive. He's got the combustion right now. They have a blind, and there it is. Full blind onto Askarath. Combustion available, but Maru can't use it just yet. And it doesn't, uh, actually, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to pop it just yet. Now, finally, Tessia getting the sap here. Maru needs to get some counter pressure, or he's going to be forced to use that ice block here. And he will trade out the combustion. Swapsy just answering here with his anti-magic shell. Now, finally, uh, Askarath uh, should be leaving crowd control here. This was nice offensive pressure because CGN was in a very, very dangerous situation there, making Maru use his uh, combustion uh, just to uh, kind of get some pressure going. Uh, is going to allow them to play a lot more defensive. That blind uh, that Tessia had available as well could have been a lot more uh, scary uh, if it wasn't for that. Now Maru is going to just be forced to kite, just try to live and uh, try to build distance. It looks like an absolute nightmare to play this matchup as the mage. Counterspell secures onto Lontar, Kinichon onto Tessia, Zipai, no blind available unfortunately, and they don't have too much damage to work with. Ring of Fire gets dropped, and uh, Tessia gets fully hotted, so they're going to swap over to Swapsy, swap on Hots. That is the name of the game. Try to uh, catch up here as much as possible. Askarath actually able to recover a decent chunk of mana, but now in a full blind. This is Maru, and he is in trouble all the time. He goes back, he drops 20%, he blinks, gets the blazing barrier, gets interrupted, they close the gap. Do they have any more CC? No. Askarath will shrink it to stay uh, to save Amaro, and uh, that should be the end of the setup now. And that will trade also for the Abomination Limb pretty effectively, so uh, Askarath uh, making the right calls here, but he could be put in a long CC chain later on, but now it is SK Gaming's turn to get aggressive here and try to close this one out. Yeah, these CC chains are so ridiculously long. I don't know what's more crazy, the fact Maro lives the entire thing or the fact that the CC chain is about 30 seconds. But Maro taking so much damage as he presses Combust. They keep doing goes at the same time. So every time he Combusts, he's having to play a little bit defensive because the blind just land at the same time and the, the goes are never super clean. So he's just kind of on the back foot every time he Combusts. It's, it's not really what you want to see. Uh, he's just taking so much pressure, he's not able to be super offensive when he goes. But here's the half stun on to Marrow as he blinks. He gets his altar time up, so he should be fine. But he's using altar time without having blind on his healer. His next blind, I think, scores the ice block. To the side of CGN, there's no altar time available. There is no iron bark available. He's going to hope that these hots are super strong. Because otherwise Marrow's going to be surely forcing that huge major cooldown. Now, I'll have to see if that does happen. 33% dampening both these teams. Pressure is increasing. There's a full blind right now onto Asgarath, but there's just no damage going out. At the same time, though, Swapsy and Tessia getting cleaved down. Massive pressure coming in from Zipai. Dampening is just so high. Tessia might get dropped. Forced to trade out the evasion as well as his Aegis. That is enough defense to survive, but at what cost? He basically trades out everything. There's no Vanish, no Cloak, no Evasion, no Faint. Tessia is extremely vulnerable here. This next kidney shot could be lethal. If they can get crowd control on Lone Tar. They get a stun on the Tessia. That could be the end of the game and SK Gaming could be advancing to the finals. Let's see if they are oh. able to do it. Tessia holding on to just 1% health. Lone Tar trying to find to keep him alive. Vanish trades out with the Iron Bark. Huge no defensive cooldown overlap, but they needed it. At the same time, Swap could it. go down. He dismantled. There's no incoming heals. Dismantle on Lone Tar. He gets dropped. A beautiful setup there by SK Gaming. Unrelenting with the pressure. Mars low, but I think we'll be able to stay Stabilize a beautiful finish there for SK Gaming, locking in the Outlaw Rogue, Fire Mage Druid, and they earn their place in the finals for this region. Excellently done absolutely massive performance coming out from SK here. Mauro didn't have to play in that last series for them, but this time around, he came in and the man was on fire. This is such an annoying comp uh, to deal with as the mage. It just looks terrible to play against, but Mauro coming out, getting the pressure, surviving, beautiful coordination between him and Askarath and Zipai as well. Uh, basically just doing insane pressure. I, I'm really curious to see the scoreboard because I, I feel like Zipai, uh, I mean, he's got to be on top or uh, tied maybe with Swapsy, but for sure, definitely up there. Uh, just doing so much that you can see. Uh, wow, look at that. Uh, Zipai, <laughs> that is crazy. 3.4 million damage coming out from this man on the Outlaw Rogue. Uh, just putting up so much pressure. And we're going to see it uh, on the replay a little bit later on. Uh, Zipai basically solo Tessia there at the end. He had Cloak up and he just never let go with that big uh, pressure. 
And here we can also see uh, the damage and the healing. SK Gaming, gonna be the yellow line. And uh, the top uh, portion of your screen is the damage done. The bottom is the healing done. And then of course the purple will be represented by CGN. And here we can see uh, those uh, final moments uh, in that match. And uh, actually I think uh, this, was, this was a bit earlier, no? Uh, so here they proc uh, the uh, auto stun, they get the cloak, they get the anti-magic zone, and uh, here Tessia, again, uh, this is when Tessia kind of left the pillar a little bit too soon, and uh, he gets punished in a pretty big way. Uh, he gets uh, he thinks he's he's kind of safe here to push in uh, because he still has that cloak in his back pocket and he's got a lot of hot, so he just cloaks, but look at Zipai here, he's just killing him through it. He doesn't care. He just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. And, and then Tessia forced to vanish defensively. They're just kidney swapsy. And Maru gets to pop off with combustion. There's no rogue gouging him and annoying him. And uh, Zipa just doing so much pressure. Maru finally getting that clean combust as well there at the end. We were talking about it during the game. He wasn't able to get those super clean combustions. He kind of had to use them almost defensively. Um, but there in the end, he gets it. And they have the dampening to back it up. They have the damage to back it up. And SK Gaming first finalist here in Europe. Yes, and, and well-deserved as, as well. I've definitely been missing this bracket format because we get to see kind of the, the, the teams and their journeys as they progress through the bracket. Uh, now we've got two teams down there on the lower end of things and they are facing elimination. Um, and that is that's not a good place to be definitely, especially when so much is at stake here. Um, in these moments like this, Gelu, when you drop down to the lower bracket that quickly, like what is that mental like for you? Um, I mean, you just need to go back to the drawing board, really, to identify why you lost and try and go from there. Because I, I really think that CGM played very well. It's just... I don't think picking a Rested Druid into a Fire Mage Rogue is ever a good idea. Because the majority of these games, they got very, very, very little crowd control. And some games, they didn't even have any crowd control. And they were just dying through healing, because they just swap on one guy, go on the other guy, swap on one guy, go on the other guy. And eventually, you just run Oom um and run out of healing. And it's just, I don't know, it's really, really difficult as a rest of it. Yeah, they, they, I think that's definitely indicative there. But that being said, SK Gaming, we're seeing them there in the finals. So that is going to be great for them. Looking for an opponent, obviously. We see those teams still down there in that lower bracket. Um, and we're going to get some teams sent home tomorrow. And, uh, you know, we started off obviously with a really, really good pool of European teams. And I feel like so far already, we've definitely turned uh, this competition a bit on its head. Just, you know, if we'd taken predictions from chat or even from us of where this would end up, I wonder if we would be close at all. I mean, Elliot, you've kind of been like the master of predictions today. Is this kind of <laughs> how you thought it would shape <laughs> up or, or what? Yeah, sometimes when like with my predictions, I like to just go against the grain. You know, right, every yeah. single person, every single one of my co-casters predicted that Kangana was going to win series number one. So I decided I would go with CGN just to mix it up. And you know what? Turns out every once in a while, you're right. Those predictions can definitely backfire. Though. <laughs> I, I, I think one BlizzCon, I had the worst predictions of anyone just because I tried to always root for the underdogs. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're right. This is a very surprising bracket. Um, but I mean, SK Gaming, they're such a consistent team. It's not a really big surprise um, that they are in the finals. Uh, I mean, they're phenomenal. And uh, one thing to actually note about all four of these teams in this tournament is every single team has a BlizzCon champion on it. All yeah. of them. Which isn't something you normally see for a top four. There's a lot of, I, I was, I didn't make the, the BlizzCon connection. That's a, a really good point. But like on top of that as well, there's just a lot of, veteran experience it seems like the teams on the european side at least is, are just filled with teams that have players that have been around for so so long so obviously they're pulling from that experience but uh speaking of not expecting to be there it sounds like maro as well was kind of saying the same thing um when we spoke to him he said maro said we didn't really know what to expect but we didn't expect to get top two at least today so uh, we'll see if they can keep that going. But that being said, that has wrapped up the European region for today. We are now moving on to North America. Up first, we've got Kawhi versus three and a half men. And then we've got Team Liquid versus Cloud9. It's the same thing. There will not be any eliminations today. They're both upper series games. But real quick, before I send us to break, 
Got to give uh, just another quick rundown of the title that you guys can get, the spectator title. I'm seeing a lot of questions about it in chat still. So just as a quick recap, go to the reward button below the stream, link your account to verify you're connected correctly. This button will be returning, will be switching from rewards to connected. And that's how you can verify um, that you actually did it successfully. And you might have to refresh to double check that. So go get your spectator title and we will go get on a break. When we come back, it's going to be North America. Kawhi versus three and a half men coming up first.
welcome back. We have finished the European games for the day, and now we are in North America. We're going to narrow down this top four just a little bit, send some teams down to the lower bracket. Um, and on theme as well, we've got Absurge. Hello. Hi, how you doing? I'm good. I'm excited. Were you watching the, the, the European games? I did. I was here the whole time listening to everyone, and it caught me by surprise, though, I feel like. I didn't expect to see so many Druids, which was nice to see. Nice yeah. little shake up in the meta. Yeah, it's nice to see a little bit of a variance. Do you expect it to also continue on with a, a little bit wider range of specs for North America? I definitely think overall there's going to be more specs. I'm not sure if it's going to be Reso Druid though for NA, but I think more specs. I think certainly Demo Lock, maybe some Unholy DK like we've seen, maybe a Boomkin for Super Tease, maybe he'll be happy. So <laughs> I doubt that. As much you doubt as you'll be happy or, or your doubt we'll see a boomkin i doubt we see a boomkin i mean i think booming is really good but outlaw rmp outlaw in general is just not a good uh, matchup for it i think y is likely using a ret paladin um they've been using ret rogue as an answer for rmp and double outlaw three and a half men uh, oddly enough i've been playing against them on the ladder and they seem to be investing a lot of time on the ladder with jungle and and trying hmm. to use nuked as a feral druid um and I don't know if they're actually going to use that or not, because I don't know how well Jungle would do into Ret Rogue specifically, if that was their plan for it. Um, because Kawhi, they've kind of been the Rogue Mage slayers. So three and a half men might try something different than Rogue Mage because of that. Hmm. Yeah, be interesting to see uh, what exactly these two teams decide to do here but this is uh you know to obviously a very big matchup three and a half men i forget zico it's been a while was this your number one for rmp your rmp tier this team that's right okay. that's right yeah so we got number one for rmp and the number one you know team in north america had an absolutely insane season but we know that on the side of europe kungana also had an insane series our season and they lost their first series so i wonder if we see that repeat again here today three and a half men obviously been working very hard behind the scenes so let's see what they can do why versus three and a half men game number one yeah let's see what they decide to bring out here red rogue maybe ah uh, it's gonna be uh, the rps well the rpp with the paladin uh versus that uh rmp but it is going to be a sub rmp coming out here from three and a half men and uh Usually we've been seeing a lot of outlaw, but Calvish is one of those rogues that do like to get on that sub rogue. And we've seen them do some crazy setups. Now, I think for three and a half men, they need to kind of go off script. They, they need to do a lot of swapping. I'm expecting them in the start, maybe open up onto brain, then sheep him and go after somebody else and try to force multiple cooldowns like that. Because if they trade one for one, uh, I think uh, Kawhi will be able to run away with this one. Let's see what they decide to do here. Game number one is live, Super D's. Yeah, we got RMP versus Shadow Priest Rogue. I'm glad we got Absurge here for this series. Um, Going to be bringing in a lot of knowledge for this type of matchup. With Calvish running the subtlety spec. Um, I feel like there's not a lot of good targets other than maybe Brain or Drake. If they, if they get tunneled into going after the Shadow Priest, then you just run into this kind of cooldown rotation that never ends. Um, so I don't really want to see them committed too much to Prev, maybe at least not initially. Uh, and it looks like he is running a Night Fae uh, Shadow Priest, trying to get some extra damage reduction, trying to just be as stable as possible and survive deep into dampening with this composition is likely their main intent. Ernie sits through a sap. They're going to begin the engagement here on to Nuke. But now Calvish could open up on Drake. And I do wonder if this is a bait or not for Calvish to get him to come out of stealth right now. He's still waiting. He's next to Prev. He's going to open on Prev with Cheap Shot, but swap to Brain with a Cheap Shot and then set up damage. But do they have enough to take him down with a Fear onto Prev? Down to 30%. Is he running the Pot Paladin Legendary as well uh, on the Holy Paladin? We know Brain switches to that a lot when he knows he's the target for sub RMP. I don't think they dipped him low enough that Fae Guardian stabilizes and Nuked is just taking tremendous damage right now from Drake. Down at 10% consistently for some time. Ernie manages to finally get a big heal and re-stabilize his team. Another kidney shot found onto Brain. Drake is going to gouge, nuked, disrupt some of the damage here onto Brain and try and slow down. And he is running that protection yep. powder, but he overlaps it with the bubble. You don't want to have that happen where you have that cooldown out of the way as well as Divine Shield. This is a big win for three and a half men. 
Yeah, beautiful stuff here for three and a half men. And a rare mistake there from Brain, honestly. He's typically uh, the, the paladin that just always times his cooldowns perfectly. But there, may he might have been able to greet it. Uh, Brain now putting a kidney shot here. What are they going to do here? Calvin is actually getting kidney shot before they get a setup going. Previn a Ring of Frost. So it is all Drake right now. Drake trying to uh, potentially get something going there. But he does get feared. Calvin looking for the restuff uh, off of that disarm. He's going to Shadow Step over to Drake. And it doesn't look like he wants to commit any stunts there. He might have even gotten pulled out. I'm not sure. Um, Kavish gonna go for another restuff. They're going after Kearney though. Big damage. Mind Blast connects here. Prev going absolutely crazy here onto Kearney. Kearney will be able to stay alive and he didn't have to use too much there. But Kearney doesn't have a Guardian Spirit uh, for another two minutes. So they were able to proc that earlier. So Kearney not gonna have too much defense to work with. They really need to make something happen here. What are they gonna do? Full fear onto uh, Prev. They get the cheap shot. They get the save by the light and Brain uses the Eternal Aegis but they don't proc his uh, guardian of the ancient kings which is that pro pala legendary so he still has that in his back pocket still has two bobs as well as his trinket i would say uh, barring some crazy swap or some crazy mistake brain is still uh, gonna be staying alive for quite some time here but they are setting him up kearney is in a fear though he can't really connect with damage there's the mind games finally connecting they got a dr cheap shot this should be his pro pala legendary and uh, he will be able to dispel that mind games catch a big heal there with the wings and Brain lives another setup. Kawhi have remained undefeated in North America. A terror, really, is raining on everybody in this region. Is three and a half men going to have the upset and be able to be the first team to best them in such a long time? I think they only have maybe one or two third place, second place finishes for like years at this point. So, and they managed to do it and have an upset. We saw a lot of upsets in Europe. If you missed those games, you definitely need to see them. But here comes another setup onto Brain. Drake shuts it down with a dismantle onto Calvish. He's unable to connect and I'm surprised Calvish is not running the Resonator. I feel like as a subtlety rogue and you know, these outlaw, that's kind of a win condition as a swap to the outlaw. Calvish takes huge damage, gets gripped back to the pillar by Kearney in the nick of time, but you can feel those Shadow Priest buffs that came through onto Prev. His damage is sticking a lot more here onto Calvish and nuked and costing Kearney a lot more mana. We're not even a minute into damp we're a minute away from dampening. And Kearney's already 50% mana, and Brain has been rotating his cooldown so effectively that despite that overlap earlier with the Legendary and Bubble, he's going to have Bubble in 44 seconds from now. So excellent plays here from Kawhi as they look to just continue to stabilize, just poke down their targets, find a pressure point with Prev's dot damage for Drake to capitalize on with a kidney shot and overwhelm them. It's going to be up to three and a half men to try and find a way to navigate through this defense. Right now, they're going to blind Drake behind the pillar. Are they going to set up on him, maybe? Shadowy duel behind the pillar? What are they trying to do with this blind? They don't do anything with the blind, and now they're just down a blind. They're going to polymorph Drake, go after Brain, but Calvish is all by himself. No, Nuke actually got there. Brain is going to bop off the stun here during the combust. I think using a major cooldown during the bust, breaking the chain makes a lot of sense for Brain, rather than kind of maybe having to trinket and then bubble later, or bop later and overlapping them, rather than just bopping right away. It's going to allow Brain to stagger his cooldowns more effectively here. For a longer period of time kearney getting a symbols of hope off trying to reset some cooldowns for his team as well as get some mana back and recover but he's already spending that mana on a lot of flash shields he's got no serenity charges so these flash shields are very expensive brain stunned up once again kearney rolling in trying to get some pressure out gets a fear on the prev where's the mind games he needs to connect that as soon as possible here it is mind games onto brain he dispels instantly he's not falling for that trap i'm gonna waste a global healing into it and manages to survive another stun lock pretty much unscathed and i would say with Every passing moment at this point in game number one, it's looking worse and worse for three and a half men. Yep, definitely. And a lot of defensive work with the Fey Guardians here. If you notice one of the goes they did before with the blind, the reason they didn't actually commit there is because Prev on cooldown is pretty much putting up Fey Guardians for the 40% damage reduction. So kind of want to note that there. It's making brain seem extremely durable. Oh my god, almost dies. It's the wings, brain holding on a wall. You could go ahead. Yeah, beautiful stuff there. And uh, thank you for that explanation there, Upsturge. Uh, he's going to be with us, uh, giving us a little bit of uh, extra, you know, in-depth analysis as we see Nuked take some damage here. And uh, Siphon will get killed off immediately there by Nuked. Great job for him. But they did get the Guardian Spirit. And they did 
Proc, the uh, guardian of the forgotten or the, of the ancient kings. Kavish, though, in a kidney shot, taking a lot of damage. Triple fear coming in here from Kearney, though. They're trying to turn it around onto Drake. Big damage coming in onto Drake. There's Stunish Trinket, too, there. He did use, I believe, his human uh, trinket. He must have used his human trinket right there. Now going back onto Brain. And this is three and a half men when they are at their peak, swapping around, being unpredictable, finally getting themselves a couple of cooldowns there. Drake could be uh, an opportunity there. But now they get nuked. Ice block here. Kearney's mana is not looking good. And why they might have just survived long enough to be able to just uh, push for the win they still have a lot of cooldowns to work with here and uh, drake trigger really the only opening here for three and a half men let's see what they can do with it full sap onto brain full kidney shot mind game shifting power big damage coming in nuked in a full blind however and brain will be able to sit through that and he's just not even going to dispel the mind games he's just going to wait for the mind games to fade and then go for cc here onto kearney calvish forced to use his trinket his coco shadows uh, with that cc chain and kawaii turning that uh, situation on its head and forcing Calvish's cooldown when it was Brain uh, who, who was getting set up on. So beautiful stuff. Now here's the smoke bomb. This is the all-in. The one hit wonder here. Drake has no trinket. He needs to take him down right here or he will be able to survive and it looks like Brain will be able to keep him alive. He also has a sacrifice. Nuke has no ice block and I would say Kawhi right now uh, just a couple of minutes away here potentially from taking this game number one. Yeah, let's see if they can finish it. I think they are so close to victory in game number one, which is going to be devastating for three and a half men. They were really relying on this curveball sub RMP explosive composition to be able to pull off a win against Kawhi, but they're just looking like an unbreakable wall with their defense. Just perfect rotations time and time again. That Night Fae big pickup from Prev is enabling their team even more extensive survival tactics. And look at the entire team ravaged down by Prev's dots. It's just a buffet. You can kill anyone you want at this point. Calvish down at 30%, vanishing away from the fight. Kearney blinded. They could swap off now. Nuked is at half health in the midfield. Calvish shadow steps in for a kidney, but can they connect any damage? Immediate blessing and protection on that combustion brain, calculating every bust with a bop. To make sure that he can get out of the stun lock and get back to the pillar. But no, he's caught in another stun. They find the miracle. Oh. And they get the void shift from Prev at the last second. They just got through multiple layers of defense there. But Prev was ready for it. Oh, Brain almost got punished for going under forbearance during that pop. What a miracle moment for three and a half men. Those types of moments that they're going to have to create multiple times if they want to find victory facing down Kawhi. Yeah, absolutely crazy. And right now, Nuked taking a decent amount of damage here as well. This Die Fiend is not getting killed off. It's channeling through the wall there. So it's definitely uh, being annoying to deal with. Prev now in a kidney shot. They're looking for Brain here. They got a sheep onto Drake. Can they get a Ring of Frost or something there onto Prev? It doesn't look like it. They're just going to prioritize keeping Drake in CC. Brain now in a cheap shot. He gets gripped by Prev. Beautifully done there. And uh, Brain will survive. Now Brain also uh, shouldn't be on Forbearance anymore. So he's going to have a lot of coolness to work with. He's pushing in for potentially a blinding light here. Can he get it? Kearney trying to duck around the corner here. He has his greater fade. And Brain actually getting polymorphed here. Who are they going to go after, though? Previn a counter spell. Drake's going offensive. He's got his uh, trinket, the Eternal Age is active. Full sap onto Brain. And uh, Prev trying to stop Kearney from drinking, but walks into a fear right there. And now Brain alone behind the pillar. Ring of fire. Here's the kidney shot. Do they have the damage, though, to take him down? I don't think so. And uh, Brain will be able to survive. Another Siphon gets popped and counter Calvish kills it around the corner. It looks like Brain will survive. They're actually going after Calvish. He's got Trinket. He might need to use it. He's being greedy. Trinket's late. And Cloak of Shadows. He might die through it, though. Big damage coming in. Defensive Shadows. The fancy moves here by Calvish. Going for the first aid. Kearney in a full blind. He kidney shots Drake through the pillar. Looking for the restuff. Can he find it? Nuke needs to blink in and Dragon's Breath him or something. No. Calvish just going to go for the blind into a restuff. Fancy footwork here from this rogue right here. But he might get pulled out of stealth here from the dot. So he's going to open up. And uh, they will go for the cheap shot onto Brain. Do they have anything more? It doesn't look like it. Uh, do they just have raw damage potentially to force something? They do get the legendary, but it's on such a short cooldown. I think 45 seconds that uh, it's not the biggest of wins here. And uh, now, once again, it's going to be Kawhi here in the driver's seat. Look at the pressure right now. Everybody is dying. Prev is tearing in. That's it. Galvish is going to be knocked out. Three and a half men showing glimpses of opportunities but still look at the defense you still got to get through another divine shield you still got to get through another blessing of protection you still got to get through brain's trinket prev's gonna have maybe void shift again too with the way that this game could have kept going in terms of defense so man Kawhi just layer after layer after layer trying to peel away and get to the core and get a kill but they just can't make it that deep and now three and a half men what are they going to do for the rest of the series because sub rmp i think was kind of their 
or is it their best option? Like this is their best comp, but they're gonna perform the best with. And still, other than that one moment where they got Void Shift, like, were they really supposed to win? It didn't feel like it. It doesn't seem like the sub is too useful in this. It's, it seems like they have too many tools to go through. They have to go through the Protection Legendary on the Paladin. They have to go through two bops, a bubble, Knife A Guardians to shut down. And that's a that's a minute and a half CD. So if you're getting 40% damage reduction on one of the ghosts where you should have to Trinket or you should have to bubble, it seems like this the sub rogue is not going to work out too well. So maybe maybe a switch to outlaw in some of the in in the next game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean we've seen a lot of outlaw, uh, but I, I feel like I mean I do agree with what you're saying there. But uh, before I see the outlaw, I want to see them go completely all out because I mean imagine like here for example if there is a resonator being dropped. Uh, they're gonna have the damage to get that extra little uh, damage that they need to get those cooldowns and also uh, on the rogue swaps they're actually gonna be dead more deadly and that's what we saw in the, in the circuit as well so i feel like if three and a half men if they want to play it safe go outlaw but if they want to try to play this style i i need to see more offense because right now Kawhi, they're prepared for this they they have exactly the amount of defense that they need to stay alive and this is the big swap right there brain almost going down but prev with the trinket with the void shift uh saving the day so that's what i want to see uh just more resonators more more of uh, offense basically uh if three and a half men want to stick with this or just a straight up outlaw swap it does seem counterintuitive to run i think he's running emblem or battle master for this on the sub rogue i feel like if you are going to run sub the main advantage is, is the resonator because it's like just as strong as a bust almost in a lot of cases where you send a stun bust go get a bop and then next time you can send a stun resonator go um and you just got like this extra layer of damage that you can rotate maybe that'll get through the night fey fate guardians but i do wonder if that's going to shake them into playing just a different comp uh, what comps do you think would be good for them at, against shadow priest rogue like having you played it out of the options that three and a half men have like is jungle a hard matchup for shadow priest rogue or anything like that i think jungle would be Jungle is, is normally pretty high pressure, but I I don't I'm not sure how experienced three and a half men are in this specific matchup because it seems like right now right off the bat we're having a you know a classic matchup between these two in the cups they played this matchup in the circuit they played this matchup I think they may have tried jungle at one point and it didn't do too well for them so I'm not sure I kind of agree with Zico in terms of if you're gonna play sub you might as well play resonators because the rogue is playing an emblem battle master nuke displaying a battle master and i feel like with all the cooldowns that Kawhi has they kind of just need they need more pressure on the goes that shouldn't be that scary with a resonator and i think if they're not going to opt to do that then you might as well play the outlaw so that you at least have more defensive gameplay with the with the rogue being a lot tankier too yeah and uh, i mean the clock is ticking here for three and a half man they have some options uh the jungle oh, oh wow this is not an option uh, i mean ha have you seen this upsurge at all i like i, I was not them? expecting this at all no the enhance when was the last time we saw an enhance assassin rogue legion or something yeah, yeah deletion we, cleave is what we called delete it cleave. deletion yeah, that, cleave who that, played it rich called it <laughs> i can't remember who played it I'm not sure that that had to have been the beginning of, of Legion or something. Maybe yeah. maybe Waz's team or maybe a Swapsy or a, uh, maybe a Fabio or something. I'm not sure. It just one shot yeah. people. Uh, will it one shot Shadow Priest Outlaw Paladin though? There's a lot mm. of like counters to Bob. There's a lot of disarms yeah. for the Shaman. There's a lot of like, uh, this seems random. This seems like we're desperate <laughs> to find something because that was so miserable. So like, yeah, here you go. We're going to play this. Rogue in hands. It definitely wasn't what I expected. I was expecting a jungle, but I guess we're just going to go straight into hook point. Maybe my thoughts were off the bat is maybe train the Paladin and just Ooh. try to get through all the CDs, but it's going to be really scary defensively for them, I feel like. I feel like this is going to be a very fast game. Yeah, yeah. I, I think no matter what happens, either three and a half men is going to win very quick by killing something instantly, or they're gonna lose very quick by dying on like the second blind or something. Um, but what? So, so you think that they should go on the paladin and make it kind of a healer race? Uh, on the I'm side thinking if you're gonna line. throw out a ball, a, like a, a complete curveball here, you have to try to go paladin, or maybe just 
hold W and go at Previ. Okay, I right. like it. Let's see what they decide to do here. Fuse is in a sap, so not the greatest start here, maybe. Already being slowed down, getting dotted, and uh, potentially getting stun locked here quite far away from the pallet. They're going to cheap shot Brain and go after Prev, it looks like. Brain is on stun DR, so they definitely can't go on him now. And uh, you're going to see a blind on Kearney. It looks like Prev is going to be the target. Cabbage gets kidneyed. Prev gets kidneyed. Fuse is all over him, though. And uh, we're going to take a look at Fuse's build as well. He is playing that Chain Harvest, so probably playing the Flame Shock build that uh, just gives him a lot of uh, Chain Harvest over and over. But we'll have to see. Even that it gets popped. And this is a Necrolord assassination, so it's not going to be the, the Sepsis. Uh, Brain actually using his human ratio, but he gets uh, he gets uh, blinded on it. So Brain actually getting blinded on his trinket, but Prev appears to be completely fine in this situation. And uh, now, once again, it's going to be three and a half men's turn here to get aggressive, Sid. All right, Fuston stepping up to the plate here for his team. They've been pretty much exclusively playing RMP. And uh, I've been wondering when they're going to include Fuston on the roster. And now as an enhancement shaman, he's getting a lot of hexes onto Brain, which is creating pressure onto Prev. So I would maybe perhaps like to see Kawhi switch some of their attention to Fuse. He's not finding so much crowd control because the pressure is mounting. This is the most damage we've seen so far. But Calvish on the back foot, is he going to fall? Kearney gets out a big he heal. And it's also important to note that Kearney is going on to Paladin, trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brain's Paladin as well. But we're seeing a lot of healer shifts away from the Holy Priest. More Resto Druid in EU, now more Paladin in NA. It's really odd in these finals what these teams have tried to like meta figure out against each other as composition options but Calvish is stunned up by Drake once again setting up for his team Prev in void eruption trying to do lots of damage towards Calvish siphoning down Fuse is trying to kill it so that Kearney can get some heals and stabilize Calvish Calvish really wants to connect the Vendetta he's going to throw it on cooldown hammer of justice on brain no trinket they really need to get a dispersion here so far only getting a fade as Prev's trying to fake interrupts with shadow men hasn't faked either of them just yet the pressure is getting higher and higher and dispersion oh will be forced so fade and disperse on this push they're winning on mana and pressure it seems like the big question for me for three and a half men is how much longer can they stay alive to keep this pressure going yeah let's see uh because right now the pressure on the shadow priest is quite substantial but fuse as well needs to be very careful we've seen uh, shamans get dropped so fast uh, especially against these rogue comps but now brain in a blinding light they're chasing prev look at prev though with kiting he's got the blessing of freedom and the soul shape smoke bomb no trinket out here for prev what is he gonna do he's a one percent no hp sundering and they the do him they, did they did they, uh, did bop, sack the they sack the seed they sack the seed oh prev will blossom back to life here they bought the seed as well i believe I'm not sure, but Prev will come back. That was absolutely nasty damage coming in here. Beautiful smoke bomb play here. But can they keep it going? Fuse versus Prev. It is going to be a DPS race. Calvish as well getting cleaved here uh, in the midfield. And uh, we're going to see offensive bop here on the Calvish. He smells blood in the water. Cloak of Shadows coming in. They're going in for the kill. Brain trinkets out. Do they have anything more for Brain? Prev so low. 20 seconds left before he has that dispersion. Chain Harvest coming in. Big damage. He uses the Battle Master. Brain in the back line trying to keep him alive with the big heals flash of light coming out there and that defensive line on the fuse is enough to slow them down and now drake getting aggressive on the calvish kearney though with a beautiful uh, ultimate sacrifice right there onto calvish and that's going to allow him to stay aggressive looking to chase down his target calvish and it looks like uh, he has a blind ready as well uh, i'm not sure actually what happened to his blind there but he did use a blind right there might have maybe instantly broke or something but that's going to be a big problem for him prev getting blasted here once again using the greater faith to get out of the static field totem well done by prev trying to hex. get some cast out full hex onto brain what else can they get here fuse though dropping super low as well kidney shot not the fuse the side being doing a lot of work here for Kawhi, fuse still dropping dangerously low here currently not in crowd control what is he going to do he's got wings active and he will top fuse he gets mind controlled calvish is going to be the one who takes the damage now he gets blinded Kearney's in a full blind Kearney bubbles out with the wings to keep his team alive but i would say Kawhi now looking like they're in a great spot they got dispersion back and they got some more cooldowns to work with here let's see what they can do the fey guardians are down and now absturge's strategy here might be coming into into fruition they're going after the healer they're making it into a healer race can they they win it though Sid uh they're, they're really close to this uh, I mean another kidney shot on brain is probably his trinket if they stay on him Calvish is stunned up though Kearney is peeled away now Kearney is crowd controlled it's Calvish is falling behind fuses healing him up with some healing surges while trying to make it back to the siphon to kill it off so Kearney can stabilize divine favor big heal from Kearney Calvish gets popped back to full evasion is up for him he's getting some uptime but Prev has so many cooldowns I think Prev is a bad target Prev is Calvish evasions but he's at 10% insane healing coming out onto him but now fuses rotting down that shadow freeze pressure 
starting to really tear in. Kearney manages to recover his team. No, maybe not. Hammer of Justice on Kearney. Calvish ducking for cover as Drake grapples over to end game number two. He gouges Kearney. He's dealing so much damage to Calvish. He's trying to get aggressive. He cloaks at 10%. Can Calvish stay alive? He vanishes from sight, avoiding the damage for now, but Houston just gets swapped to. Drake is blending both targets. Kearney has zero mana here. Dampening has just started. They go for the Hex. They're trying to find a miracle here, but Prev has so many answers. He greater fades. He has Dispurge, and the Chain Harvest comes in from Fuse. Brain answers it with the Avenging Wrath, and Prev is able to hold on to his Dispersion. This is devastating right now for three and a half men. Kidney shot onto Kearney. They need to find a way to run Fuse out of mana or crowd hold control on. him. He's basically the healer right now with his remaining mana. Calvish on the run, blind defensively onto Drake. No bop for it. Calvish is getting oh. aggressive. They're pushing for the Dispersion here. Are they going to smoke bomb it? They pop Vendetta. They're baiting Dispersion. Are they going to bait it? It gives so much damage for Brain to deal with. He needs to be careful. He's caught in a hammer of justice. I think there's no way that Prev doesn't disperse here. He's at 10%. It's 6% dampening. Brain's in a full blind. How is he holding on to the dispersion right now? One second left in the blinding light. Brain has Avenging Wrath, but no mana, but he's reversed it with a blind onto Kearney. Fuse now at below half. Is he going to die? Yes, it looks like it. No, a sacrifice blocks the kill from Kearney at the last possible second. What a nail-biter game two. Absolutely insane, but Fuse now in a kidney shot. I think that is it. How is Kearney going to keep him alive? He will not. The gouge denies him. And Kawaii moved to match point, but this was ugly. This was not the Kawaii that we know, the clinically clean one. They had to battle it out from the bitter grave here at one point. Uh, Pop getting that seed, the proc onto, uh, onto Prev, getting the sacrifice on it, getting the blessing of protection, and barely, barely uh, resurrecting him, essentially and then able to uh, take the win there. Uh, very, very closely fought match here by both of these teams, but Kawaii looking like that same beast that we saw in the circuit season, and uh, they're going to do it with that Rogue Shadow Priest uh, Pally again. Now, Absturge, did you see anything special here that caught your eye? Uh, anything strategy-wise or targeting-wise or something? Honestly, I, d I did not expect that game to go like that. I think we all were kind of caught off guard with the enhanced assass, <laughs> but running down the Priest... It seemed like it was working well for them, and I, I'm not sure if I'm... I mean, honestly, that game was really close, and if you look at the damage here and the the healing done by both teams, three and a half men in yellow, Kawhi in purple, the damage is all over the place on the top of the screen. I <laughs> I thought that was a pretty high-pressure game. I thought it was going to be maybe a two-minute game, but it seemed like three and a half men, they, they did have some opportunities there. They had the... They had a few chances where Brain was zoom at the end. They were even on mana throughout the whole game. They got just they had a few moments where Prev was just holding on and had fade really soon, but just kind of have to. I'm not sure what they can do different besides just try to play a bit cleaner, maybe try to go for the pally earlier because that game looked closer than I feel like any of the Rogue Mage games they've ever had. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. And that when they swapped the brain there, when he had no bubble, when he was very low there. Uh, that was so scary and this was also scary look at this this is two minutes in and brain divine shields bops and sacks the seed he, he literally sent his whole spell book to keep that uh, seed alive and if it wasn't for that i mean they would have never made it to this point in the game where they started to uh, get that pressure and they were starting to actually run it down and and, and get those wins and this was uh, i believe their uh, ending of the game uh, Prev with the Fey Guardians was able to kind of stabilize throughout that entire push, re reverse the pressure back onto Fuse, get a lot of pressure onto Calvish, and then when that sacrifice times out for Fuse, uh, it is uh, lights out for him. So, uh, very very beautiful game here, honestly, from both teams. It was only six minutes long. It felt it felt a lot longer than that for some reason because everybody was just dying all the time and there was just constant pressure. So, um, I'm sure the players feel like they aged uh, a ton in there as well. <laughs> I'm worried about this comp though for a reverse sweep. Like it's good in that. It seems good in that matchup uh, with how much pressure. I think their blunder was not switching to brain. Like they got both Bob's and Bubble. And I think his trinket was on cooldown too at that point after the seed. And they just tunneled the Shadow Priest who had every cooldown. And it was like, kill the Paladin and hex the Priest at that point. No, I feel, I feel like that would have been way better for them um, to cut the line faster and, and just shift the CC onto a different target. So there's obviously room to explore with this composition because nobody ever plays this. Uh, last time we saw it was Legion. How many years ago was that? Man, I don't want to remind myself how old I'm getting. By <laughs> how long ago? Too long ago. Too long ago. <laughs> how long ago Legion was. Um, oh. But yeah, this is a comp that you don't see very often. So this is a great idea by three and a half men because 
Kawhi are a team where like they know what to do against the meta comps. Like the comps that they've played against, they know exactly what to do. You're not going to beat them. So picking something that hasn't been seen in years is going to be a good way of trying to best them. Uh, and it looks like we are going into the exact same matchup on Dalaran sewers. And let's see if three and a half men can surprise us. I'm just hoping for the. I want to see more Shatter Priests and maybe potential swaps. Okay. I think that's the goal for three and a half men. Yeah. Well, let's see if they can do that. Three and a half men right now on match point. They picked Dalaran Sewers. Very small map. Running it down with that deletion cleave. And uh, this time around, Drake is so good with those. Uh, he just hooks in and immediately saps here because it is important to slow down the momentum. The momentum is very underrated. Like if you can get a stun onto Fuse when he's far away from Prev. That is a good way to start the game. And they're going to stun Fuse to get a blind out to Brain, stun out to Kalvish here. So Fuse actually uh, in a bit of a dangerous situation. But Prev, look at him. He's uh, trying to stay alive, but Brain sitting through a blind sap. Hodge, there's no way Prev doesn't use something here, right? He uses Desperate Prayer, uses the Fey Guardians. Is that really enough for his healer to sit through a 30 second CC chain? Uh, absolutely fantastic work here by Prev, staying alive now uh, with the power infusion as well, getting uh, very, very aggressive here onto Kalvish. Silence onto Kearney, big damage onto Kalvish. He might just get dropped in the opener. Kalvish trinkets gets feared on his trinket there. Uses the Cloak of Shadow. Uh, actually, it doesn't use this Cloak of Shadow, uses the evasion. There's the Bop on the Vendetta, and uh, that's going to be a much cleaner trade here. Just Bop the Vendetta early. Uh, it's a very uh, typical uh, trade to make for that Holy Paladin. And uh, we're going to see now Kalvish once again getting disarmed. He's got no trinket and he, he could just get dropped. He needs to be very careful. And Prev doing a great job as well. He constantly positioning away from Kearney. If Kearney wants to come and heal these melees, well, he's going to expose himself to uh, being in the open. And that's when oh, Drake kicked. can get blind. That's when Drake can get a gouge like that. And then that gouge into a kidney. And this is where a lot of their pressure comes. Now they force out Kearney's human racial. Now they blind him. Uh, so they're just keeping up with this. If they can get a sap as well drake he vanishes and saps it on the last second into a uh, dr sap potentially no not able to find it but good pressure nonetheless here on the calvish big kidney shot here coming out they have the pressure do they have a silence or something it doesn't look like it but they do get the clip of shadows and once again uh just goes to show how important it is to position well but now kearney uh, in a hammer of justice prev though is the one taking the damage you get a fear on the kearney calvish still dangerously low here with nothing available no sacrifice as well he might actually get dropped here huge damage smoke bomb gets edged by drake he's going for the kill he gets blessing of protection and that's going to be another big cooldown out of the list now they swap over to fuse to allow prev to continue his pressure kawaii in total control right now yeah, this is not even close compared to the last game. This is the thing with Kawhi. You gave them one game to learn, and look how much they've improved. Kalvish is getting destroyed. Full blind on a Kearney. Is he on forbearance here? If he doesn't have a way to escape this, this is dangerous. Fuse lands a double sunder. He's on the run. Is he going to be able to escape, or is he going to short circuit oh. as Kearney needs to get some big heals? Divine favor. A 10% gets a flash out, and Fuse manages to stay alive. Now it needs to get aggressive. They still have Divine Shield on the back. Uh, to try and stay alive for a push. I, I'd really like to maybe see a strategy change here. The Shadow Priest is just looking way more durable. Maybe throw hexes onto the Shadow Priest, do damage to Drake, run Brain out of mana, mix something up here because Prev has readjusted to this composition and I'm not sure that this strategy is going to continue to work for them. They're kidney shotting Drake at the pillar. They're desperate. They know it's back backs against the wall. They lose here. They're going to be sent to tomorrow in the lower bracket and face elimination. So they're just going to cling to life at the pillar. Kearney gets denied on his fleshcraft, gouged up. Brain is charging in, hammers down. Kearney bubbles immediately, but it's overlapped with Kalvish's evasion. And they overlapped stack earlier with Cloak. We can see them both coming off cooldown in 24 seconds. These overlaps are causing three and a half men to fizzle out on cooldowns much faster than they otherwise should. Yeah, and uh, that could be because Kearney is uh, playing on his alt here, or it could be, you know, the nerves. Uh, we're in the finals, it's match point, uh, but regardless, you can't be making mistakes like that. We're going to see a kidney shot onto Kalvish, full blind onto Kearney. Do they have a sap for it? They do have a full sap here onto Kearney. No Divine Shield, Fuse in a world of trouble. He's going to activate the Astro Shift, potential uh, to be enough here, but he might need to combo it with a defensive Shane Harvest. No, Kearney will have enough healing here to keep him alive. Now going after Drake, here's the Static Field Totem and the Stun. Now another 
Irish down onto Calvish and Drake and Prev going after him. They get a disarm onto Kearney. Do they have a silence to follow it up? Doesn't look like it. Kearney's going to come out of CC. Should be able to keep his teammates alive here. Drake uh, dropping quite low here. The mind control fuse here right now while he's getting aggressive. Be beautiful mind control. And they're going to move him to the middle of the map. Kidney shot him in the middle of the map. Nice disarm there by Calvish. Shadow steps in and uh, realizes how much trouble fuse is in. And on the side of three and a half men, I think this is exactly what they need to do. They just need to try to hug the pillar, try to get you know some of those cooldowns back because as of right now, they got literally nothing. They just have a sacrifice currently basically with no mana as well. I think he's trying to sit down for a drink, but um, not able to maybe. No, he's getting a little bit of mana. Drake actually getting blinded here, but Kearney, uh, I think Drake actually was able to stop the, the, the drink there or Kearney. Uh, got stopped by somebody else and uh, he is going to be able to recover a tiny bit of mana but still uh, the big uh, picture here is the cooldowns fuse with no astral shift they're going to be able to get that back they're going to be able to potentially stop some of those breakers for the wings uh, of Kearney as well and this is really where Kawhi need to get more they need to push in they need to get aggressive here and try to get something uh, to keep that lead because uh, if you allow the cleave to reset it can be dangerous later on uh, with that uh, insane amount of burst damage in dampening anybody can win um, so you need to keep that in mind here but Prev in a hex fuse those still just dropping dangerously low Kearney in a full blind into a disarm oh. there the Kalvish fuse both of them just getting double, double kill right kill. now sacrifice onto fuse and that's going to be a defensive chain harvest coming out uh, keeping them in the fight but uh, the pressure from Kawhi is just insane right now Super T's yeah, let's see if Fuse can power up here because they're going to need a lot of damage if they want to swell and overcome Kawhi because there's a bubble, a bop, a sack, a disperse, a fade, a fade guardians up in a minute. Like, there's so much defense. You got 10%. You got sliver of mana. You're on match point. Oh. Kearney pre flesh crafts the CC, immuning it, getting some heals onto Fuse in what could be the final moments of this upper bracket round. Our three and a half men going to be sent down to the lower side. Brain is stunned up. They're desperate. They're swapping to Drake. They're trying to pull off a miracle, but Brain is ready. Avenging Wrath up. Big heals incoming. And look at their team. All of them are getting oh, rotted fear. down. Massive damage. Double stun. Kearney breaks out of it and saves them. I cannot believe he saved them from that situation. I thought it was over with the triple fear. I thought it was over with the stun. But Kearney actually blocks the kill for another opportunity. Another shot. But really, where are they going to shoot at? They're going after Drake. Trying to take him down in a kidney shot, but if your only opportunity is killing the outlaw rogue, probably one of the hardest specs in the game to kill. I'm not sure if that's a good opportunity. Fuse mind controlled way into the distance. He's not able to get any maelstrom during this time to be able to heal up his teammates. As Kearney is just line of sighting, waiting for mana, waiting for holy power to poke through and get a vank hammer. But Fuse is down at half health. Kearney bops out. He gets a big heal with the Avenging Wrath. Kidney shot on the Fuse. He needs to keep him going a few more seconds. And it looks like he is going to stabilize him. Now they swap back to Calvish. He's ducking around the corner. Brain is charging in. Brain and Prev want to end this match. They're getting aggressive as a team and charging forward. Fuse is on the run. Calvish gets swapped to. Drops in a huge chain harvest. One second before getting silenced. It could have been the end of the game there. That silence was one second and faster. Calvish Cloak of Shadows. He's on the run. Kearney is blinding lighted at this point. Kawhi are absolutely dominating three and a half men. They are just minutes maybe away from closing out this game. Fuse walls at the last second and somehow pulls himself back from the brink time and time again. These miracle workers from three and a half men. Prev is down low. Double blinding light. They need to get dispersion or a kill here. They have to get a major cooldown with this. They're not finding it. And once again look at the team. They're just decimated Everybody's dying. Kearney's behind the pillar trying to holy light. Fuse is trying to get Maelstrom. He's dropping healing stream totems to try and support, but there's such limited mana. A full blind, but they break oh, the, they blind. the blind. They broke no. the blind. This is a big opportunity. Kearney fleshcrafts. He gets kicked out of the way, but he could just die and he will. Oh. Kawhi close it out. Even with this composition switch, Kawhi immediately adapt and overcome. That's really. Oh, that was just. Sorry, go, I guess they just adapted. Kawhi, Kawhi adapted just really quickly after the first game, and it looked like at first they were kind of caught off guard like everyone was from the Enhanced Rogue, and second game they played a lot better, and it seemed like three and a half men just didn't know what to do. They didn't know who to hit. They started hiding behind the box, hitting the Rogue, but as Super T said, you, if you're going to tunnel an ally Rogue at the pillar, I'm not sure how much pressure you'll get that way with a free casting Priest, too. Yeah, I, I think you hit it right uh, on its head there. Um, Kawhi just, and that's the thing about these guys. That's why they're so scary. They they just seem, whenever we see like a best of five get played out, it's Kawhi is always the team that 
improves more during that best of five than their counterpart. And I think that's really one of their big strengths. Um, obviously, they're phenomenal players. They have great comps and all that. But I think one of the really underrated things about them is that they're so good at just learning the matchups as they go and making those adaptations. And they don't seem to, you know, like... Uh, they seem to always be on the same page too. Uh, like they all kind of seem to agree on, okay, this is what we need to change. Uh, yeah, let's do that. And uh, all of a sudden, it just looks like a completely different matchup. When we saw this matchup the first time, uh, it looked like Kawhi was about to lose in two minutes. And if it wasn't for that C, they would have lost in, in literally two minutes. So uh, just crazy to to think about. And uh, you got to give it up to, to Kearney as well here. He's playing an alt spec, but uh, basically uh, working some miracles here with no mana left. It uh, can't be easy for him, healing a cleave uh, in this uh, scenario. But they're doing a great job, and um, at the end of it, they're just uh, too much pressure. Fuse doing what he can to stay alive with those Shane Harvest, but Kearney just has no mana left. They're just out of resources. They're out of time. If you're a cleave, uh, I mean, it depends a little bit on what kind of cleave, but if you are this, if you are this type of cleave, most of your wins are going to come early on. Um, rather than later, Kearney gets blinded uh, just for a second, and then they break it, kick him, and uh, take him out. And um, Kawhi going to be moving up to the upper semis. Uh, pretty expected, I, I would assume, from most of us. Yeah, I mean, it really no surprise there if you take a look at the the history with this team and how long that they've been kind of playing at this level, especially with the, I don't know if it was mentioned before that game, but Kawhi versus three and a half men. It's been like a 5-0 win record between these two teams. Three and a half men, obviously very, very strong, very good players individually, and they held on for a really, really long time but uh, they weren't able to get that win today. So maybe we'll see a rematch between those two teams. But that being said, three and a half men uh, knocked down to the lower bracket. And we are now going to be seeing Team Liquid versus Cloud9 face off against each other. We're going to send another team down to the lower bracket. Uh, stakes are pretty high with this one as well. We mentioned it in the beginning of the day. The seeding of this, the seeding of the cross region tournament determines, uh, is determined here in this, in this tournament right here. So... Um, there's a lot on the line, especially when you're up against two teams like this that have been complete powerhouses in North America. So, Zubatiz, what do you want to see from either side here, Team Liquid and Cloud9? I mean, Cloud9 have been preparing pretty much, I would say, Rogue Mage Priest with Outlaw. Um, but at the same time, Team Liquid have been preparing, like, counter comps to that. They've been, like, in the laboratory on the lab trying to use different <laughs> classes together into some sort of monster to beat RMP. Like, you got Double Outlaw, DK Outlaw... Like maybe maybe they even try Red Outlaw um, with Mez on Red at some point. Like they they have some weird comps that they can throw in that Cloud Nine might need to adapt to uh, and maybe change their comp for. But I'm imagining Cloud Nine Rogue Mage Priest game one, um, and then Sidu's team could be really anything. Mm. Yeah, it, it's definitely curious to see what they do bring out in the blind tournament or in the blind. Game, sorry, I was talking with Chun Li just a little bit, asked him how his, he and his team was feeling. He said that they were feeling good. Obviously, they've been practicing like everyone else, uh, but didn't want to be too over content confident because Team Liquid, uh, according to Chun, is going to be his most uh, difficult competitor. So we'll see what they can do. But Absurge, you've played against both of these teams. How, how did it feel going against them? I mean, it's always hard. When you get to the top of any region, it's always going to be the most difficult thing. It doesn't matter what you think, how confident you are. You could have a good matchup, but you go into it and all of a sudden the nerves come up and all of a sudden they're playing a bit better than they were in the war games. <laughs> and then you're sitting there and you're like, oh my goodness. Uh, okay, so is, is this matchup not as good as we thought? So I think as Super Tease was saying, Team Liquid, they, they have way too many comps. I think C9 has played a lot of RMP, but I'm very curious to see what comp they throw out exactly, whether it's going to be the double outlaw like we saw in the circuit or just the unholy DK and Mez can, you know, press abomination limb and kind of run people over. I'm very, very curious. Uh, is that is that a common thing, Absturge, that uh, teams uh, kind of sandbag a little bit in uh, in the war games and then all of a sudden when you fight them in, in the AWC, they're playing way better or like a bit be or like noticeably better? Is that a common I wouldn't thing? say it's I, I wouldn't say it's is common in the sense that they're doing it on purpose, but I think it depends on what happens, right? If you're gonna war game somebody at two in the morning and they've been playing for six, seven hours, right, you don't get the best performance, and then you fight them on tourney day, you know, they've had time to warm up, they've had time to prepare, time to sleep, and the game is a lot more difficult than you thought. Definitely have had that happen to us a few times where <laughs> 
we've had a few matchups and, and it's like, well, uh, is Stuckleave not as good as we think? Or are we playing bad today? What's going on? Oof. Oh, well, well, we'll see if any surprises happen here in this series coming up. It's Team Liquid and Cloud9. They're the upcoming quarterfinals. So this is an upper bracket series. Um, and then the winner of this one, obviously going to be moving on to Kauai. But do you think, Zico, in your mind, like, does Kauai continue to be just untouchable in this region? Honestly, I think uh, in NA, it's going to come down to Kawhi and Team Liquid. Uh, so that kind of gives you my prediction for this match as well. I think if Cloud9 wins, Kawhi is going to be cruising it to the finals. I think if Team Liquid wins, I could see a world where Kawhi drops to the lower bracket. Honestly, both of those teams are pretty evenly matched. I think Team Liquid has decent comps as well, and they're, uh, they have a good RMP. So I could see Team Liquid maybe taking it 3-2 to two if it comes down to it, or Kawhi taking it 3-2 to two as well. Either way, I think it's going to be close, uh, and probably one of them is going to the finals. Yeah, I think that's definitely a good guess. So we'll see what they can do here in this upcoming match. We are going to head to a break. When we come back, we're going to continue on in North America with Team Liquid versus Cloud9 coming up next.
Welcome back, everyone. We are going straight Whoa. into the game. It's Team Liquid versus Cloud9, game number one. What's on my screen? <laughs> what yeah. is that? You know, you know what? C2 actually, <laughs> you know, it was interesting is C2 actually anticipated this composition. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of their best bet. Uh, I don't think this is a matchup they really have practice. And Team Liquid is one of those teams where they put a lot of practice into the compositions that they're going to be fighting, and this might be a really awkward matchup for them. Not going to have basically any practice. Nobody cues Windwalker Outlaw, a very unexpected pick coming in from Cloud9 in game number one, and Wealthy Man making his debut on the Outlaw Rogue as well. This should make for a very <laughs> interesting series. Yeah, and that also gives it away that Cloud9 has double rogue in their arsenal. So it's uh, going to be interesting to see what Cloud9 has brought out for this competition. But there it is. Paralyzed onto Sidu. Can he shout out to Mez? They're sending it. Big damage coming out from Flop. He's actually playing that Divine Ascension. Mez still disarmed, taking a lot of damage here. Sidu had to use the Guardian Spirit right there to keep him alive. And I mean, the scary thing about Windwalkers is that they die very quickly. But the other scary thing about Windwalkers is that you can get absolutely dusted. And here comes the CC chain. Here comes Cloud9. What are they going to do? doesn't look like they actually get any damage whatsoever there onto Chan. And now Sidu in a kick. Chan is there channeling the Fist of Fury. Chan rolls over. He gets the Paralyze. Look at Flop. He blinks over for the fear. Trill tries to deny it, but he's too slow. Mez in a disarm. Using no! the magic challenge. He's, he's dead. dead. He's, just, he's just dead, dude. He's dead. Mez is dead. What? <laughs> what? He's actually dead. They lost what? That's not even a minute into the game. He's dead. What? Windwalker no. LL. I feel like we were talking pre-game before the show, and Ven was talking about like what comps he can play right now as a Frost Mage and a Windwalker. It is like a very Windwalker <laughs> DK, but I don't know. Maybe Chun Li is about to show us a new comp in the game, a never before seen. I don't think any uh, right? Uh, never yeah. before <laughs> seen. Windwalker Outlaw. Ah, uh, is that true? Wait, didn't somebody play? They played Was Fury like Outlaw. Oh, that was Fury Outlaw. Okay, yeah, Windwalker Outlaw, not something we've seen, but this is actually something Chun Li's been talking about. He actually, Ooh. yeah. He's like, we should cue that sometime. I think it's a good comp. <laughs> and, and now they're just playing it and, and winning. True. So, really, really crazy. What, what's a good comp name for this? Like, because immediately that's the first thing that comes to my mind. It's like, like what about walking the plank? Oh, my God. Because it's like you got a windwalker and you got to uh, walk into plant. And you can add a cleave at the that. end of it. Yeah. I don't yeah. mind it, honestly. It's a definitely a contender. <laughs> it's, <pretty good. laughs> right. it's a contender. Chat, let us know what you think. And uh, while you're at it, don't forget to scroll down to the reward section and, and, and click on it to get your uh, fearless spectator. Just saying. All right, uh, let's talk about the game. What, what, what do you guys think about this uh, 35k DPS uh, spikes that we're seeing here? Is that the highest today? Wait, 35k? That's pretty almost 35k. Like, ooh, yeah, I guess they did manage. Yeah, Team Liquid managed to get up. It's got to be like any bombs <laughs> limb or something like that. But... It's not my. It's not my guardian's 20k DPS. Okay. So... Yeah. <laughs> it's getting there. Um, <laughs> I, I what's crazy about this comp is the is the double disarm, right? Like they can both disarm yeah. the DK, so the DK just can't death strike the whole game. And that's yeah. what killed Mez in this replay is that he was just disarmed. So he can't use his primary heal, which is Death Strike. The main counter to the to a Death Knight's defense is a disarm. And his comp just has two of them. Uh, and Kid? Mez just dies. So he gets kidneyed, no trinket, no IBF, right? So he can't Death Strike, can't AMS, he can't do anything. Sidu's trying to heal him really far away right now. The Sephiria are flying. Sidu gets paralyzed. They purge off the Holy Ward. Flop blinks in, gets a fear. And then Mez, grapple weapon right when they fear. So Sidu can't heal. Mez can't heal, and Chun Li just gets the biggest rising sun kick, I think, right here. Boom! Just 30%, and then procs him into touch of death. <laughs> Two hit combos him. So, excellent CC chain there. Great coordination. Nice utilization of uh, utility that counters the Death Knight class, basically, here uh, from Cloud9 in game one. And this could be a series that's decided by the blind pick. Definitely could. I, I kind of feel like Team Liquid needs to just play double outlaw. Um, honestly, Playing Windwalker Monk, like I basically, I have two different experiences on my wind, uh, on my characters. Like on my mage, when I fight a Death Knight, it's very sad. But on my Windwalker Monk, you can actually get revenge. I mean, if you get procs and you can actually disarm him so he can't Death Strike, it's a lot of prevented kind of defense um, and something that the Death Knight really relies on. So having two of them is kind of just like a counter pick into Death Knights. It feels like so. I like this comp option coming in from Cloud Nine, but I do feel like Team Liquid has some different answers. Uh, that being said, I 
don't think they can play it. I know Samus are playing Demo Lock. I don't think you can really play a Demo Lock into this. What do you play? RMP? RMP. Yeah, RMP would, would be. Yeah, it's got to be the RMP. Bad. Yeah. Did you change shirts? Yes. We had a wardrobe change. Oh. <laughs> I felt like that mixing it up. Thanks for noticing. Trying a little bit too hard, okay, Ben? You're making us look bad now, okay? You're trying a little bit too hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but yeah, can you dress down a little bit? Can you go wear something else, man? Like this is embarrassing. You know? uh, I felt like I was being outdone on the desk, so I had to mix it up, you know, <laughs> try to fit in. But uh, yeah. now Abstergs feels bad. Again. He was so happy that he had the same outfit as you. Now you've changed. And now he doesn't have the <laughs> oh. same as you. All right. Well, we do see the answer for Team Liquid. They're patented double outlaw rogue. So we're going from <laughs> the outlaw Death Knight to the double outlaw rogue no. Cloud Nine. Continuing with their Windwalker out loud. Now, how do we feel like this matchup's going to go? I mean, <laughs> this looks scary for, for Chan, I, I would say. I think he's going to be in a lot of stuns. But do they actually have enough? Because I think the Windwalker, I would say, weakness is that you die in the stun. But I don't know if you will die in the stun. Like, do they have enough burst with this comp to actually kill him in the stun? Um, I guess we'll see. Um, so I, I, don't, I, I think RMP would have been worse actually to go up against because uh, of the extra burst and there's no anti-magic zone or, you know, like when you fight a Windwalker DK, there's like 10 things that they can rotate to extend the match uh, to deal with the combust. But here there's really nothing like that they will just have to eat it, you know, um, or preemptively like karma or, you know, like stuff like that. So um, <clears throat> we'll see. I think Cloud9 actually has a shot uh, with this matchup, but... Uh, the thing I wanted to talk about is that we're, we were talking about it during the game number one. Wealthy Man making his debut on the Outlaw Rogue. And for those that don't know, up to this point, Chun Li has been the Outlaw Rogue, and Wealthy Man, of course, has been the Mage. What does that mean? We might get to see our first double Outlaw Mirror uh, if Cloud9 <laughs> loses here. If they don't have another option, we might actually see a double Outlaw Mirror. That would be something. <laughs> that would definitely be something. Um... <laughs> I actually want to see it, to be honest with you. Yeah, me too. I feel like everybody does at this point. <laughs> like, what even happens in this situation? Like, yeah, just everyone's kidney shot and blinded the whole game. <laughs> everyone's just hands off keyboard. No one can play their characters. <laughs> oh, man. For some I reason, wanna... I'm picturing, like, Tasmanian devils fighting each other. Like, if you took a Tasmanian <laughs> devil and just duplicated just it four times. Up the whole and they're, just, yeah, they're just AOEing each other like this <laughs> the whole story. time. <laughs> That's what this looks like in my mind. Uh, this game might honestly look like that with Chun-Li on the Windwalker Monk if he's getting yeah. enough spinning crane kick procs. This is spin to win cleave right here. Both these teams just going to AOE each other with Blade Flurry like it's BFA Mythic Plus with Outlaw. <laughs> just cleaving down the trash. I mean, this is either going to be really damp or just the most crazy thing you've ever seen, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Because these classes do the highest damage, but also like take the least. So it's like the immovable object meets the unstoppable force here um, between both sides. And this could turn into a double outlaw mirror uh, for the rest of the series, maybe, uh, between these teams. Now that Wealthy Man is stepping up to the plate on the outlaw row. We're five seconds away for the gates opening for a matchup that quite literally no one has ever seen in the game ever, whether it be on the ladder or in a tournament setting. So if you're here in the chat, uh, you're definitely seeing history being made. Sidu is sapped. That's a great start here for Cloud9 if they can find some crowd control. They're going to actually swap to Sidu. It looks like Bone Dust is down. Leg sweep for follow up. Chun Li gets peeled with a cheap shot on his Storm Earth and fire into a full fear on the images. Nice shutdown between Sam I am and Sidu. And now Trill's ready to pounce. Waiting for a sap maybe out of the fear. Isn't able to find it. He's immediately grappled as Chun Li lays in with Fists of Fury flying onto Trill, just blasting him down. Now, Wealthy Man getting swapped to his evasion and faint trade for him. Chun Li's going to Fort Brew to tank out the initial assault. Sam gets pulled away from the blender as every time both of these teams get close to each other, they're going to be shredding. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at this point of the game, I can't tell who's really ahead. Chun Li still hasn't had to use really any defensive cooldowns whatsoever. Sam, I am and Trill are getting cleaved down quite heavily. Kitty shot now into Wealthy Man. A defensive ring of peace trades out by Chun Li to kind of bolster the defense of Wealthy Man. A full blind now on Sidu. 
and a stun on Sam if Kiefer's is available for Chun-Li. That's really going to be the scary moment in the match. And I honestly, I see some synergy here. I mean, the consistent damage coming in from Wealthy Man. If he can lock someone down in a stun and Chun-Li can just throw in a Kiefer's with his Bone Dust Brew, he can just one-shot Sam I Am or Trill if they're not able to get a preemptive feint on it. So a lot of burst damage available for the Windwalker Monk, some of the highest in the game. It's just going to be up to Wealthy Man to make sure he can keep this Windwalker alive and kind of set him up with a stun. Yeah, I really don't like this uh, pick from Team Liquid. Um, the double outlaw, I, I don't see them having enough damage to kill Chun, but I do see Chun, like you mentioned, have enough damage to take somebody down. But Chun did have to use his trinket here. What's the man that killed each other? Going after Sam I am. He's taking huge damage. Paralyzed onto Sidu. Can they get any more damage onto Sam? He's going to duck for cover behind the pillar. Wealthy man uh, getting disarmed here. He's got two rogues right now that he's fighting. Sam I am and Trill and Chun Lee. Everybody's just in midfield working a blender. Wealthy man going for the kidney shot onto Trill. Chun getting the Fist of Fury here, trying to get some damage going on to Trill and Sam. I am actually doing a great job cleaning here, and Braun gets called in into the fight. Nice Ring of Peace by Chun there. Beautiful stuff. Uh, stopping the grapple hook there, and now Chun just kiting, waiting for the stun DRs. Wealthy Man, though, taking a lot of damage here from the double outlaw. Sidu and Flop, both quite low on mana, but Sidu with a big lead. Sidu using the Fey Guardians. Flop actually preemptively Fey Guardians the blind right there. Sam I am in a blind of his own. Sidu looking for some heals in the back lines. Chun potentially looking for the paralyze here's the bone dust through here's the storm earth and fire now, who is he going to dust there's the spinning crane kick proc and sam i am will survive there with that nice uh, leap of faith there from cdu but uh, still good pressure coming out here from cloud nine can they keep it up though is the question trill and uh, not taking too much damage pre-karma there on the kidney shot and uh, disarm as well on the trill so they're not going to be able to bust that karma wealthy man getting chastised on sam i am now in a kidney shot chanley looking to connect do they have the damage here cdu spamming flash heals to deal with the pressure and flop now in a full blind chun with no touch of karma they're going after wealthy man wealthy man some full kidney Trill gets disarmed, pre-grapple here by Chun. Chun now in a mind control, but Wealthy Man will survive with Flop uh, being able to sit that blind. Now, uh, Chun again here, pre-diffuse magic on the kidney shot, ports away. Actually, no, uh, just going to get uh, aggressive here out of that stun. He's going to roll back to his healer, and I do believe Flop wants to sit down and drink. If they can get a double leg sweep, uh, which is up in two seconds here for Chun, that could be a moment where they can get aggressive. Immediately, the Bone Dust Brew coming in, Storm Earth and fire for chan he's looking for the sweep they're stacking up you go for the fist of fury i do believe flop's trying to drink but he gets blinded trill in a paralyze here and uh, chan just trying to stay alive during that blind nice uh, ring of peace there, trying to deny the sap but uh, not able to get it disarm onto sam i am wealthy man kiting chan lee kiting and it looks like cloud nine will survive this fight as well now looking to get aggressive here onto sam i am Let's see if Sidu's ready for it. He's got Holy Ward up for CC, trying to get heals, but fully blinded. Sam evasions. Trill has faint for a swap. Wealthy Man into the kidney shot, making a swap over to the rogue. Is Flop ready for any grips? Wealthy Man away. Chun Li's trying to tear in with that spinning crane kick. They power infused Chun Li. Can they take down Trill? He's going to pop faint for the Fist of Fury. Mind control onto it to try and stall its connect. As Sidu is trying to recover, but he's caught into a kidney shot. Chun Li is just getting destroyed right now. Trades on Touch of Karma. Goes for a Bone Dust Brew swap on the Sidu. Gets the Desperate Prayer. Wealthy Man is critically low with Evasion up. He's at 10%. Is he going to fall here? He could dip into a Death Range extension for Sidu as well. And is Sidu running the IQD is what I'm wondering. Because he might be able to get yes. a snipe and execute if he is with that. Uh, but now caught in the leg sweep on DR. Is he going to die in a DR leg sweep? Doesn't look like it. As he gets Guardian Spirit onto Sam. Reconnecting over to Wealthy Man, kidney shot on flop. Mana is slim here, 10 seconds away from dampening, and they're going to be working with nothing from this point as healing gets lowered and lowered. Wealthy Man dismantled, unable to connect. Sam, grapple weapon by Chun Li. Just so much crowd control on both sides here as they continue to disrupt each other. Paralyzed onto Sidu, Trill evasions, dodging all the attacks. So Wealthy Man's caught in the kidney. Flop grips him to the pillar. Trill chases after him with the grappling hook, looking to close out the game. Chun Li fists of fearing with turbo fists, trying to snare and pressure both Sam and Trill. Sidu's going to have to heal two targets up from this, costing the rest of the mana that he just got back. Sidu pre-fades, anticipating a chastise. Not sure if he hit it or not. He didn't, as he is now caught into a chastise. Flop in position, gets a full fear. Trill, no evasion for another minute. One second left on the fear. Can they take down Trill? Trill vanishes out from sight. and manages to avoid the attacks long enough for Sidu to get out of the fear. Now he gets kicked by Wealthy Man, though. Trill is down at half, trying to grappling hook out of the fight and away from the cleave. As Sam gets paralyzed, double leg sweep could be another swap. Looks like they're targeting down Sam. No trinket for 50 seconds. Sidu gets gouged away. They break the gouge just with some cleave damage, and it's still too close to call. 
Uh, this is such a crazy game. Very back and forth at this point. Both these healers, mana, almost completely emptied. We're at 7% dampening at this point of the game. Chun-Li, Trill, Wealthy Man, Sam, all kind of just cleaving each other down. Wealthy Man going to be going for a Vanish. So we're going to reset the Kidney Shot or the Blind. Gets the full Blind onto Sidu into a Paralyze. Is there anything else that's going to be Wealthy Man having to play extremely defensive? And he set up their burst here onto Sam if they can. If they can land a st stun on Sam, if Chun-Li has the damage, they might be able to actually drop him. He's the one without a trinket. Spear hand strike, there it is. Diminishing return, kidney shot. Really not too much going to be going down. Looks like Chun-Li will commit his Bone Dust Brew, but just not enough damage to really take him down at this point of the game. And uh, at this point, I would say Team Liquid has a commanding lead in terms of pressure, but Sam almost gets one shot, going down to 10% health. Really scary moment, and now Sidu has basically burned through all his mana. He uses the Fey Guardians to try to Ooh. recover just a little bit. Here's a stun setup. Sam I am in a triple DR leg sweep. Unfortunate. Flop's actually going to be going down for a drink. This is massive for Cloud9. This recovery from Flop is just so important. Team Liquid very far on the back foot. Beautiful pre-Guardian as well. pre fay Guardians there on the blind and Flop playing a very clean game so far. CD now trying to sit down for a drink in the back line. Wealthy Man shuts it down. Flop with a slight, barely mana lead. CD's trying to sit down for a drink again, but Sam gets kidnapped. He's forced to stop the drink. Trill now getting blasted here using Cloak of Shadows, but it's not going to be enough potentially. He's going to go and grapple back to CD. Can he stay alive? The Wealthy Man in the disarm right now. If Wealthy Man has a kidney shot, anybody could fall or at least have to use his trinket here. Let's see what they can get done. Wealthy Man in a fear by Sidu. Trill in a paralyzed by Chan. Chan smelling some blood in the water. Wealthy Man in a cheap shot. He goes for the turbo fist. He gets kidneyed. No trinket out. Sidu in a full blind here. They get the sap as well. Trill might go down here. And uh, he has the evasion to try to deal with the situation. Sam I am trinkets out. Trill disarmed right now. Taking a lot of damage here. Chan now swapping. Here comes the spinning crane kick. Sidu. How is he going to stay alive? He's a 1%. He gets feared. Touch of death range. Almost going down. Gets the desperate prayer in the nick of time there. Sidu also with the guardian. Bear hanging on the kidney shots flop and it looks like team liquid are running out of options here i don't know how they're gonna win this sam i am in a paralyze no trinket on him if they can just connect one stun onto sam that might be the end of the match Chun now in a blind this guy with power infusion is so ah! deadly but wealthy man dropping dangerously low they don't have a blind for flop flop gets kicked though beautiful kick there but a beautiful gouge by e wealthy man. can he stay alive though he's trying his best flop in the kidney shot i don't think he's gonna be able to wealthy vanish man, one HP. he gets hp he gets the vanish back of course down and he immediately shoves it now trail on the back foot this is anybody's game still who is going to take it here 23 percent dampening full blind on the c2 trill evasion sam evasions sam's evasions down they punish it kidney shot no trinket c under the blind grip sam away chun lee rolls over to finish it they just need to get him into touch of death range and they can close this game they're so <laughs> close to it look at the damage everybody is dead on the side of team liquid but they stun up wealthy men they're turning it around guardian spirit blocks the kill for now is it going to be enough they procked it but That's now sam could die three seconds away for c guardian spirit one second away but flop blinks in aggressively Sidu pre fades his fear, anticipating the crowd control, but Flop held on to the fear. He's chasing him down, trying to get in range. Trill is stunned up, knocked away, That's and it. torn out of this game. Cloud9 moving to match point. What a surprising matchup. Whew. What is happening? This game is just. <laughs> my heart was racing. I'm just watching Trill's down to 10% health, Sam's down to 10% health, Wealthy Man holds on for 20 seconds at 5% health. I mean, this was just really too close to call. Cloud9, though, with a beautiful performance. They are able to get the win in the end. They're up 2-0 in this series. A very surprising composition. And I'm really wondering what Team Liquid is going to do. I feel like even if we saw them lock in the same comp, I definitely wouldn't count them out. I mean, that was just such a close game. Uh, you get the feeling they could definitely win this matchup. What if they mirror them? Yeah, they can mirror them as well. Uh, <laughs> that's what's so interesting about them. But my goodness, let's just talk about this game for a second. That was some of the most insane. That, that was that was was that the closest game we've had today, guys? I, I, I think it's got to be right. That that could have gone either way. That it really could have. Wealthy man, I don't know how he survived. Like his healer got kicked. He was on ten percent HP. He has a rogue on him. How does he stay alive? I, I have no idea. And Wealthy Man, we haven't even seen this guy play Rogue, but <laughs> he looks like a Rogue main.
I, I swear, he looks like a rogue man. He's just coming in here and uh, just absolutely crushing it. And Chan on the Windwalker, just uh, great swaps to to Sidu as well. And uh, this is kind of what we were talking about as well uh, with the, the comp of Team Liquid. It's lacking finishing power, whereas Cloud9 don't have that issue. They have a Windwalker. He can just delete anybody uh, by himself, more or less. I mean, you can see it right here. Look at Sidu getting crushed here. I mean, the fact that he didn't get touch of death here and get deleted is just... I mean, there was one global off, you know? Um, so, and this is Wealthy Man. Look at Wealthy Man. Here's a kick on the flop. Wealthy Man gets gow uh, gets a gouge off on Trill as he kicks him. And then he drops to one HP because his battle master falls. Sam I am connects. And Wealthy Man pops an evasion. Faces both rogues. Stalls for his vanish. Immediately pops it when he gets it back. And uh, just for a second there. And then he gets the Fey Guardians. And he's able to survive. And then at this point... Uh, it's just uh, there's so much things happening at once. Uh, Chun so yeah, goes after Sam, who has no trinket. Chun gets stunned. He trinkets out. And then he gets kidneyed again. And they're going after Sam. He's running. He's trying to get aggressive now with a kidney shot. Trill is trying to get aggressive here. Chun is going in with the turbo fist here, I believe. Uh, or with the leg sweep, actually. And uh, shutting it down. Going after uh, Sam after Trill trinkets. Wealthy Man almost dying there. He dropped to one HP right there. Uh, but he caught a heal. I think he actually they proc the Guardian. I think he got the Garden and they procked it immediately. So Wealthy Man basically uh, just barely hanging on there. And uh, yeah, they did proc. The Look at that. It pro Flops Guardian procked right there. He literally Guardian him on one HP. And that was basically the last heal that Wealthy Man got right there. Yeah, ring of peace. And uh, just, just beautiful. Chun Li is my favorite player to watch, I swear. Like, I'm a bit of a Windwalker fanboy, but. You, you, these are just things you love to see. I mean, really, the only we haven't really seen too much when Walker. We did see Trill a little bit on it, um, but yeah, the beautiful um, and this composition very unexpected. None of us would have guessed that this was coming in, and that's what's so great about these finals, though. Like the little bit of a break we had from the circuit going into the finals gave these teams such an opportunity to prepare all these different compositions, and uh, you know, it's it's just crazy to see. I, Completely unexpected results. Cloud9 up 2-0 right now. One away from sending Team Liquid down to that lower bracket and earning a spot in that upper finals. I, could, uh, I was going to say, as Cloud9, I actually think you should blind lock Outlaw RMP. Just so that like Team Liquid's not in the headspace. They're in like, a completely different headspace. And then you can try and counter with the Windwalker later if you want to. But um, they're going to go to hook point. Same comp. Um, there's three pirates on hook point, though. <laughs> no, we're ever going to see this many pirates on hook point ever again really unless there's a rematch between these teams later on in the <laughs> tournament um but what an unexpected turn of events almost every team almost every team has surprised me right like out of the teams that could surprise us like kungana and casual dads i didn't think had anything that could surprise us but like the success that <laughs> sk gaming had the success that uh, cgn esports had in europe now we move into North America and we see like three and a half men playing Enhance Rogue. It's just like, what happened in this last <laughs> month that everybody was gone? <laughs> like, I don't get I don't get how we went from only RMP, only jungle to this, well, but I mean I'm not gonna complain. Yeah, definitely can't complain about that. But it's like these teams are they're desperate, right? <laughs> they're in a moment of desperation. The RMPs are farmed. desperate though. Like what is yeah, going on? Yeah, now the RMPs are desperate. Now they're the ones that are having to mix it up and play something else. But it's just crazy to see. I mean, both these teams could play Rogue Mage, but they're opting to play something else. And I mean, it just evolves from Team Liquid with their Outlaw Rogue on Holy Death Knight, I think would beat anything. Like, that. I think that comp would beat anything where Wealthy Man is on Mage and Cubsy's on Warlock. So any mixture of Chun-Li on Melee plus Wealthy Man on Mage or any combination of Cubsy on Warlock uh, plus Chun Li on like Outlaw Rogue, for example. Uh, I think they just lose, so that's why they had to come up with this, and they needed an answer for the Death Knight, and uh, I think they found it. And now Team Liquid is trying to figure this out because I don't think that they really calculated this is even an option Cloud Nine had. Am I am I the only one who thinks that RMP would be a good pick here? I mean, they, they gotta have some data here. They gotta have War Game did or something to not lock it in. But I feel like on paper. RMP on like a medium to big size map, it looks super solid and Liquid's RMP is super solid as well. So I'm personally a little bit confused why they haven't uh, decided to go with it. Uh, maybe they have war game data and it just isn't that good of a matchup. Maybe the mage gets shut down too much or, or dies or the priest gets all in. I'm not sure, but um, I, I would have liked to, uh, to, to know uh, 
uh, why they don't lock it in. Because uh, on paper, uh, that like w when I think of outlaw rogues, like successful outlaw rogue comps, it's usually the comps where it's an outlaw rogue plus something that can close. So I'm thinking Destro Warlock before it got, uh, you know, heavily nerfed. I'm thinking Fire Mages. We've seen it with uh, with Fury Warrior. Um, we've seen it with DK. You know, like somebody who can pack a big punch. I, I feel like you need that with an outlaw because an outlaw on its own, it's durable, it's annoying to deal with, it's kind of a bruiser who just stays in your face the whole game and just makes your life miserable and has a lot of crowd control. But if, if there is one weakness, I would say it's the fact that they don't have basically what we saw in Legion with like plunder armor one shots, you know, they don't have, uh, you know, a big uh, killing spree or something, a big sh uh, shadow dance. They don't have something like that that can just uh, take you out of the game like a vendetta. Um, and that's where the Windwalker actually has an advantage because Windwalker is squishy, but he, he's, he's like a glass cannon. So if you get a kidney and you have a Windwalker connect on the target, that target can absolutely be deleted. But I don't think the well, same thing can be said for Team Liquid. It's just long CC chains and kind of grinding somebody down. That I was going to say, outside of like a Fire Mage peeling for you, and maybe even better than a Fire Mage peeling for you, is an LR Rogue. So if they do go after Chun-Li, you're going to have a wealthy man dealing with counter kidneys. He's going to be able to gouge. He can dismantle. He can blind if the situation is dire enough. So the extra added defense and peels that the outlaw rogue brings, it actually makes a lot of sense. And honestly, Chun-Li's mm -hmm. not going to die. Unless he gets hunted out in the stun, he's not going to die. He can just portal away. He can use his Fist of Fury to avoid all of the incoming damage. And he actually has a reasonable amount of durability. Um, so I don't actually think Cloud9, especially Chun-Li and that monk, is really that vulnerable in this matchup uh, with the Holy Priest and Outlaw Rogue backing him up. And that's why I think it's working out so well, even into this composition. But let's not forget, I mean, <laughs> we had a lot of like 1% close calls, Wealthy Man barely yeah. living. I think this is an even matchup. And I really think the team that plays a little bit better is going to ultimately walk away with the win. Uh, if Cloud9 does, they're closing the series out. Team Liquid, they got a long road ahead of them. They got to win three in a row. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. This is anybody's game. This is uh, uh, definitely a close one, but they're going to have to see you immediately here in the opener, Chan. Uh, Trinket of the Gouge? No, he Trinket's the blind, uh, but he does get feared on it. And uh, that's going to be uh, it. They're just going to use the blind. He's going to trade it for the Trinket, but now Chan can be a target. They could uh, potentially kidney him. Uh, oh, big damage to Trill. What is going on? Trill just gets deleted with a spinning crane kick proc. And Chan with the Fey Guardians almost going down through it here. Big damage here from both teams. Teams, but Chan appears to be completely fine. He gets a touch of karma to get a full blind onto Sidu. Who are they going to go after? Flop sitting through a blind sap as well. Sam, I am uh, trying to deny, but they do get the sap there onto Sidu into a full kidney shot. They're still chasing down Sam here with no cloak of shadows. Both rogues still having trinkets. Evasion getting traded out by both rogues. Sam also had to use his cloak though. So Sam with a little bit less defense than Trill, but Chan is the one in big trouble. He gets the Guardian Spirit. Kidney shot on Flop into a full fear. Chan still in a lot of trouble. They broke the Guardian. How's he going to Stay alive here, Chun. Ba barely holds on. Flop actually has to use his IQD there to keep Chun alive. And now there's a massive opening here onto Chun Lee. Unless they can take down Chidu right now and try to equalize the pressure, I would say Team Liquid are looking good in this one. I don't know if they changed their strategies, but they definitely look a lot cleaner. Am I am though with no cooldowns left? Needs to be careful. There's no Guardian as well. Could get taken down immediately. Full blind onto Flop. No IQD available. Chun with nothing available as well. Needs to just kite. If they catch him with a kidney, it might be his last kidney. What a beautiful port what a beautiful fresh flesh craft and now they will connect here with the kidney but now flop is out of crowd control and this is why ben says chun is his favorite player to watch because of things like that i think it's the small map here chun li is just way easier to target down trill and sam are always in range of flop for crowd control and also able to connect to chun li at the same time so team liquid maybe out picking themselves in turn of terms of map in that last round or maybe just inexperienced with this Particular matchup because it's looking a lot better here on hook point look at chun li hugging the wall with his own ring of peace so that the rogues can't connect to him trying to navigate through this sticky situation as flop activates the fey guardians to stabilize him during the kidney shot wealthy man keeps trill at bay trill's going to kidney shot wealthy man away and reconnect on the chun li does he have a fist of fury here he's going to try and preemptively fist of fury a kidney shot and it looks like sam's grapple weapon he's going to he's going to grappling hook away a lot of grapples in this game uh, as Flop gets put into a sap, Chun's on the run once again, not wanting to be a target. Rolls over to Sidu, 
Looks like they might want to set up on the Sidhu again with that IQD. I think going after him is a great idea. Double leg sweep. Let's see if they can drop Sidhu. It's match point. He trades out Guardian Spirit. Is it going to be enough? He's chastised as he tries to escape. Double gouge on the chun -Li and Wealthy Man at the same time. I've never seen that before. Sam grappling hooks out of the fight with Vanish. Trill evasions as they swap over to him. And Sidhu has managed to survive another swap. They didn't proc the Guardian, so no big openings there. Flop. Is trying to still grind towards his another minute away. Apotheosis up for him. It's kidney shot on it. Sam in the kidney. He pre cloaks, although, I mean, how it was cloak going to be here for the kidney shot? Not too valuable. Trill and a paralyzed. Wouldn't maybe like to see like a paralyzed into kidney to stop one of the rogues from fainting or something like that uh, in a swap? But before dampening, I think Sidu is their best target. Uh oh. Yeah, I uh -oh. mean, right now we got a full blind onto flop into a gouge. But chun -Li doing a really good job kiting. They're really not able to capitalize. A big setup here on a Sidhu. And I believe Samai, he actually had to trinket to try to save Sidhu. Sidhu in desperation, calling for his rogues to actually trade a lot of their defense. And now Samayam could be very vulnerable. If he gets caught into a stun, like you said, maybe he gets paralyzed into a kidney shot, into a chastise on Sidhu. Samayam might just get one shot. Can he live? He gets gripped away. A beautiful so beautiful defensive moves there by Trill. Actually peeling up Chun-Li with a blind, now into a kidney shot. But those are the setups you want to see. Just a gouge or a paralyze on one of the rogues with crowd control on Sidhu. Check into a stun on the rogue. That's exactly what you want. And uh, if we see those rinse repeat setups coming in from Cloud9, I feel like it's going to be devastating for Team Liquid. Oh, they had a blind there, but they kind of threw it out. Wealthy Man, what is he doing? He's trinketing out uh, uh, kind of offensively here, uh, but he does get disarmed on his trinket. They're not able to find too much. Samayam uh, has no trinket, and Ciro has no human racial. They got a full kidney shot. Let's see what they said today. Fear Trill, who are they going after? They're going after Samayam. Here's the leg sweep. Here's the big spinning crane kicks. Ciro in a mind control. Can they take Sam down? No, he connects with the Guardian Spirit before that mind control. Nicely done there by Ciro, keeping his rogues in the fight, but Sam still with 50 long seconds left on that trinket and two minutes on that evasion he has his cloak of shadows at least but a lot of physical damage here and they're going after cedar he's in full kidney that's it cedar there's nothing i can save him unless he's playing that res legendary which i don't believe he is team liquid getting dropped here three zero by cloud nine this is something that nobody expected but cedar he's still playing he might have the res leg goal no nope. uh he does not have it and uh, team liquid here uh, honestly shocking because uh, like we said in the pregame, Team Liquid uh, as well as Kawhi are at least my favorites to win the entire thing here, but Cloud9 coming in, showing that they are well prepped and this is a team that started out very slow in, uh, throughout the Cups and then during the circuit they started to pick up some steam and now we're starting to see Cloud9 kind of reach that old uh, level that we've seen from them throughout the years. Where did they find this, man? Like, I've never seen this on the ladder one time. Like, no no one has played Outlaw Windwalker. Nobody played Assassin Enhance <laughs> either in the series before this. So it's like, it, it, is this actually prepared? Or they were just literally just like today, just like, yeah, play Windwalker. <laughs> like, what? What? I, I don't feel like I've even seen Wealthy Man practicing his Rogue on the ladder. I feel like I've seen them practicing, like, Cubsy's Demo and Cubsy's Ellie and stuff. Like, what? Who were they wargaming that they crafted this composition? Because it looked so good into Team Liquid, just at least for the, the comps that they played. Although maybe they, again they outpicked themselves. Maybe just RMP was the comp that they should have played in the matchup. Um, regard, regardless, Chun Li, Lop, and Wealthy Man with a phenomenal performance, the debut of Wealthy Man's Outlaw Rogue, and he's looking just as good as everybody else has been playing it for like the past two or three months. So, man, Cloud Nine is a beast and will they pull this composition out against Kawhi in the next game is something that I, I'm somewhat wondering I feel like a paladin maybe not as good into a windwalker as lots of counters for their defenses and stuff like that um, but maybe they got a different curveball I, I am so surprised and impressed by the teams here in the finals um, with the creativity that's coming out so far I mean, you can see the final moments of the match as well. Sidhu just goes into the stun. And correct me if I'm wrong, but he is playing the IQD. So, yeah, he's going to have a lower stamina. Um, it's going to make him susceptible to those swaps uh, with the key for Skyreach. It's a massive amount of damage that Chun-Li is able to put out. And uh, just a clean sweep. I mean, I don't think many people... To be honest, I don't think many people expected much from Windwalker Monks. Uh, but Chun-Li, uh, in defiance on his monk, uh, was able to get a 3-0 here. And I think it sends Team Liquid back to the drawing board. They obviously got to focus on their matchups for tomorrow. 
Um, uh, but they know what they're walking into there. Uh, but they've got to figure out something for Cloud9. You guys might be right. It could just be as simple as just playing Sam on the mage and just playing RMP, and that could have been a win. But they won't be able to tell unless they get that rematch uh, sometime tomorrow. Yeah, they don't really have a lot of time either. Between now and tomorrow, they're facing elimination now that they have dropped down um, to the lower bracket. So pressure certainly on for that team. We'll see what they can do as we catch up with them tomorrow on Sunday's games. But Cloud9 versus Kawhi, that's going to be the game coming up next, and it's the very last one as well. Semi-finals for North America. Loser of it will be dropping down to the lower bracket. We'll see that conclude tomorrow. And winner will be moving on to the finals. And I do want to expand on that just a little bit, Super Tease. You mentioned it briefly like how that composition that cloud nine seemed to pull out of nowhere how it's going to do against not only Kawhi, uh, but maybe some of the other composition compositions that these teams could be bringing to the mix um ven or zico do you have a comment on that Ven, you got a comment i was waiting for you after you friend too polite, too polite. <laughs> i just i wanted to hear you can't both, ask so a just... canadian that zico you can't you just have to take <laughs> charge like he's never uh... gonna he's never gonna do it uh, I mean, I, I don't know. It's it's uh, it's tough. Uh, a lot of a lot of these teams. I mean, they, I think some of these teams honestly just they already had some of these things like in mind, or maybe even like secretly practiced. But they just uh, they're they're holding on to it for when it really, really, really matters. And uh, I, I think we're gonna see more uh, surprises for sure. I mean, today alone has been just crazy. Uh, when you think about it, there's been so many uh, uh, new comps that we we've seen like in different expansions but we uh, even some of them that we haven't seen at all uh just kind of come in and, and and rise to the occasion so it's been it's been awesome yeah it is it, it definitely has here's north america uh we also saw europe earlier this morning but this is kind of how we got to where we currently are Kawhi cloud nine the match that i just mentioned is the last one of the day and as you can see their winner of it moving on to the finals and then We've got an elimination round set up for tomorrow, a three and a half men versus Team Liquid. Um, I have no idea how that could go. Does anyone want to take a stab at it? I mean, three and a half men, you know, they've got a pretty solid RMP, obviously, and then Team Liquid just could really play so many different things. Like, what do you think their best route is? Is double outlaw Zico the answer for three and a half men? I'm going to be honest. Uh, at this point, I have like a 0% prediction rate for this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah me too. Right, all right, all right. It's just like straight up. It's it's actually <laughs> insane how, how wrong I've been and how every series seems to be an upset. So how I don't know. I've been. They can play triple outlaw. <laughs> they can play whatever at this point. I don't even know. <laughs> I think I think it's one of those really interesting matchups because I do feel like Team Liquid has a lot of answers for rmp if you want to call it that they have the dk with Mezon dk uh with the demonology warlock that's something that they've been practicing a lot they have the outlaw rogue death knight i think both of those are very kind of difficult for rmp to play into and it could be a winnable matchup i think that's kind of where you see uh, three and a half men practicing some of these cleaves right they're playing the assassination rogue with the enhancement Jungle. shaman they need some answers uh for these teams the demonology warlocks not uh, the shadow priest for example so we'll see uh what they decide to pick tomorrow but I, I do think it'll be a really interesting matchup and i do think both these teams are going to run um you know something that isn't just rmp mirrors for example I think you're absolutely right, Elliot. That being said, let's head to a break. Let's get to that very last series of the day. Determine who the winner for or who what team will be the first to make it into the grand finals will be. It's Kawhi versus Cloud9 coming up next.
Welcome back, everyone. It is the very last match of the day. It is Kawhi versus Cloud9. One of these teams going to be dropping down to the lower bracket. Carl, I'm going to hand it to you. You you just got back. What's your take on this? Honestly, today's been full of surprises. I don't know. We're seeing Resso Druids. We're seeing Enhanced Assass Rogue. We're seeing Outlaw Windwalker. I didn't think C9 was going to win, especially 3-0, but I mean, I, I'm definitely impressed and I, I can't wait to see what we see now because I'm want i very curious to see if the Outlaw Windwalker continues to look as impressive as it did in the games against Liquid, mm -hmm. against, you know, the Shadow Priest Rogue, because I think Shadow Priest Rogue is pretty durable and they're very good at trading out the CDs, but I don't know. Chun is going to, uh, Chun is just popping off right now, so maybe he'll continue that. Yeah, I mean, he most certainly is. We saw Cloud9 face off against Team Liquid, and they sent them down to the lower bracket. Now they're here against the hardest team uh, in the region, probably is Kawhi. So, Ven, I mean, what do you think? Is this Cloud9, Is there, are they playing good enough today to beat Kawhi? I mean, I think so. Um, I think that whenever these two teams meet, it's always really close games. Um, Kawhi, I'm kind of curious to see what they lock into the blind pick. As well as Cloud9, like his Cloud9 is going to keep, you know, kind of riding the momentum of the Windwalker Outlaw Rogue and just have that as kind of like a surprise composition. I mean, that I mean, it's honestly in, it's an insane advantage if you have a composition practice like this that actually happens to be good and nobody has any practice into it because you kind of have to just guess uh, what is going to be your best option. But no, they're actually going to be playing. This is really interesting to me. They're actually opting to play with Wealthy Man on the Poor Outlaw Chun. Rogue instead of Chun Li. So they have a lot of faith in a Wealthy Man on that Outlaw Rogue. Uh, he's obviously nice and warmed up on it. And this should be a really interesting game number one between these two teams. Kawhi locking in kind of their bread and butter, the Shadow Priest Rogue Paladin, and Cloud9 bringing a bit of a surprise with that Demonology Warlock here in game number one. I guess Wealthy Man's the new main rogue for Cloud9 here in the Grand Finals, breaking him out. Now Cubsy tagged in on Demonology Warlock, going head-to-head -head with Kawhi, who have remained undefeated in the North American region for so long. Can they manage to pull off a win? Awesome pressure right now in the opener from Cloud9 with crowd control on the brain into a chastise, pushing deeper and deeper, maybe for the kill. Brain gets the sacrifice off onto Prev and keeps him alive during the first assault. This is an amazing start for them. They still haven't even got a tyrant off from Cubsy in this position. And they can start to lay waste at any moment. Yeah, I mean, where is all that damage coming from in the opening stages of that match? They get the trinket from Brain. There's a full kitty shot coming in from Wealthy Man. He's getting a lot of control of this match. Tyrant's going to be summoned. It gets immediately gouged. But at the same time, Prev has to run away. Really scary moment here. That tyrant is nothing to mess around with. He's going to go ahead and grip Brain to the pillar. He gets chastised into a gouge, into a kitty shot. The crowd control is just never ending here from Cloud9. And Prev is forced into the dispersion. An amazing offensive push there from the side of Cloud9. All these small little crowd controls eventually. I mean, Prev could just outright die. This is absolutely crazy. I mean, where is this pressure coming from? It's just Wealthy Man and Pets. Uh, and Prev is just taking unhealable damage for this game. Wealthy man in the squad here with the fell guard just chopping away at Prev, bringing a kidney shot into a full blind. Wealthy man looking like he wants to get in position to maybe resell, but decides to just get aggressive here. Are they going to get any other crowd control? Cubs, he tries to. They get a gouge instead. Prev's interrupted. Brain is crowd controlled. Pressure is mounting onto Prev non stop in game number one. We're not even two minutes in, and it could be the end of the match. Prev is interrupted. Insane damage incoming. Brain gets some big heals, though, with that divine favor. And Prev is back in the fight trying to find his footing and trying to find where they want to go as we see Cubsy porting away when Flop gets stunned, gating into midfield. Flop's still blinded up. This is a big opportunity for Prev to get aggressive. They sap off the blinding light. Nice play by Drake here, continuing the CC, but Cubsy's turning it around with the unending resolve. He's going to be able to free cast a lot of damage while taking less damage, getting double value out of that cooldown in this position, but he's still getting cut down by Drake, trying to soul shape away. His pet died. He gets it, the res off, but he might just die anyways. Insane pressure from Kawhi. Why suddenly turning it around? I don't. It felt like it was so one-sided for Cloud Nine up until this point, but Kawhi put themselves back in the game. Yeah, I mean, definitely that was a really good push. Prev right now with his power infusion up is going to get kidney shot, force and dispersion, and overlap. Oh, the overlap! The overlap is absolutely crazy here, Absurd. Yeah, I just honestly, Kawhi was. They seemed a little off guard at the beginning of the game. They kind of just were behind on CDs. They traded out the disperse extremely early. They're still being behind too. It's not often you see a demon lock going down. Rev, gouge, up, kidney on Drake. Looks like they're peeling, Cubsy retreating. 
honestly, I was kind of surprised to see Cubsy pushing in so hard, but now they're kind of retreating. Their pet's dead again. All right, let's see if they can keep the pet dead. I, I don't think he has a Feldom, actually. I think this is over. Double fear set up by Kawhi. Prev turning up the pressure. It's Cubsy. He's caught in line of sight of the Cyphiend. He's not able to kill it. That Cyphiend is getting so much value on the Cubsy. It dissipates just in time. Flop gets a big heal, but a Demo Lock without a pet is basically a potato. You are not going to be able to do too much here on this class. So if Cubsy isn't able to find an opportunity, he's maybe just trying to wait and stall until he has his Feldom again, but he could get purged on it. He's going to lose the Soul Link. He's going to lose the Mortal Wounds. He's going to lose the added damage. He loses so much. He ports back behind the pillar, and it looks like his main game plan is just stay alive until his Feldom comes off cooldown. Fortunately, he'll have that conduit at max rank, so it should be up maybe less than a minute from now at this point. Maybe he can find a Tyrant, but is it even worth sending? It looks like he has managed to get his Felguard back into the fight at this moment in time. Very critical moment for his side as Weltyman is stunned up. Pressure onto Prev. Can the Tyrant get cast by Cubsy as he blinks away? Drake is chasing him down. Cubsy needs to get out of range and cast a Tyrant. He's going for Hand of Gul'dan instead. He gets kicked on it. Now is he going to go for it? Prev's at the pillar and could line a sight, but Braum actually knocks him back in the midfield by Wealthy Man. He's going to fleshcraft around the corner. Cubs, he gets gouged. He's trying to tyrant, gets kidney shot. He's unable to finish the cast here. Prev goes for a void eruption, trying to take out Cubsy on this push. So evenly matched in game one. Cooldowns reset for both sides. Brain trade sacrifice during this assault. Now Cubsy on the back foot. How is Flop going to respond? He holy wards, anticipating crowd control, and they're just going to trade on any resolve for the power infusion, and also to cast a demonic tyrant. The tyrant is out. Can they crowd control? It looks like Drake may have kicked the tyrant. And after that, what else can they get onto it? They've got fear spam here onto Drake, trying to get control. The tyrant has been removed from the game by Brain, I believe, with that turn evil. Very important for him to be removing that as much as possible. But now the tyrant is casting onto Prev. He's down below half. He's getting blasted so many pets. Just a legion of <laughs> demons chasing him down. Brain is stunned up. Now Prev, line of sighting, trying to shadow man. Wealthy man all over him. Master spell on the fear. Into another fear. Beautiful fear timing by Cubsy on the master spell. Prev is at 10%, but Brain finally out of crowd control. Gets a big heal and saves the day. Now Megalomania for Prev. This is going to be when the Shadow Priest damage is at its highest. He knows he needs to break out of crowd control and connect this damage. He's going after the pet behind the pillar, trying to take it out. So that Floppy has to overextend, or Cubs has to pull his pet away from attacking him. But he's not getting enough damage under the pet, I think, at this point. This Megalomania is getting no value. I mean, this is pretty crazy. Very back and forth. I mean, right now you have Drake trying to create some pressure for his team, but Wealthy Man just all over Prev, and... I mean, if we go back in history, actually, I'll, I'll, that is coming in at a different time. Prev right now forced to trade out the dispersion. They do have uh, a lot of defensive cooldowns still they can ro rotate through. I would say Prev has been on the back foot for a majority of this game, but uh, Kawhi has always had an answer. They still have the Fade. They still have the Divine Shield from Brain. He still has mana left to work with. That being said, Flop was able to recover a little bit of mana and actually evening out here with Brain. We're at 8% dampening at this point of the game. The consistent damage from both these rogues is getting quite high at this point of the game. These healers are really, really taxed. A blinding light out onto Flop because he is increasingly low on health. Catches a big heal by Flop. Still has his unending resolve if he needs it. Prev right now in the middle of the map. Forced to trade out the fade. He needs to get back to the pillar as fast as he can. Kidney shot on Brain into a full fear. Great crowd control coming in from Cloud9. Prev in the middle of the map still. He gets axe toss. Wealthy Man just crushing him on that outlaw rogue. And Prev has no defensive cooldowns left. That's going to be the divine shield and the sacrifice trading from Brain. Kawhi has zero cooldowns left. They are 30 seconds away from that dispersion. This is a nightmare moment, but at the same time, Cubsy's in a kidney shot. Drake trying to close out the game, but Flop is there to block it if he needs. The Fate Guardians are out. They smell blood in the water. Cloud9 moving in. They're on fire today, and they crush Prev in game number one. Cloud9 looking like a different beast so far, and in this upper finals, they do get the grand win, which is going to be massive for this series. Honestly, pretty impressive. C9 coming out again. They 3-0 Liquid. If they 3-0 Kawhi, I'm, I'm <laughs> going to be completely shocked for the day. I'm, I can't lie to you. I This matchup was just kind of wild. I'm, I'm not sure. The beginning looked pretty rough from Kawhi. They were behind on a lot. C9 decided to just push in completely. I, I, I rarely ever see Demo Locks hold W into the pillar, but... They kind of recover. They used a lot of CDs. Their pet died multiple times. But after recovering and playing more of a passive game, it seems like the outlaw rogue pressure and the all the pets from Demo are kind of too much for Prev. 
who's also, by the way, he's opting to not play a Trinket again. He's playing Battlemaster and Proc Trinket, which I'm I'm not really sure if I agree with that compared to having a Relent for all the CC he's sitting, but maybe it's better. Your wealthy man is... <laughs> what? I what? wanted to... This Wait, is actually what I was trying to get, uh, like, mention. I mean, if we go back in time, the kind of the foundation of, like, the original Cloud9 was Channel on Warlock, Wealthy Man on Rogue, randomly, and they played with Cubsy on Shaman. So that was, like, the original Cloud9 when they used to compete. I forgot Wealthy Man actually used to play Rogue for their team, so... Yeah, that's true. They played they Assass, Assass Rogue. Yeah, they played the Assassination Rogue, Affliction Warlock. So it's very interesting to see him back on the Rogue and really putting out an amount of damage. I, I mean, Outlaw Rogues do a lot of damage, but Wealthy Man's pressure on Prev in this game was kind of unbelievable, in all honesty. Is that a mistake by Prev, or is he memeing Wealthy Man? Because Wealthy Man is the one that did this all the time, not not wearing a trinket. I, I'm not I, sure. I feel, I feel like, like that's a lot a of mess Shadow up. Priests have done that recently. I, I know Wiz has done that. I've seen a few on Ladder that do that. And he, Prev I, Prev, I believe, also didn't play Trinket in one of the games. I could be mistaken earlier in the series against three and a half men, but I'm not sure if it'd be good against this comp just because I feel like there is a lot of CC you're sitting, right? Like you're getting kidneyed, gouged, triple feared. I don't yeah. know. The stuns last a while. <laughs> Kidney shots are devastatingly long. If you're not an orc or you don't have a limbless, that's for sure. So maybe a slight adaptation. Maybe he wasn't really anticipating being the target, but in this matchup, who really else would be the target, right? So yeah, nah, I really do wonder if they change it up. That's a good shout. Um, but yeah, very surprising game number one. I think the biggest surprise for me is just Wealthy Man coming in on Rogue kind of out of nowhere. Uh, used to play it a lot in tournaments, but uh, I feel like he's just been mostly mage for the longest time. Uh, now that Outlaw is shining, it's certainly nice to have him on the roster, that's for sure. It's definitely an interesting adaptation because Chun played the Rogue for the entire season, I believe. So maybe maybe he's on a Rogue now just because they figured it'd be better fitting for their team. Wealthy Man plays a Rogue, they can play Windwalker, I guess, like we saw against Liquid. But very interesting to see that. He, he learns pretty fast, I guess, because... That first game, I can't really think of any crucial mistakes. He shut down Prev pretty hard, especially with having only the human trinket. Three minute trinket CD and you're sitting every single kidney shot full duration. I don't know. <laughs> so, would, would you say that's the move or no, not the move? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure because he's playing he's playing emblem and proc, so I don't know if I, I guess he maybe he decided he, he wouldn't that much CC, but Overall, that matchup as Outlaw, it seems like a lot of it just comes down to dampening. So it doesn't seem like you can really kind of be aggressive and try to go for the healer. It's hard to uh -oh. kind of push in on the lock. Oh, the Harvester. Yeah, this, this, all right. <laughs> this happened to us too. Be Kawhi, you, you get one game off Kawhi. You're like, oh my goodness, we got Kawhi. We beat him. Turbo Cleave. Okay. They just yeah, morph that... into a different animal. It's like, oh my god, we finally figured out that comp from Kawhi, and then they never play that comp again, and you have to figure a different one out, and then they morph again. And they morph oh. again with the red outlaw. Red, yeah, yeah. red outlaw. Yeah, they just keep... That, that's, that's one It's one thing that happens with Kawhi, though. It's like, when you beat them, it's really hard, first of all, to even win a game. But when you do win a game, they, like, level up. And, you know, especially if you win two games, then they go absolutely beast mode. So it's going to be a tall or difficult road, even though Cloud9 won that first game. Uh, beating Kawhi in a series, really difficult. They're going to be locking in the Turbo Cleave instead. So Drake opting out of the Outlaw Rogue onto the Fury Warrior, Seralium, a.k.a. the Harvester, has some heavy-hitting Chain Harvests. We've seen him one-shot people in the past. Uh, I wonder how Cubsy is going to be feeling in this one. This is definitely... I believe this is a good matchup because, I mean, certainly it's got to be since Kawhi's playing as a counter, but... Quite a few turbos play into demo locks, and I, I I can't help but feel like this this matchup on a small map, Cubsy's gonna be panicking for his pet. I think a lot of swaps to pet during the goes, and yeah, they just they definitely need to heal the pet. I can definitely see Turbo chain harvest the pet, <laughs> kind of train the pet on the Kyrian spear if he's opting to play Kyrian. It's gonna be hard for the lock to live on this map. I'm getting distracted. There's a spider on my mic. One of those little tiny jumping ones. Oh, I can like, see no, it. I'm I see moving it. away from my mic as it's moving around. It's on the other so side. I don't want it jumping to me. I, I can <laughs> I can see it on the other side. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you're, you're no, safe. You're safe. Yeah, you're, you're... I'm not getting close to my mic until I swat it away. 
<laughs> okay, well, we can talk a little bit about this matchup. I mean, Absurge, you mentioned it. As a Demonology Warlock, not necessarily the most fun matchup. You have a lot of disruption on you, a lot of interrupts, and you're going to be under a lot of pressure. So it's going to be up to Wealthy Man to make sure he's getting some solid peels on the go, really, really good dismantles, um, as well as you know kidney shots and blinds when it really counts. But the good thing for Kawhi is they have a Paladin to kind of back up and shut down some of those peels, right? You could use the Blessing of Protection on a blind to get out of that. Uh, Where did it jump? I think the spider jumped at Supertease. You still there, buddy? I don't know where it jumped. You're I'm more safe. scared than Kawhi is in game two here. Or Cloud9 is. is more scared of you. That's what they say. There's no yeah. way the spider is afraid. It just jumped at me with the most confidence I have ever seen. <laughs> this spider is like, oh, you look yummy. I'm going to jump on you. Like, there's no way this thing is afraid. That's what the turbo's is thinking of the demo log. Yeah, I think so too. Turbo's I don't know feeling where it went, and I'm so scared now. You're okay. going to be okay. I promise. Yeah. You're never more than five feet away from a spider, do you know that? I think I am right now. There's no spiders in my room. It might be in the walls. <laughs> what about when you're in an airplane or something? In the walls. <laughs> okay. Well, game yeah. two, hook point. Let's get back on to a uh, uh, topic here. Kawhi locking at the Turbo Cleave. Cloud9, honestly, on an absolute tear today, bringing in some unexpected compositions. You know, they've been practicing a lot of Mage Lock on the ladder, not opting to play that right now. They also played a lot of Rogue Mage throughout the season, um, and the Circuit, not opting to play that right now. So, bringing in some surprise compositions. Seems like all of these teams are so heavily prepared for these finals. It's been an absolute joy to watch uh, and see, you know, some of the adaptations that they're able to make. And I think Absurge, you know, having those few weeks where you kind of know the exact teams you're playing against and what you need to practice for um it's super beneficial oh it matters a bunch that's why the circuit is always i feel like the true the true telling of who's going to be doing well in, in the in the future cups and tournaments because when you have that schedule and you know exactly what you're fighting you can practice and spend all of your time on war games into that matchup so you don't have to play ladder you don't have to war game and you know trade games sometimes you can kind of just sit there and kind of opt in like liquid was doing where they're fighting eu teams and just get the practice so we'll see how much practice Kawhi gets and as turbo into this demo lock <laughs> it's gonna be a rough matchup i think here for for cloud nine um drake is actually not playing necro lord warrior uh, which is a lot different. Uh, I feel like typically with this, you see uh, Necrolord Warrior almost always as Turbo. So this is going to pin Cubsy down. He's not going to be able to port. He's not going to be able to soul shape. Unless you can soul shape out of it. I know like mages can blink out of it. I, I think you can soul shape if you get the perfect timing on it. How much practice does Cubsy have escaping that? Because it's going to be good uptime during that spear. Trillium sapped up in midfield. Good start here for Cloud9 to just get Cubsy going. He's caught in that first spear of Bastion. Doesn't look like he's able to escape from it. Flop is going to drop a Fey Guardians right before the Hammer of Justice. Cubsy's going to take a lot less damage. He's fishing for Demonic Tyrant, trying to bait interrupts, trying to bait Grounding Totem before going to, into it. Catches a Storm Bolt, Trinkets out. Now Blinding Light onto Flop. Cubsy gets feared and so does his Tyrant. I really like this crowd control usage on the Tyrant. Kawhi's main goal is to just grind damage and stop Cubsy from doing anything. So do whatever it takes. Fear the Tyrant, stun the Tyrant, interrupt the Tyrant, fear the Tyrant, whatever. Get all the pets out of the game, do damage and run flop out of mana. It's gonna be their main strategy. Surround getting a big chain harvest as he comes out of crowd control. Brandon sitting through the kidney shot comfortably. Uh, Cubsy gonna portal away. Drake leaps on top of him. Seralium is pushing forward and Ghost Wolf gets gouged away by Wealthy Man. So just trying to keep control of them as they did trade the Aegis for that Tyrant as well as the Astral Shift from Seralium. Cubsy 40 seconds away from his next Demonic Tyrant, but he's caught in the Spear of Bastion at the moment, and Flop is using a lot of casted heals to keep him alive during this time. Yeah, definitely. Good pressure here on a Seralium, but mana in favor of Kawhi, like you mentioned. So let's see how much pressure Drake and Seralium are going to be able to get. There's a gouge right now on the brain. Drake and Seralium trying to connect. Can they? They catch Cubsy in a Storm Bolt behind a pillar, but at the same time, Seralium just under so much pressure. Wealthy Man and the pets, a classic combination, and uh, Seralium is just getting absolutely dusted here, just taking so much damage. Brain probably can't believe the amount of pressure that's coming out. Seralium now gets mind control, the gouge on the brain, trying to bring him into the midfield. And I, I really, I mean, Wealthy Man, what, what is going on? 
How is he able to do this on this outlaw rogue? Seralium is just dead the entire game. Kitty shot now, now on brain. Cloud9 has tremendous pressure and on their counter comp, Seralium might get dropped. Cloud9 might be picking up game number two. And if that happens, what is Kawhi going to do? I mean, this would be insane, like unprecedented. Cloud9, 3-0 Kawhi after 3-0 Liquid. They're so close to it. A chastise onto Brain. Seralium barely clutches out a heal, but he's oom. He gets a double fear. Brain has to bubble. And Seralium gets the biggest heal of his life from Brain during that one second of time. But the pressure is still mounting. The Tyrant is out now for Cubsy. It looks like it's been controlled for a moment by the turn evil. His Brain gets stunned, has to use another crowd control break. And Cloud9 are absolutely tearing North America apart. I was not anticipating these compositions from them. They were just owning with these oddball comps. The, the Windwalker Outlaw, now the Demo Outlaw coming out from them as they get the last cooldown possibly from Seralium. It's Astral Shift out of the way. They got to get some pressure here with the Spear of Bastion. But no, Wealthy Man's like, I'm going to disarm the Warrior. Kidney shot, the Enhancement Shaman. Nobody's touching you, Cubsy, when I'm in the game. And that's the synergy that Cubsy and Wealthy Man have together uh, from playing for so many years. So Wealthy Man's transitioning that Mage skill over to the Rogue so expertly. He can complete control of the game when his Warlock is in his most dire situation. And now they're setting up for the win here. Seralium's down to half. Just huddling down at the pillar with brain to restabilize they're going after wealthy man they don't want to be hitting the outlaw rogue as a melee cleave he's just going to have evasion and feign up the whole game they've got to push through the pain and get back onto the warlock now they got decent cleave but flop has fake guardians out mortal cold drake away racing intervene seralium during the kidney shot cubsy ports back behind the wall just getting out more demons to his side helping soul shards going for stun locks trying to find some pressure here cubsy gates back into midfield I think Kawhi, though, at this point, are starting to find their footing offensively if they can stay connected to Cubsy. Yeah, let's see if they can do it. The pressure is mounting, but mana still in favor of Flop, surprisingly, in this match. Cubsy right now going to be trying to break out of that spear. Can he get it? No, unfortunately, not able to get it with that soul shape. Will bring him back into the fight. But Drake and a kidney shot, these defensive kidney shots coming in from Wealthy Man, just never even putting them on Seralium, always on Brain for damage or always on Drake to just keep his Warlock alive. It's been very difficult for Kawhi to actually get pressure in this match. Wealthy Man putting out a lot of damage. A gouge now onto Brain, blinding light onto Flop. Cubsy, though, finally the pressure is sinking in here. Axe toss onto Seralium, coil on Drake into a disarm you can just see all the crowd control that they have available now a kidney shot onto drake a mind control on a seralium now drake's just dead what's going on i mean this is absolutely unbelievable cloud nine is playing like a different beast today their crowd control is on point their damage is on point i mean i uh, honestly at this point what is Kawhi going to do brain trinkets the blind into a gouge kidney shot onto seralium can they take him down Brain really has almost no tools left to work with whatsoever. And Seralium and Drake are just getting cleaved. Cubsy under no pressure whatsoever. This is so insane. I can't believe it. They're going to win on mana at this point just by continuing to attack and resting Tyrant on cooldown. Let's see if they can just stay alive that long. Flop is storm bolted at the moment, but kidney shot onto Seralium. He sits through it as Brain picks him up through the stun. Now gouged away. Dropping the Static Field Totem, trying to connect, but he's getting torn apart. Full Fear, he's out of range maybe? No, Tremor Totem comes down just in the nick of time. Big Chain Harvest, healing up the whole team. Flop flies into the air. He's actually playing Divine Ascension. Maybe he thought he was going to be the target. It's Windsheard on his way back down here. Uh, maybe they could swap to him. I don't know if that was a bait by Flop, pressing that Divine Ascension like that, or he was anticipating CC, I'm not sure. Double stun there by Cloud9 as they're pushing for the win. Gouge out of the stun by Wealthy Man. Disarm over onto the Warrior. Beautiful CC. By Wealthy Man, evasioning as well to avoid any potential counter crowd control onto himself during this push. And mana is getting very slim here for Brain. He's fully blinded. No trinkets. Seralium has no wall. Drake's in a kidney shot. Big damage. Demonic Tyrant is out from Cubsy. So much pressure onto Seralium. And Cloud9 are pushing and pushing and pushing wow. all the way to match point. Honestly, that was... Cloud9 is just defying all expectations today. I'm not going to lie. This is ridiculous. I, I think Wealthy Man is just... Wealthy Man is peeling extremely well in a lot of these spears. So if you notice every single spear they're doing, they get the Kyrian spear, they're trained the law, kind of like how Turbo should, but every Kyrian spear, you have a disarm. You have a kidney on the other guy. You have Cubsy coiling the warrior as well. So it seems like the Turbo has to get a lot of pressure on these setups, but... Wealthy Man and Cubsy are just ro 
rotating their stun and their disarm right on the spear. So there's just no pressure outside of the spear go. Or the spear go to, to get a bunch of cooldowns with Kyrian is just not working out. And I'm not really sure what Kawhi can do besides maybe try to land more hexes on the outlaw rogue. I feel like there's no hexes spell on the other team and we're not really seeing any hexes at all. So maybe controlling the outlaw rogue can kind of shut down the outlaw rogue shut down because it seems like every Kyrian spear, nothing is happening. It's looking brutal for Kawhi. I think it could be good. I actually wonder if Brain should play Repentance too. Maybe like Hodge rep the healer and Stormbolt hex the rogue and just attack the warlock with no stun. Something like that. Remove as much many interrupts as possible, maybe like grounding hex. Because right now they just tried to do damage. And it seems like going toe to toe with damage against Cloud9 uh, is just not going to work for them. Because look at this. This is like two people are dead. I think Brain had Sacrifice right here at the end of the game, which is what I'm looking at. So he's like three seconds away. Was he playing Ultimate Sacrifice is then the next question. If he wasn't Ultimate, I don't think it was enough. He is not Ultimate. Uh, so, but I think he had it. Like he could have just sacked here, sacked here, sacked here, sacked here. Okay, if he had sacked there, he would have sacked the blind. It would have been insane. So he couldn't actually sack because of the blind. Um, and tracking the cooldown can be pretty rough against Outlaw. But even still, yeah, at this point, I think he can press it, but it's not Ultimate, so. He just gets kidneyed anyways. He would have had oh to pre sack the blind. Is the only way in that situation. That's ridiculous. <clears throat> I actually was talking to Chun Li a little bit about like what's going on with Wealthy Man on the rogue, and he's like, Yeah, I think Wealthy Man is just the best outlaw rogue in the game right now. After we've been pra <laughs> he said after we've been practicing with him more, I just stepped down and said, Yeah, you're the rogue. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's showing in these games. I feel like Wealthy Man really is playing <laughs> insane. His crowd control, his damage, um, it, it's a joy to watch. And I think it's been a huge asset to Cloud9 so far, giving him a lot of flexibility, right? It allows him to play the Windwalker uh, outlaw composition. Um, but, yeah, for Kawhi, what do we think about the ret comp? Like, the, the Retribution Pallet and Outlaw Rogue? Do you think Ret Rogue would actually be good in this matchup? Uh... Maybe. I feel like the, the red would probably get a lot of wings procs, correct? Because of all the pets and all the small hits from Outlaw. So maybe with a lot of wings uptime from the red. They'd have it, two uh, turn evils as well. For they the, do. Uh... So they can they can never miss out on... Oh, sorry. Demo Outlaw. They can never miss out on turn evilling, turn evilling a Tyrant or, you know, even turn evilling, turn evilling the Felguard. But, up oh, they're opting to Rogue Shadow Priest again. And this was their this face because of the pig, spider. Right? I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm not making that face because of the spider. I'm making that face because of them picking this comp again. I don't know why they're doing this. I'm surprised. Because uh, I feel uh, like they got I don't owned. believe in the turbo. Uh, after seeing yeah, that the game, turbo I don't looks believe bad. in the turbo at all. Yeah. But like, there's got to be something better than this. What about a boomy comp? Oh, I guess they don't, they don't have Your dream fish. is not happening today. I, I just want to see a boomy. They've got a boomy. they got like one of the best boomies in the game and never plays it, man. Like, Can I get a boomkin game, please? I actually what? think Boomkins are good right now. I, yeah, I everybody's know. just telling me all the time how OP Boomkin is, and like that's probably just <laughs> like me. <laughs> nobody just and nobody's me. nobody playing it. Like he's playing Shadow Priest over Boomkin, man. Like I don't know. I just want one game of Prev Boomkin. I'm thinking like maybe this is the game. I like, miss maybe Prev a Windwalker Boomy. He was like the Boomkin you could rely on in tournaments. You know, yeah, you must be like Boomkin. so disappointed. If you was let down now, everyone's just gone. It's like wealthy man on outlaw rogue. I'm like, oh, dang, no more frost mage, huh? <laughs> no more mage. Okay, I don't think you get to complain about mage representation. Okay, Ben, there's lots of mages. Okay? Frost mage specifically. Okay, <laughs> there I feel was. Like I'm pretty happy. Them. I get I get some rogue yeah. shadow priest representation, but no I don't know if I'm happy right now about this. I feel like the first game didn't go too well for them. It's it seems like the first game, uh, the first match on the grand did not go as expected. Or C9 at the very beginning, they played very aggressive, but once they decide to play a bit more passive and have Cubsy stay back, stay max range, port back, max range, it, it seemed like Kawhi couldn't really get any pressure. So maybe on the smaller map is what they're hoping for because this was their counter pick. So maybe Dollaran, they think they can kind of be a bit more aggressive on the Warlock and he can't get away as much. Maybe. maybe. maybe definitely. I, I just my nightmare for this matchup is just like Prev just sitting behind a pillar because I feel like with the way Wealthy Man's playing, it, it's really hard. Um, be, I mean, 
as a healer, you don't really want to be stacked up on your DPS against an outlaw rogue, right? Because he's going to be able to easily get off, off kidneys, blinds, gouges, um, cleave you both down if he needs to. And it seems like Cubsy and his pets is enough extra damage, even when Prev's line is siding, to put a lot of pressure out on the team. So um, I think they have to play this really aggressive. Um, if they want to win, I, I feel like that's kind of what I want to see from Kawhi. Instead of kind of pulling back, I want him to put on the Relentless Trinket to get out of crowd control faster. And uh, try to just like push forward, find the crowd control on a flop if you can. Because um, it seems like the like trying to outlast them didn't really work out. But this is potentially the final game of this upper bracket finals. Kawhi right now, they need to win three in a row. I don't think anyone would have expected a 3-0 here from Cloud9. Let's see if they can get it done. Here we go, match point. Cloud9, this would be the biggest upset. I mean, we've seen we've seen big upsets in both regions. Like, Championship Sunday is going to be insane regardless here. And it is Kawhi. They could still possibly reverse sweep this. They need three wins in a row. Beautiful crowd control initially here by Kawhi as they're isolating Cubsy with a blind. Getting on any resolve already off the rip. Crowd control to follow. Stun into Sun. Are they going to overwhelm Cubsy? Flop finally breaking free and connecting some big heals. Now turning it around. Triple fear by Flop. Who are they going to set up on? I think it's Prev again. I can't imagine they're changing that at all. Prev pre-fades, anticipating the kidney shot. Not sure if he hit it, but Cubsy gets a Demonic Tyrant out. It looks like it's turn evil by Brain. Really important to get control of this Demonic Tyrant as much as possible. It's actually going to have to swap targets. It looks like it might be going after Drake right now. Drake gets stunned up. A lot of pets on Drake. Cubsy just trying to max his damage out here as Prev's behind the pillar. Sap on the brain for follow-up crowd control. They grip brain over to try and break him out of CC, but I don't think it's going to. Prev's likely got to disperse here. He's holding on to it, has to trade it. And now suddenly Cloud9 switching the momentum in favor of their team. Brain is still CC'd. How is he still CC'd right now? He's still CC'd. Prev is down at 20% and Brain finally is able to connect the heal. Cloud9 with an infinity CC chain. I thought they were just going to take away the series right there. This is unbelievable from Cloud9 right now. This is Kawhi. They never lose. This is the team that never loses. And they're about to get 3 0'd by day one wealthy man outlaw rogue. Cubsy coming in on Demonology Warlock. They have been putting so much practice into these classes, having to relearn their roles. Well, they've been playing a melee DPS. Cubsy just playing a DPS. Flop coming in on the roster. Cloud9 have found their momentum and found their groove here in this tournament. Already beating Team Liquid and just one second away from beating Kawhi. They can keep up this momentum. I think they're going to do it. Oh, the fell guard is going to be rechanneled. Cubsy's going to be able to get that off. Prev now going to be under a tremendous amount of pressure. He's caught into an axe toss. Kitty shot on Cubsy at the same time. Why realizing they need to get proactive in this match if they want to win the blinding light now on a flop? Can they take down the pet once again? Get that fell guard down. Cubsy obviously having to channel the, um, his health funnel in order to keep it alive. Full blind now on a Prev. Wealthy man just playing pure defense. Might make a swap over onto Drake. I think Cubsy's pet, did it die again? No, it didn't. It's still alive. So a little bit of a scary moment. Cubsy definitely can't pull it back to him. Otherwise, it's going to get cleaved down by Drake. He's going to get free damage on it. Uh, but that pet is certainly a vulnerability in this matchup. And uh, a little bit of a scary moment there for Cloud9. If they let that pet die, that's a huge opening there for Kawhi. Yep, let's see if they can take out the pet. That's their main strategy. But they're oh, falling slim again here. It's Prev is interrupted. He's going to have Dispersion available so long as he isn't kicked again or spell locked. They silence Cubsy. Triple crowd control by Kawhi. Engaging aggressively onto Cubsy during the kidney shot. But Cubsy's at the pillar. I think out of line of sight of Prev. He has to go after the pet here on the corner. But he's got Wealthy Man all over him. Disrupting this pressure on the pet as well. Cubsy pulling the Felguard back to his team. Charging it towards Flop. A Flop is caught in Hammer of Justice. Drake getting swapped to. Trades out Evasion. Brain actually used his Medallion throughout all of that chaos as well. Major cooldown out of the way. Mana even between the teams. We're not even four minutes in. I can't believe it. feels like this game has been going on for so long at this point. It has been so intense. Flop's Guardian actually procced. A three-minute cooldown on that is going to be devastating. Now having to use Guardian Spirits and Apotheosis chained together to try and recover. I almost wonder if he Guardian on the pet there to try and keep it alive. And that's how it procced. Drake is chasing down Cubsy. It looks like his Felguard is still alive for now. Prev is down at half health. Brain's in a kidney shot. Do they have any control out of it it doesn't look like it brain goes for a big heal with divine favor connects it on to prev prev is pushing forward trying to get aggressive here despite being torn apart for like the last three minutes of this game and flop and cubs here behind the pillar getting a demonic tyrant off drake interrupts it 
holding his damage off for now, but Chastise Fear by Flop pushing for the win here. They've got answers, and Prev's going to respect the crowd control, trade out the dispersion in this instance, but he's actually dying through disperse. They have to sacrifice as well here. Brain's trying to pre-sacrifice the blind, and Wealthy Man is holding on to it. It is so hard to pre sac I should pre-sac the kidney at least, but now with that blind available and no dispersion, when that blind connects, I think it's a bubble guaranteed or a kill. Oh, it's on DR. He I think he broke it and he bubbled anyways. This is insane pressure. MD onto the bubble, into the gouge. Axe toss onto Drake. Prev is all alone and getting cut down on match points. Brain is finally out of CC. Flesh crafts. He gets kicked on it. Goes for a big heal. Now into the kidney shot. Wealthy man with amazing crowd control. But in the meantime, Drake has been building up pressure on Cubsy. Flop has to blink back to him and assist him as he was getting aggressive in that moment. But Bubble's out of the way. Sack's out of the way. Dispersion is out of the way. Big 30-second window. As long as Cubsy can stabilize here and get that Tyrant in 15 seconds, they have a clear win condition to kill Prev. Cubsy is loading up a lot of Soul Shards right now with all these Demon Bolts. Hand of Gold Dance into Hand of Gold Dance. A lot of Imps. He's got the Fell Obelisk down. Gouge onto Brain into a Fear out by Flop. Excellent aggression from Flop. They're going for the kill here. Prev is interrupted. Can Brain save him? Big heal comes out from Brain just in the nick of time. And now Cubsy needs to be careful. He's trying to still be aggressive. He's got Tyrant. He wants to go for it, but Flop's in a full blind. He ports away from Drake. Is he going to get a Tyrant off? He gets the Tyrant. Brain needs to fear this Tyrant immediately. It looks like he gets the turn evil off. A Tyrant gets feared downstairs, out of line of sight. But as soon as it comes out of crowd control, they need something else for it. Prev is just getting destroyed. He's managed to stay alive to his disperse, though, and his greater... I can't believe both these teams have stayed alive. Uh, Cubs is getting pretty close to his unending resolve. Flop's getting close to his Guardian Spirit. We're only six minutes in, and Kawhi and Cloud9 both have a shot. Yeah, I mean, this is just so back and forth. Cloud9 wants this. They want to make it into the Grand Finals. There is so much on the line. $15,000 in prize pool potentially on the line in this matchup if they can advance to the finals. Prev right now in defiance, trying to turn around the pressure. They get a hammer of justice here onto Flop. Cubsy is going to gate away, but Drake is all over him. He cannot count Kawhi out. Not now, not ever in these matchups, but the pressure from Cloud9 is unrelenting. Once again, a huge kidney shot onto Prev. Brain has a sacrifice. He has the blessing of protection. There are tools left to work with, and I think in terms of cooldowns, Kawhi has at least stabilized, but that kidney shot might start forcing cooldowns. Prev looking for a shadow end, not able to find it. His wealthy man is there threatening the kick, but at the same time, Cubsy under a lot of pressure. Psychic core onto Flop. Is there anything to follow it up? A full blind on Flop. Cubsy's going to have to trade out the unending resolve. We have a gouge um, on to Drake as well as a coil on to Prev to slow down some of that incoming damage, but I don't know if Cloud9 is going to be able to recover. Here's a kidney shot coming in from Drake. All three members of Kawhi are trying to close out this game, pushing forward for crowd control. They get the silence on Flop, and they say, no way, not that easy. They put a point on the board, and now we have a series on our hand. Uh, now we're back. The Rose Shatter Freeze comes back. The small map worked out for them a lot. It seems like LZ ported on the Granda quite a few times and got away, but on Dalaran, it's it's a lot harder to get away. You can port, but the Rogue can grapple immediately. He can just run across the map, sprint on cooldown. So kind of amazing to see Kawhi bounce back like that. So now we have a real series. It's going to be good to see. I wonder if there's going to be any adaptations, though, on the part of C9, because now it's their counter pick. Do we go to a big map? Do we see a comp swamp? Do we see some more Windwalker? Maybe make Ven happy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm already Windwalk happy. I feel like Windwalker is really good into the Shadow Breeze Rogue. You, they could play Windwalker Outlaw, put all the Outlaw CC into Drake so he can't peel during the goes and just like attack Rev with no stun. I feel like that would be really good. Just every kidney, every blind, every disarm into the Rogue and just attack the Shadow Priest until he's dead. Well, the Windwalker gets more damage too. You just hit all the pets. You stack up your crane buff. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm curious. I mean, uh, I don't know if they are going to make a change or if they just decide to lock in the same composition. I mean, this was a very close game and it could come down to just map. Cubsy just doesn't have enough distance to actually portal away from Drake in those really, really scary situations. But this is just like the classic Kawhi, all three members running in. It's not at this moment. This is really, really early on in the game, but that was that unlimited crowd control chain uh, Supertease talked about on the brain where it actually got really scary for Prev for a moment. But in the final moments of the game, when we see it, this is kind of like the classic for the Shadow Priest Rogue Paladin. All three members just kind of charging in. They smell blood in the water. They know they have them right where they want them. Cubsy with no unending resolve. There's no trinket available for Flop. 
They go for the crowd control. They go for the damage. Dampening already ramped up to about 14%, and there's just really not that much Flop can do. He just doesn't have the healing he needs to actually keep him alive. And the silence into the diminishing return, blinding light, is more than enough to close it out. So going to a game four, where do you think the series is going, Absurge? What map are we going to? What compositions? <sighs> It's hard to say. I, I mean, I feel like the there's only two options, right? We're going to get Rogue Shadow Priest again, possibly as a blind, or it. I guess that'll be their blind pick, but it depends on what C9 plays as well. I feel like C9, they have two options. They can either play a small map themselves, maybe hit up the Windwalker Outlaw, or they could play a big map and try to play Demo again. But it seems like that game was a bit sloppier from C9. They played the game extremely well the first time, but... The second time around, they let Guardian proc. They kind of overlap their wall as well on Cubsy. So maybe a bigger map. They can kind of work out those kinks a little bit. But I feel like the options here are it's either one or the other. A small map melee cleave or a big map and try to get more distance and try to make sure that you're getting their tyrants out too. Because it's really easy for Brain, on, especially on these small maps, to kind of just be in distance to turn evil. What if they play Mage Lock? Like, could they just threaten Mage Lock on a big map against the Shadow Priest Rogue Paladin? Could be okay. I'm I, not I don't, sure. I, I don't know if the, the Mage Lock would be... Alright, Empyrean, big map. Could... I, I don't think it's going to happen, but I feel like sometimes is Mage Lock against, like, a Paladin and Shadow Priest. They, they have no ranged interrupts, right? So you can get a lot of control of the match as Mage Lock. Maybe they play it. I kind of doubt it, honestly. I feel like they're just going to go with the uh, the same thing. Or they bring in Chun-Li on the Windwalker Monk. But it is an option for them. Um, it's just Kawhi is always so kind of deadly going into dampening, right? Like, it, But that's the Assassination Rogue. Maybe it's not so bad. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, they are wow. bringing in Chun-Li. All right. Mixing Cloud9 is up. defying everything. Defying expectations, map picks. Big map with a Windwalker. I, I was assuming the small map, but... I guess Chun Li can be very slippery on Empyrean as well. So, hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I really want to see them just put all CC into Drake and run Brain out of mana, attacking the Shadow Priest. Like just remove Drake from the game, so he's not a threat at all. Turn the Shadow Priest into a training dummy, and then Brain's just having to heal and runs out of mana. I, I really want to see that uh, from Cloud Nine um, for a strategy here. If they leave Drake open, I'm worried they'll get cleaved down a bit, but I think the Windwalker is always a good pick into a Shadow Priest. So this is going to be really tough for Kawhi. And it's not very often that we say this is going to be really tough for Kawhi, if almost ever. So Cloud9 could be making history right now in North America, getting to the finals um, already. I kind of wonder how this is going to go. Like, in, like just thinking about it, it's like, I, I feel like either Prev is going to be under so much pressure, he's just scared the whole game and dead, or it's going to be the opposite, where just like yeah. Chun Li is going to be so much pressure and he's so scared and dead, you know, like, because they do have a lot of crowd control for flop. And Chun Li, if he is caught in stuns, it's a lot of consistent damage from Drake uh, as well as Prev. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like this matchup is probably going to be a blowout one way or the other. I'm just not exactly sure which one. Yeah, not sure which team is going to have the blowout. I agree. We've seen because like, we've seen Windwalker monks just die to Shadow Priest Rogue, right? Like, it, it sometimes a Windwalker monk cleaves, like Windwalker DK. I, I know it could be very, very scary for the Shadow Priest Rogue, um, but at the same time, uh, I feel like Windwalker monks sometimes are just so far on the back foot um, that they're not able to really get anything going. So I'm curious. I think the big map kind of plays to that as well, though. Mm -hmm. I feel like with the big map, Chun is most likely going to be the kill target in this matchup anyways. So maybe because you had two options, right? You could play a small map and be really aggressive, but maybe they want the big map just for Chun to be able to escape because he's most likely going to be the main target. And if he's porting 40 yards across the map and you can't really catch him after your go, your silence ends, your stun ends. You have to have brain charge across the map to land CC. So I'm not quite sure how it's going to work out. Oh, one thing I did want to clarify as well, because I see some people are asking in the chat, uh, one of the comments I made. So if you do make it into the finals, uh, you're guaranteed either first or second. And second place gets $40,000. Uh, if you lose this series, you go down to the lower bracket, and there's no guarantees there. Um, um, you could go out in third place, which is $25,000. So uh, winning this match guarantees you an extra $15,000, uh, essentially. Um, 
So that's what I was talking about. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously make it to the grand finals the first day. You're going to be sitting. You're going to be sitting pretty. You're going to well, be enjoying it. Also, if you're in the lower bracket first round, you play the whole day. You have to yeah. go amazing team into amazing team into amazing team which can be good day. or bad yeah it depends on what kind of team you are i know for me because i'm an old man that would just tire me out and i'd be dead <laughs> by the end of it so like so like the teams that have you know older players you know more more veteran players is that the, what we want to classify them as uh I, I feel like it might not be necessarily the best for you to be starting in the lower bracket because uh, you, you kind of i don't know i feel like i get a shorter and shorter leash of time of playing good now it's like used to be like five hours and then it was four and now i feel like i'm at like three i can play good for three <laughs> hours anything past that i'm just not playing good anymore we're getting so, old we get fatigued yeah that's what i'm saying i do so like, that's why i complain about boomkins too i can't kick their cyclones i'm just like <laughs> too old to kick reflexes the aren't again. what they used to be <laughs> definitely um, would not be one of these teams going to the lower bracket as well <laughs> having to possibly bite battle again liquid or three and a half <laughs> men and then Fight some wonky comps with enhanced assassination again. I'm, I'm not sure if I want to be down that road. <laughs> yeah. be, be way more comfortable knowing you've got 40, 40 G's and <laughs> you're in the finals. You beat the best teams that everybody were having as like the favorites to win the whole thing. That's a pretty good spot to be in. I think well, there's a lot point. of momentum. If, if C9 yeah. beats Kawhi 3 1, then they're quite literally on cloud nine feeling amazing, correct? So, I mean, I think they're already doing amazing. So, if they continue that and they ride this momentum, they're they're looking pretty unstoppable, especially if they figure out this matchup. I think it's going to be really scary for the Rogue Shadow Priest, but it depends. It depends on how clean their goes are, if they're able to lock down Shun. And if they're not, and he's able to kind of have this hidden run strategy, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be quite a long game for Prev. <laughs> he's just going to be a training dummy dude. <laughs> the whole game. He's going to have to deal with insane damage the whole game. And I mean, maybe like an offensive bop. I, I'm a bit worried about Windwalker on this map because don't you want big pillar support behind? But the other, like, I feel like Drake can just grab my hook to this pillar and he's immediately back on Chun Li with how small it is. So uh, I don't know if it's the best uh, map for them oh. overall, but we'll, I mean, we'll wait and see. We never see a matchup like this. Looks oh, like they're leaving. More the delay. Game. <laughs> we love delay. They're just leading up the anticipation, you know? They're just trying to create as much as possible because uh, yeah, this could much. be the last game. And they're bringing in a Windwalker. They're bringing in Chun Li. This offensively, this is the one of the scariest classes in the game. Maybe Rep Pally is more scary offensively, um, but it, it can just absolutely erase you, especially as a Shadow Priest. So Rev is going to be really tested here. Can he kind of bunker down, get his footing, and get the damage out that his team is going to need, or is he going to just get overwhelmed, blasted out, sent to the lower bracket, and we'll have the most unprecedented day one of the Grand Finals in both both Europe and North America? Creating for what is likely going to be the most insane and exciting finals day we've ever had on Championship Sunday. All right. We're not going to have to wait much longer to get into Imperium Domain. Kawhi going back to their Shadow Priest Rogue Paladin. Um, and Cloud9 going to be locking in the Windwalker Rogue, trying to mix it up. Cubsy, I don't think necessarily had the most fun in that matchup. He's getting controlled quite a bit by the Rogue. Um, you know, his pet's dying off and just kind of a vulnerability. I did think he did an overall uh, like kind of phenomenal job, especially against the Turbo Cleave. A really, really nice series, but he's going to be tagged out. Chun-Li on that Windwalker Monk. This new composition, Cloud9, is bringing the Windwalker Monk Outlaw Rogue with Wealthy Man making his debut on the Rogue, at least this year. Um, he's played it a lot in the past. Um, he used to play the Assassination Rogue with Cubsy on Shaman and Chanimal on Warlock. That's kind of the original Cloud9 squad. They brought on Snuts, now making some huge roster adaptations. I mean, you mentioned it, Super T's. Everyone's kind of having to relearn their role. Cubsy's playing the Warlock now, range DPS. Wealthy Man now playing the melee, even though he's been playing Mage basically this entire time, bringing on Flop and Chun-Li. This team this had a lot of ups and downs, I'd say, but uh, been relatively consistent and it feels like they've definitely found their footing coming into the finals um they've been looking really solid so far yeah i'm curious to see that the teams just love building up the stress here we go 10 seconds what is going to happen are they going to listen to super tease do they know his strat train mm -hmm. the priest cc the rogue or is chun going to go down and he can't escape okay here we go the gates have opened this could be it. This could be the last game of the day. You do not want to miss it. Cloud9 are trailblazers in North America, fully powered up after the last few weeks of training coming into this grand finals. 
with insane composition strategy and pressure. Chun Li is crowd controlled right off the bat though by Drake, preventing him from connecting. But Prev's getting soloed by Wealthy Man. He's already down at half health. Chun Li hasn't even got there. Kidney shot gonna connect. Rising sun kick. Fist of fear. Look at that damage on the Prev right now. Full blind onto Brain. He's just dying to nothing. This is not any cooldowns from Chun Li at this point. Prev has to greater fade. He's trying to void erupt here and trying to void volley his opponents away from himself and get some distance here. But as the Shadow Priest, you got no mobility. You're going nowhere here. Double leg sweep lands by Chun Li. They're swapping to Drake. Big swap by Chun Li. Is he gonna fall? He pops out with the vanish. Brains in a kidney shot. They swap back onto Prev and the cleave down. Damage is mounting for the side of Cloud9. Are they going to be overwhelmed? Brain doesn't choke. It's a big heal. Prev goes for another Void Eruption. Trying to get some Void Volleys to land onto Chun and land onto Wealthy Man. Wealthy Man dodges all of the Void Volleys. Now, oh no, the Megalomania hits him right as a Rising Sun Kick does. They bop him, but it was it a kidney shot that he got bopped out of? I'm not sure. Wealthy Man's dismantled for a moment, but Brain's in a fear. I think this is this is an easy win for Cloud9. Prev is just so far on the back foot at this point. They've got so many cooldowns out of the way. They, they've still got so many options here like what what you got maybe one more stun on chun if he doesn't pre-karma or pre-defuse instant cc on flop maybe they can kill chun here it's like really their last chance they silence they stun they need to drop chun and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to here comes the bone dust brew on to prev there's no disperse he's got greater fade he's trying to run away with the blessing of freedom getting some distance wealthy man getting left behind chun lee trying to assist him with some vivifies Prev has managed to get some distance away, but kiting a Windwalker, not going to be too easy here. And Wealthy Man is getting closer and closer. Full blind onto Brain, stun onto Prev. Prev trinkets out, fears Chun Li on his images. Chun Li's going to get out of that with a dispel from Flop and get immediately restunned by Prev, but a full sap onto Brain. And they're swapping damage onto Drake in this kidney shot. Big swap. Oh my goodness, this damage. Brain comes out of crowd control just in time to get a big heal. And man, Cloud Knight is just closer and closer with every passing second. To getting to the grand finals yeah i mean this is such a back and forth game at the same time though wealthy man getting low chun li as well flop has to play catch up and one thing for cloud nine is they're way behind on mana so if Kawhi can just weather the storm if they can hold on a little bit longer i think this matchup isn't going to be looking too bad for them it's a full blind on flop chun li's going to have to play defensive right now if you take a look i mean brain still has his bubble he still has blessing of protection he has sacrifice dispersions rotating back up and Kawhi is actually looking good it was looking so scary at the beginning of the game but their cooldowns are back and they are ready to make a push and now Cloud9, I think, is the team on the back foot. Uh, Chun Li does not have karma at the same time. Prev almost getting one shot, but he's going to be running away uh, with his soul shape. Oh, wealthy men rotting down both these melee. Flop is really struggling to maintain his team. Kawhi wanting to tie up this series. Wealthy man does wow. go down. Kawhi strikes back. And I mean, you could beat them once, you could beat them twice, but beating them three times, that's going to be a tall order. And now this series is all tied up. And, uh, I mean, this is a beautiful series. Probably my favorite of the day. The quick adaptations to rotting the, the outlaw rogue more. Wealthy Man's just kind of dying the whole time. They're training Chun, but the whole time Wealthy Man's dying. And as outlaw rogue, it seems like you kind of throw out your cooldowns. And eventually, you you know, when you run out and you're trying to be aggressive, you're throwing out your evasion, your cloak, you slowly start to fall behind. And I guess Prev, is, Prev also opted to play Void Volley this game. So he's just going all out with the damage. I'm assuming it's partly for pets as well, but he is just doing insane damage. Why really struggled at the start of this game, but after they found their positioning and got their cooldowns back from that initial assault, like it, it spiraled out of control so hard. Um, and you can see that on the graph, right? Like this middle period of the yellow bar, the DPS for Cloud9 just plummeted. Like it just fell off the face of the earth. They're just rock bottom for so long, down to burst moment. It's probably a greater fate or an immunity here and then fell off the face of the earth. So as long as Kawhi aren't panicked here, it seems like they're able to deal with this composition. Maybe they did too many swaps. I don't know because they, they attacked Drake quite a lot here. Right here, they dismantled Drake, the kidney prev, right as Megalomania falls. They bopped the Zwen, they purge off bop, maybe more purges on freedom. I feel like prev got a lot of distance at one point in this game and it was from a blessing of freedom. Look at this damage. Like I'm thinking this is over. Like they're just gas pedal to the floor. And, and Prev is just dead. He's dispersed, running with freedom, and then manages to escape. Uh, but right here is where it happens. Like, Dispersion's coming up, Greater Fade's coming up. They still have another Bop, still have a Sack, still have a Trinket, still have a Bubble. And it's right here where they've got Flop almost Oom. Their team is starting to get destroyed by the Shadow Priest pressure with the Void Volley. volley. So it turned around. It seems like maybe Cloud9 are on a short leash, where they have to win this game fast if they're going to be able to win it, or otherwise the sustained pressure is going to outdo them right here. Flop just... CC'd. He's got two targets at low health. He uses 
guardian on Chun, but Wealthy Man doesn't have anything. He's feared out of the crowd control, and they just chained it together long enough to finish the job. And now we're going to a game five, and I wonder if Cloud9 are you know, maybe second guessing the comps, second guessing the maps, trying to think about what strategy. Maybe Kawhi's getting in their heads because they owned them in game one with, with the Demo Outlaw, um, but then Kawhi turned it around um, with their Shadow Priest Rogue. So I don't know. This is such a tough spot to be in in game five. Like, where do you think they should go from here, Absurds? Like, change comp, same comp, different map? I'm thinking it's hard to tell. It seems like C9, I, I can't help but feel like the map kind of hurt them a bit, or maybe they need to be more aggressive with purging the freedom, as you said, because it seemed like Prev just got away. The opener was pretty scary and they had a lot of uptime, but once Prev started just running away, basically, and soul shaping around, it, it seemed really hard for them to connect again. Yeah, if you don't have the purges on the freedom, he's just going to be gone, especially every one of those fades. He's basically just a rocket ship crossing the map. And, uh, I mean, you're getting peeled up by a rogue. So <clears throat> I think they could try this composition again, but I'd like to see it on a smaller map um, or go to a large map and try something else. I mean, I don't know if I like the Demo Warlock after watching it play out. They did win, uh, you know, they obviously won game number one with it, uh, but they lost game number three, and I feel like... Um, it seemed like Kawhi was a little bit more practiced in the matchup. Uh, we are going to be going to Ashamane's Fall, another really large map. And I kind of wonder, what is Cloud9 going to do? What are the different comps that they have? They, have... they, they can play Demo Outlaw. They can play Mage Outlaw. They can play RMP. They can play Windwalker Outlaw, I suppose. Wealthy Man has yeah. a DK, so there's that. They have that option Cubsy as well. Cubsy plays Ellie also. Cubsy can play Ellie. They can play Ellie Mage. Mm. Ellie Windwalker. Eh. I don't think they'll play that. Though. I don't think those. I don't think casters necessarily fare too well into Rogue Shadow Priest. They did pick Ashmanes though, so they picked a you know decent up. I was, oh, I was, oh, whoa, whoa! I wasn't expecting the DK. I was actually wondering if Flop plays a different healing class. If there might be something better wow. than Priest. I was not expecting DK and DK Rogue too. Not yeah, wealthy DK man's Windwalk. a DK. <laughs> I feel like they're outpicking themselves. Is that weird? I, like I actually feel like they're outpicking themselves. It feels a lot. I, I feel like in this position, it's a lot better to be Kawhi, who's just playing your main comp you've played 80 million games on, versus Cloud9, who's like trying to figure out an answer. The normally, when teams try to do this, it doesn't work out, especially against a team, especially when you're fighting a, a team like Kawhi and a composition like this that's very well rounded, right? Like the Shadow Priest Rogue Paladin, at least when we've seen it, doesn't have like a ton of weaknesses. Um, there are some things that do well into it, obviously, but it doesn't seem like there's any matchups where they have no shot of winning. Um, and I, I feel like when you have a comp like that and you have so many games played on it and so much success, it can be really difficult coming in as Cloud9 just like trying to figure out an answer. Yeah, it's all about experience, right? So you have a team that like Kawhi playing Rogue Shadow Priest where they've probably played every matchup in the book. So they've probably played against DK Outlaw. Maybe I'm not sure if it's with Miss Fever specifically, but they most likely played against this matchup as well, and they just have a lot of experience and kind of know the basic understandings of if you do fight an oddball comp, that you you don't just panic, you know exactly what to do still. So I'm not really sure about C9. I, I don't, I kind of like the Mistweaver, but maybe the double monk would have been better than playing the DK with Mistweaver. It seems like when teams do this, it seems like when teams kind of swap two specs like that and it, it seems like an oddball comp that it doesn't necessarily work out too well because like we said going back to experience i'm not sure how much they played dk outlaw Mistweaver. maybe in war games they've had a lot of practice but typically when teams try to swap out two specs at the same time and play a comp like this as a counter especially when the series is tied 2-2 there's a lot of stress, a lot on the line, a lot of money, as you've said. I don't know. I'm, I'm very stressed out for everyone at the moment. <laughs> Let's go predictions. Like, this is a crazy oh, match. I want predictions. predictions right now from both of you. Like, Super Tease, who, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> I'm saying Kawhi wins. I think Kawhi wins, too. I think Cloud9 outpicked themselves. I think if a Chun-Li was a Windwalker... I think Cloud9 could win. I don't know 100%, but I think him being outlawed oh, is not going to do that. Why don't they play Windwalker Death Knight? Yeah, I, don't, I don't think him being outlawed does anything for this matchup. Well, I guess they can't um, change now, but... I'm definitely thinking Kawhi wins this. 
I'm assuming they're probably going to sit on the DK, not to put too much pressure on him. He'll most likely be spell warding. You blade flurry spam, dot both, and then try to set up big goes on the rogue and kidneys because I think the rogue, believe it or not, even though he's outlaw, I think he'll be the one that kind of takes a lot more damage. But passively outside of the go, I think they'll most likely be training wealthy man and maybe even set up a go on flop if, if flop does decide to push in or he ports his CC because a lot of monks do that. They, they decide to port a CC and there you go. You can't port for 45 seconds and you have Kawhi that's always really good at setting up healer swaps. So I'm thinking Kawhi. I'm thinking the stress of playing this type of comp into a team that's pretty stable is going to be a lot. Mm -hmm. That's my prediction. I'm just trying to think of what they're thinking. Like Maybe it's like, well, DK can't die to this comp. Rogue can't die to this comp. So we'll just play them together. Um, and then we'll lock a Mistweaver because that'll just be the highest throughput. And also if they try and kill the monk, they can port while stunned on a big well, map. Well, Mistweaver also has game. better mana too. So, so maybe they maybe they think they can live long enough. But I feel like trying to trying to outlive, spe like specifically outlive a, a, a Rogue Shadow Priest is, it doesn't seem like the most guaranteed strategy, but that could definitely be a win condition for them as well because Mistweaver mana is just phenomenal. So maybe they just think training the priest down, try to play safe. It's hard to go monk because you can pour it in the suns. Not sure. That is going to be a crazy game. What's uh, your like prediction, Ben? It's stressing me out. Yeah, what's my prediction? Yeah. I don't know. Are we going 3-0 feel... for Kawhi right now? I, I kind of feel... I get the feeling that Kawhi is going to win this. Uh, yeah, I, I get the feeling that Kawhi is going to win this. I just feel like their composition... This is like... My, my logic is just Kawhi is just so experienced on this composition. I feel like if Cloud9 was playing like triple mains or at least like double mains... Um, it could go better, but I mean, Flop is really good at Mistweaver. I'd say he's one of the best Mistweavers in North America. Chun Li obviously has done a really good job. His Outlaw Rogue is one of the reasons why Cloud9 is here in the finals. Um, I just don't know about Wealthy Man's DK, but can't really count Wealthy Man out. I mean, his Outlaw Rogue looked phenomenal, so there's no reason for me to think that his Unholy Death Knight wouldn't be. I just don't even know if I like this composition that much. I'm not going to count out his DK. We lost him at one point in the tournament. During the cups, I think. I think he brought it out day one and we lost because I was on Shaman. And it's like, all right, never counting out anyone. So I, I, I have faith. I think they can do well. I'm just not sure. No, if, yeah, if I don't this even is know the if right the comp pick. is good. I feel like even if they were like triple the best, you know, like the best yeah. LRO, best, I'm still not like convinced of the comp, the composition. I mean, maybe we have seen DK Outlaw, though, do well into not really this, but we've seen it do well on ladder and we've seen it do well into. You know, so, some of the rogue mages, and we've seen Liquid, Liquid do well, so... One thing I will say that I hate about this comp is that they don't have... We just talked about what a nuisance freedom was, and, like, blessing of protection and stuff mm. like that. They don't have it as spell in this game, so every freedom is going to sit full. Every blessing of protection is going to sit full. Um, they ever just cool. tunnel brain? Mm, I think it's scary with the build that Prev plays. So a lot of Shadow Priests now, especially since they're, they're just opting to do more damage... If you're gonna let a Shadow Priest free cast, I don't know if it's gonna be the best thing for you. And you have but the Outlaw Road to play defense. Yeah, but a monk free healing? You don't think a monk free healing? There's no interrupts for, for Clop. He just sits in the back PvE healing on Mistweaver while they tunnel the pally. That is true. He can free heal, he has yeah. good mana, he has revival. They don't have an interrupt as well. So, I mean, outside of outside of Drake, they you can't really stop the monk from doing that. Hunks are good. Maybe, maybe this is secretly really good into this game. I think it I'm could just, be well. Just it, I think it could do well just because they're all they're all hard to hit, right? The monk can port away. The rogue is tanky. The DK has spell warding, so he's you know pretty tanky to the shadow priest. But, all, go ahead. I was gonna say it's all funny. It kind of comes back full circle. I mean, Cloud9 yeah. is now playing the composition that they tried to counter earlier today like <laughs> this is the composition that liquid wanted to play and they got countered with the windwalker outlaw and now cloud nine in desperation is locking in that composition and i mean dude it is a nightmare for, for casters drake can't play windwalker outlaw because he's the windwalker and the outlaw if it somehow turns into some like what if Soralian's randomly an outlaw rogue <laughs> everyone's got an outlaw dude, rogue now no they're all this, outlaw rogues there's no they're using, they're using a lot of time to delay, too. I Now I know what it feels like. This is the caster side of things. I am so stressed out, and I don't even know why. I'm not even in the games. I'm just watching. 
But I can't tell what the outcome's going to be. Maybe they're setting something up last minute. Like maybe they want a faction change because now we got cross faction. I don't. I, did we have cross faction in the circuit? We had it week three, I believe. Week three and four. I thought it wasn't working in work in week three because war game. It wasn't working in war games or something. It was definitely in four. Maybe not three though. Maybe because of the war game issue. What? They should all be human relentless, right? Let's find out. I feel like Relent no multi man trinket? is trinket. Work trinket. All right, Human Rally Priest, Human Rally Rogue. I think he's Orc on the frog. Hey, Prev is no trinket again. He's breaking out, dude, he's breaking out the frog for the throwback to the super frogs, dude. Wealthy Man, Wealthy Man remembers. <laughs> he's he he's coming into roots. Game, yeah, he's coming into game five with the, with his roots in mind here uh, on his death night. Is he gonna be able to pull off a win? Kawhi has been undefeated in the North American region for so long. They've managed to drag two games in a row now against Cloud9. Can they finish it 3-2 to two and get to the Grand Finals and be safely and securely in that Finals? Prev is already stunned up. Here comes A-Bomb Lim. Wealthy Man trinkets out a blind into a gouge, into a kidney shot. Does he IBF aggressively? That would be really overconfident. I'm happy that he didn't do that, but now he's caught in void volleys from Prev. Feared back and forth. He's going to anti-magic shield offensively and try and get the tail end of this Abominations limb, but it's pretty much over. And they didn't get Dispersion. That would have been the main cooldown to get there. They blind Brain. Brain Trinkets. I'd, I'd really like to see a, tr a swap to Brain at some point here. Stun onto Brain. Stun onto Drake. Isolating Prev. He's got Freedom, though. He gets Kidneyed on the Freedom. Leg Sweep onto Brain up from Flop into a Paralyze. Really good push here from Cloud9. Can they close out the game? No. Big heal. Oh, no. Right when the Megalomania hit him. Brain's going to have to save a big heal again. Manages to get another big heal onto Prev and restabilize with Trinket out of the way. Sacrifice out of the way. Major Paladin cooldowns down. Prev on the run with that freedom, trying to get away from the Death Knight. This is the downside of having no purge. Prev can get such good distance. They actually just grip Brain. Uh, a bit surprised they actually grip Brain there. I could wait maybe for Prev. Maybe swap off freedom. I feel like chasing right now doesn't feel too good. Paralyze on Brain. Kidney on Prev. Nice setup once again by Cloud9. Just cutting him down. Can they get the Spurs here? They're so close to it. Greater Fade forced out, but now Drake is cleaving Chun-Li. He's cleaving Wealthy Man. Evasion already burned through. They stun Drake, trying to hold him back. Stun into a dismantle. Flop in a good position, just staying as far away as possible. Just trying to max out his healing and focus on getting a couple of paralyzes during a stun onto Prev, but no offense other than that. He doesn't compromise his positioning and slow and steady seems to be the options for cloud nine so far nice crowd control once again all members of Kawhi, but prev just hiding behind the pillar with the soul shape wealthy man's trying to march his way over and reconnect but once he reconnects brains out of cc oh double leg sweep by flop nice play right there it might get a dispersion maybe a kill the mystery can still touch of death so if prev is, isn't careful with this disperse and gets low flop could roll up and get the kill yeah, I mean, definitely right now, Prev with the Void Volleys trying to cause havoc in the arena. It's going to be a blessing and protection as well. They have no dispel for that whatsoever. Just trying to shut down Wealthy Man with his Abomination Limb and Mana. I'd say a little, it's kind of even, but there is a slight lead here for Flop at this point of the game. Two and a half minutes in, both these healers have had to deal with a tremendous amount of pressure overall. Prev with Freedom right now, going to be kiting around. Wealthy Man's Chains of Ice not going to be doing basically anything. He gets interrupted right now and bursted. Big damage here on Prev. We do have Brain in the open. Should be able to keep him alive and flop in the back line, looking like he wants to sit down and recover his mana with drinking. And if he can get drinks in this match, it's going to be massive. Chun-Li grapples over. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to do it. Flop's still just kind of sitting there, looking like he wants to fall out of combat, but not going to fully commit. Doesn't want to get sapped or have anything kind of happen. Doesn't want to fall behind on healing. Big damage coming in. There's a full blind here on Flop. Chun-Li in a kitty shot. Can they take him down? Kawhi potentially looking for a reverse sweep here in game number five. The winner of this game will be making it to the finals of North America. It's a lot on the line in this particular match. And, uh, I mean, Cloud9 bringing kind of an oddball composition you wouldn't expect. But so far, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, let's see if they can keep it up and stay alive, maintain their lead, and slowly march over the finish line. Prev getting pressured. He's got freedom in soul shape. He's on the run, trying to blink away, but Wealthy Man getting sprinted up there for a moment. Looks like he's going to reconnect. Kidney shot secured here. Chun-Li, defensive ring of peace from Flop, trying to get Drake off Chun, but it looks like he's still getting in range to hit him during it, unfortunately. Big void volley out from Prev here. Is Wealthy Man going to AMS to a unit? Looks like he will. Anti-magic shield, but now he's dismantled. Unable to really connect too much healing to himself as he's down at half. Flop is silenced. 
He should be able to stabilize him here. No, a full blind. He's playing relentless. Wild Demand's going to IBF, grip Prev back, and try and use this runic power to death strike into the fight. Double fear out from Prev, trying to get the win here onto Wild Demand, punishing that offensive anti magic shield. Maybe able to take him out. This flop revivals. That was a big push. Revival, IBF. He's still kind of just dying at the moment, but grippy hands are up. Abomination's limb is going to get popped, and Brain needs to make sure that he has the most powerful heals lined up for this damage. They stun Wealthy Man. They slow down the assault for a few moments. They're swapping to Drake. Big swap onto Drake. Prev goes for Void Volley to try and peel them away. Void Volleying Wealthy Man for a moment, staggering the damage as Flop rolled in aggressively to find a leg sweep as well. I don't think they've got dispersion from Prev the entire game. He's actually held on to that for almost five minutes. Gets gripped right as his freedom ends. Brain's trying to drink. Chun-Li saps the drink. Nice play by Chun-Li. If that, that could get everything from Kawhi. Can they continue the CC chain? They get dispersion into a full blind. They get the trinket. Dispersion stunned on the trinket. Just trying to push through and finish Kawhi through everything. Looking to make history in day number one of the AWC Grand Finals. Prev is on the run trying to blink to safety. He's only going to have Divine Shield sacrifice and fade for the next trade. They're swapping to Chun-Li, though. They've caught him in midfield. They're going to drop Anti-Magic Shield and pray that it's enough to survive. They cannot afford to go down here, and it looks like it will be. Chun-Li's getting aggressive. Big damage onto Prev. He's trying to find a shackle onto the pet during that dark transformation, but he's not finding it. They grip Brain into the cleave, trying to stop him from free healing. He sacrifices as he gets gripped into the fray and redirects damage to himself, but now that sacrifice out of the way. That's fade out of the way. He's only got bubble left. We're getting into dampening. Man is getting slim. And the composition for Cloud9 that I think we were second guessing a lot uh, in the opening stages might be able to pull off a win, but maybe I'm speaking too soon. Flop is crowd controlled. Wealthy Man's targeted down. He can't death strike for one more second. Down. They take it. Kawhi close it out with the reverse sweep. Three to two. Oh my um, goodness. Believable. I don't even know what to say after that one. Wow. I've kind of I've kind of trying to catch my breath just watching. Flop was so close to the revival too. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it seems like it seems like the story of this game was just what we talked about. They had a lot of pressure, but every freedom that that Prev gets, he's gone. They finally connect. He has void volley for them. They get feared away, but every freedom he has, he's gone. He runs away. He has greater fade. He speeds up as a rocket as ben said so not having a like purge and top of getting a bop as well you have a full 10 seconds of the bop 12 seconds of bop wow i like the i like him playing night fey as well like basically having the fey guardians for every single one of those abominations limb it's a lot of damage reduction on that shadow priest you have so many cooldowns you can rotate through with the fey guardians with the dispersion with the fade the blessing of sacrifice the blessing of protection the blessing of freedom and these things are just constantly rotating back up so not having the offensive purge uh, definitely hurts these kind of cleave compositions but that was such a close call if flop was able to just get off the revival yeah that matchup was honestly looking like they were going to win it but this is what Kawhi does. They always just find these perfect all-ins. I think it's one of the things that they're best at. It's finding those win conditions, finding that crowd control to actually just close out the game. But there's a lot of close calls in this match, Sid. Yeah, I mean, time and time again, right here towards the end, no dispersion. I think they got through sacrifice and fade in the next couple of seconds. It's looking good. Like, oh man, they're gonna be able to win this. Maybe anti-magic zone wasn't necessary here. Is, is the only thing I'm thinking. Like he's not law rogue, right? You can just press faint instead. It's the same thing. Uh, it's like the only thing I can think of. It may have just been unnecessary uh, because Wealthy Man ends up dying later. Um, the Death Knight's more vulnerable than the Outlaw Rogue, it would seem. As Prev gets knocked around. This is when they get the sack and they got the fade, and I'm thinking, this is over. Like, what's Prev going to do? He's 40 seconds away from everything. Brain's already CC'd. Like, this is it. He's going to die. Uh, Wealthy Man still has AMS. They have life cocoon, but he gets fully blinded. Maybe Flop playing Rally. I guess, is he IQD? He is. He's, when did he use it? I don't know. I guess this is a better question. I'm but sure right he here, blind set. He could Bosh. he could have zoned during all this, and it might have made the difference. Is the only thing I'm thinking. It's like it was maybe CC. forty seconds. Forty seconds was so close. He had no fade, no disperse, but he got freedom to weigh. Wow. Hmm. It's one of those things when it comes to like the AMZ. It's like, oh yeah, I'm blinded. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I'm blinded. Don't worry. And then I don't even know all the CC that hit him, but it's like, I got you. Like revival's coming. You have anti magic shell. You're good. And it's like, oh, another CC. Oh, another CC. Oh, another CC. And then it's like, oh, well, yep. it's too late now. It all just lined up. The full blind sap hodge. Yeah, it's a long time. <laughs> that is quite a long time. So I don't think he was anywhere <laughs> close to getting the revival. Actually, no. 
Well, what a what a crazy day. Crazy way to end it. I mean, I feel like this whole day has been full of surprises, uh, you know, teams losing that don't normally lose, comps that we don't normally see, uh, and then, you know, that reverse sweep by Kawhi at the end there. But, I mean, you know, if, if you're just just kind of getting into AWC Super Tees, like, can you explain just how close that was? Uh, I mean, he, he, when you're CC'd, obviously, as a healer, you can't output healing. So if he is, was not CC'd for one second shorter than he was, he heals both demand to full, basically. Um, so any sort of disruption on that chain or just stall of damage and probably Cloud9 are in the finals now and not Kawhi. Uh, so everything came down to that last couple of seconds. And again, maybe different cooldown management prior to that moment, have an extra cooldown for the Death Knight. There's a lot of information that was gathered, right? But I feel like it, it's better for Kawhi because Kawhi just gets better and better when you throw curveballs. Like the more they fight a curveball, the better they get. So yeah, uh, I don't. Uh, Sunday might not even look the same. Like if we see Cloud Nine in the finals again, maybe that's a completely different series. Yeah, I'd be super interested to see that. I mean, you you know the Cloud Nine, despite that loss right there, has had an incredible day. They three O Team Liquid early on, um, and they just barely lost that one to Kawhi. So they're gonna wait for this first round. You can see it down there in that lower bracket, three and a half men versus Team Liquid. They're waiting for an opponent there, and a winner of that series then is gonna be moving back to that grand final. So it's very likely that they could be having a rematch against Kawhi, and I'd be really curious to see how they do as well in a second go about that but we can also take a look at europe we saw those games earlier today it's the same story over there we didn't eliminate anyone just yet but we did have an interesting series turn of events Ghana actually getting knocked down to that lower bracket cgn esports previously looking for org um can uh you cannot we're also gonna be seeing them tomorrow they don't have an opponent, same as Kawhi, so they're just kind of waiting for that Kangana versus Casual Dads one to round up. But you looking really good as well, Absurge. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what goes on. And a lot of surprises today overall. We saw a lot of Resto Druids and Kangana getting knocked down immediately. I don't think anyone, I mean, outside of Ven, you know, trying to <laughs> trying to trying to go devil's advocate outside of him. I don't think anyone would have predicted that. So I'm curious to see what happens tomorrow. I think Kangana has a good chance to beat casual dads they i feel like it's going to be a battle of the rogue mages and kangarna's obviously top dog in that regard so potential rematch for cgn and kangarna maybe they can find some answers to the unholy dk warrior this time around i'm not sure maybe we'll see Chaz for once yeah that would be that would be great i mean you did say that we saw a lot of druids so maybe we we see Chaz come out so We'll have to see you, but make sure you guys are sticking around for tomorrow. We will be crowning both our North American and our European champions for the AWC Shadowlands Global Finals. It's going to be uh, an incredible day of games. I feel like Saturday, if that was just a hint enough of what we're going to see tomorrow, Ven, uh, these teams are going to be fighting for their lives. Yeah, today was all fun and games. Nobody's eliminated. Everyone's safe. But tomorrow, it's just going to be the heads are going to be rolling. One team after another is going to be eliminated. And then obviously one team is going to kind of rise to glory. And I can't wait to see which teams are going to be able to do it. I don't think you can count out a single team yet. Even all the teams in the lower bracket have a fair shot at winning this thing. And I mean, if today was any kind of... Uh, prediction of what's going to happen tomorrow i think there could be a lot of upsets a lot of interesting compositions and uh some unexpected games that i'm really looking forward to watching yeah looking forward to it as well so make sure you guys are subscribed here make sure you've got notifications on and you're also following us on wow esports at on twitter and we will see you guys here same time same place youtube.com slash warcraft 10 a.m pacific or 7 p.m cest thank you so much see you tomorrow